Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who would never give you the four finger handshake. I am Rob Sister Nino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our top 40 all time countdown. And tonight we're talking about the 11th best season of Survivor as voted by the listeners of Rob has a podcast. And that would be Survivor Philippines. And I think. It's too low on the countdown. And I'm very excited to talk about one of my favorite seasons that I had a lot of fun going back and watching this week with our panel here today. Okay, so we have at least one returning player from the countdown that we've uh, brought back for this season. And he did not get injured along the way. Here he is. We talked about the edge of extinction. Uh, some, what, 26, 27 weeks ago here he is it's ari ferrari happy to be here lord i mean rob yeah i love survivor philippines a season for all the pinoys and the pinais rob let's talk turkey yes very excited to have you back ari uh why survivor philippines why'd you want to come back for this one Let's go back to the year 2012, Rob. It was a good year. Kansas City yep. hosts the All-Star Game. The original Summer of Stein. Primetime 99, Alex Stein eating cheeseburgers on podcasts. <laughs> and most importantly, it follows one world. And so Philippines holds not just a special place in my heart, but I'm sure for a lot of Survivor fans out there, it is a top winner, especially after a long streak of duds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you don't mean uh, the first winner in a long streak of duds, but uh, that I definitely think that, you know, going back and watching the season this week, I, I do think that Survivor Philippines uh, kicks off a string of Survivor seasons that are especially strong. Uh, I know people complain about Karamoan, which was uh, way back in the countdown, but I think it's a very strong second half. And I really think from like Philippines through whether you want to say San Juan del Sur or Survivor Worlds Apart, I think that's some of the best stretch, the best stretch of Survivor we might ever get in the history of the show. Maybe uh, a hot take uh, coming out of the gate here on the Survivor Philippines podcast. Of course, uh, very excited to have back with us, not just a man who is super knowledgeable about One Tree Hill, but also about the challenge as co-host of our challenge for Hap Up. Here is the great Brian Cohen is here. Brian, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. This is so exciting. I cannot believe when I pitched to be on Survivor Philippines. All right, top five. That's where I'm going to be. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to be here at the end of August. I cannot believe. Here we are. Number 11. This number is 11. this is insane. I demand a recount. This is a top five baby season. No doubt about it. I thought it at the time. I thought about it even more as I was going through the rewatch. This is crazy. This is crazy. Why does Survivor Philippines speak to you, Brian? Just the, the cast, the the storytelling, the good guys, the bad guys. It's just so everything from start to finish. I think this had everything you would want in a survivor season. It had an auction. It had the rites of passage. It had fun challenges. It had fun twists of uh, different tribals, of alliance shifting up, a good winner. Like, I don't think this had anything other than, you know, the scooping of it all and anything else that you wouldn't want to be in a survivor season. It was just it was top notch from start to finish. Yeah, I was very surprised to see it come in at number 11 in the countdown. But here it is. And so uh, this is what the people voted. And uh, this is when we are going to talk about it. So a lot to unpack here tonight as we talk about Survivor Philippines. Of course, this is the first of uh, two podcasts this week talking about Survivor Philippines, the second of which will be in our patron podcast feed where you don't just get the slop and the bbq and a and the patron five for five but also our weekly patron feedback show for the top 40 countdown this week i'll talk to uh, beth dixon and josh mendelson that's going to be on wednesday where we'll answer some of your feedback questions and sometimes we run really long on these we don't get to a ton of feedback questions but we will get to everything that we miss tonight on wednesday on the patron feedback show in your patron podcast feed and then i do have a programming alert okay all right, so here we are heading into the top 10. As I've uh, mentioned previously, that they have announced that Survivor is coming back on September 22nd. Uh, we will get the 41st season of Survivor coming up in September, on September 22nd. And so by that math, uh, we will not finish the top 40 season rankings if we continue at our pace of one countdown a week. So once again, we are going to be speeding up the clock here. And so that we have uh, gone through all of the scheduling from 
here on out. So let me tell you a couple things. First, let me tell you uh, up front that the 10th best season of Survivor is going to be coming uh, at you in but five days when we will get together on Saturday this week to talk about the 10th best season of Survivor. And so I know people like to get ahead and get out in front on their watching and maybe they don't finish uh, this podcast until later on in the week. So let me just tell you up front. So this Saturday, we will talk about the 10th best season of Survivor. And that is going to be Survivor Token Chains this ah, about Saturday time. coming up. And uh, this is such a nice uh, segue that will go from Brian Cohen tonight to Ali Lasher with Jordan Kalish on Saturday to talk about Survivor Token Chains. So uh, be on the lookout for that coming up on Saturday. And then... Uh, we have a corresponding move where then we will be mm. back again one week from tonight with the ninth best season of Survivor. I will tell you what that is at the end of this podcast. Okay. Oh, so stay tuned to find out what the ninth best season of Survivor is. And we'll actually uh, be sharing a schedule later on in the week where you can see we're going to uh, do this uh, one more time along the way in August where we are going to do a Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday on the countdown. But we will uh, uh, get through all of our uh, fast forward weeks uh, before we get to top five baby. Okay, so uh, in between uh, 10 and five, we're going to do this one more time. All right. Survivor Philippines. Here we are to talk about it. And boy, uh, I don't know what it is about this season. It really was so fun to go back. I think that this is uh, such an interesting season that... This is the 25th season of the show. And Ari, they really did stop down and, and try to like uh, make a lot out of the fact that it was the 25th season of the show where that they like could talk about it in the opening. They The score really echoes the first season. And in some ways, I feel like that the Survivor Philippines is a little bit of a rebirth of Survivor. I agree. And you know what? In fact, if you look at the meaning and the symbolism behind rain, it actually represents a rebirth. So there you go. It actually yeah. fits in a bit with the with the theme of what Philippines is. And I, I also think what really makes Philippines work is that, one, you're not just combining returning players. There's a very easy, simple to follow story. Yes. These guys were medically evacuated. It's very easy to figure out. They didn't finish the game. Okay. So if you're brand new to Survivor, you can easily figure out what's going on. It's three tribes, so there's complication. So it, it's got the, the chaos for us as the audience is going to be a lot of fun. And I, I think the three tribes with the three returners, I think that's what really makes it pop. And what really stands out is it happens a lot. There are a lot of scenes where, where the players are saying, oh, I'm a fan. Are you a fan? Everyone's constantly asking each other if they're fans or they just claim it themselves. So I think after some of the some of the previous seasons, I think casting and production in general really wanted to 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 switch things up and actually have people that, yeah. that know what's going on. Yeah, famously, I think that Survivor One World is a little bit of the uh, straw that broke the camel's back, uh, where Jeff Probst uh, gave an interview with Chuck Klosterman uh, once upon a time on the former Grantland website, where he talked about how there were two players in particular, uh, long rumored to be uh, Christina Cha and Leaf, who just uh, that their uh, inexperience and lack of knowledge of the game kind of ruined the season for mm -hmm. him. And I think that they probably went out and consciously tried to find people who did know the show a bit better. Not everybody here, but you definitely have more of that here in Survivor Philippines. Brian, uh, this is a season to me with uh, a lot of pairs, a lot of uh, what we'll come to really know as voting blocks a couple of seasons later. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very like interesting strategic season after a number of seasons in a row, maybe not since and heroes versus villains, uh, I guess we'll get there eventually. I don't, I'm not sure how interesting strategically heroes versus villains is. Mm -hmm. up, uh, maybe uh, there are certainly some votes that are, but this is after like a season, a uh, few seasons where it's basically one side versus the other. This is a shifting, moving game the whole way through. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what makes it 
really good and really enjoyable on a rewatch is it it's it's there's a lot of shifting but it's also very easy to follow i mm-hmm. think one of the the issues i've had with some of the recent recent seasons is you don't really understand why a certain move is made on a given week it just feels like every week you kind of roll the dice and the, you get a whole new tribal council and who might be going out but here on especially post merge there really is a clean story of where the season might go and you can as you're playing as you're watching you can play along and guess okay are they going to go with the te- uh, the tanga the tanganga people going to stick together or Malcolm and Denise going to be able to roll it all the way to the end. Who, you know, where are uh, Scoop and Lisa going to go with? Like, there's very clear plot lines that you can play along with and guess, and it's not as chaotic. That there's chaos, but it's controlled chaos, which I think makes it very enjoyable to watch. Yeah, the idea of pairs, Ari. Like, I think we have a lot of times where this, per- oh, this person is with this person, but I do think that there is story that like explains why, like, each like a uh, pairing or grouping of three is together for the specific reason they're together. Yeah, do, do you want to break down the, the, the pairings now? Sure, go for is it. Is that what we're doing? All right, so uh, I guess throughout the whole game, pair number one, is it? Uh, it's Malcolm, Denise, then you've got all all of Tang Dang, they're technically together, but mm-hmm. the real three are Pete, Artis, and Abby, of course. Yeah. And then uh, it seems like Pete is trying to keep Lisa in the loop. Lisa wants to play with Michael. And then you've got the Calabaw, which is... Jeff and Carter, and Carter seems to be okay hanging out with Penner. I, pa, pa, Jeff was what uh, what Christine from South Pacific said. Uh, Jeff wanted Penner to be a temporary player that was never gonna go. That was never gonna go beyond any kind of merge. But I think those are the pairs, and I think RC from the beginning of the game towards the end, she uh, she just lost her she just lost her build. But I think those are those are the breakdown of the pairs. Yeah, RC is an interesting one that she sort of like had like a pairing with Abby and a pairing mm-hmm. with Scoopin, and she just kept losing <laughs> her partner for whatever reason. People just didn't want to stay with her. Uh, maybe potentially with Pete, but uh, it didn't work out for one reason or another. But the three tribe format, I think, mm-hmm. also really uh, works well in this season. Of course, we had only done it one time uh, previously, yeah. which is kind of hard to imagine here in season 25 that. They had only done the three tribe format just in Survivor All Stars, and I didn't think it worked that great. Uh, Survivor All Stars, uh, and I guess they didn't either because they didn't go back to it for so long. But here in this season, especially with Matt Singh losing so much, I think it really played uh, as uh, well as possible from a story perspective. Because the thing with three tribes is it's hard to tell three stories, but really we really told one story of Matt Singh and then Matt Singh went away. And then we were able to tell story of like really more uh, fo- in focus on Tandang and especially of Calabaw. So by the time we got to the merge, then we've sort of like wrapped out Matt Singh and then we're able to sort of flesh out a little bit more of what was going on at the two tribes. And then you get to the merge and you really knew everybody in this season. So Ari, I think that this worked especially well in this format and probably better than almost any other time they're going to do three tribes. I think if you look at the big picture, I think the reason it works so much is exactly what we described. Matt Singh, they're pretty much out from the beginning, but if you're watching the challenges, if you're into that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. it's always Calabaw and Tandang neck and neck. They're always exchanging. Some Sometimes Calabaw is in first place. Sometimes it's Tandang, but eventually the story does end up becoming that Tandang ends up being the most physical, strongest tribe, wipes them out. But the infighting is what does them in, and, and I think that's the, the really the big picture of it all. Yeah. yeah, and I and I think what also helps so much with the three tribes is you have like the, obviously the anchor of the vet at each tribe. So you know normally in the past seasons, you know it's the, the it was Ozzy and Coach. You have Russell and and Rob, and those figures were such presence in the show and the confessionals that it it overtook any of the other new players to really make a name for themselves. But here, because you know with all due respect to Scoopin and Russell and Penner, like they're you know Penner's fun, he's he's whatever, but they're not overarching Survivor he's legends. Whatever. They're not yes. legends that the show really needs to focus on and keep the audience's attention. Like, oh, we want to hear what Ozzy has to say. I want to hear Russell has to say. So it, it gives them the foundation of like, all right, this is this is Russell's tribe. This is Scoopin's tribe. This is Penner's tribe. But it allows all the new players to really shine and really get the spotlight on them. Well, I think that it's a good point because what we've come from in Survivor history is like we've watched uh, Rob dominate uh, his tribe in Survivor Redemption. We've watched Coach dominate on his tribe in Survivor South Pacific. Ultimately, he doesn't win the game. 
And we took one season off from bringing players back, but here we are again. And we have people that are saying like, well, we're not going to let the returning players, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, get to the end. I ironically, uh, Mike Scoopin does get to the end, but that uh, Ari, that none of the returning players actually have that much say in their starting drives that all three of them sort of end up being like figureheads. Uh, well, the fact is they're they're outnumbered, and uh, I think the person who probably had the biggest opportunity was was probably Russell Swan, just because of uh, who the rest of his tribe was. But everyone else, by by the condition of of Tan Dang and Calibal winning, we didn't get a chance to see Penner uh, get blindsided before mm -hmm. he had a chance to make his name. We didn't get a chance to see Scoop. And if you're if you pay attention to the season. Pete has wanted scooping out from jump that, that he just, they just happened to win mm -hmm. the challenges. Same thing with Penner. I, I think all of this was inevitable, but they happened to, to win challenges, make the merge. And that's why we continue to see them throughout the whole season, even though we got uh, a few of them get clipped along the mm -hmm. way. I know yeah. Lisa would take such offense to me saying this, but like it does, it just goes to show how much luck plays a role in Survivor, not just in the people's individual outcome, but for our enjoyment. Like if Tan Dang was the one that was, you know, clipped off one by one, we probably lose Lisa, we might lose Scoop, and we might lose RC so early on. And obviously, those go on to be some of the biggest players of the season. So then it goes, you know, reshapes the entire season. Is this a good season? Like who goes on the win? Like it, it really just impacts so much the fact that Matt Singh was the one that got clipped along the way, and we were left with the two best players, the most entertaining people on that tribe. So again, luck, it plays such a factor in each player's outcome, but even just our individual enjoyment of the, mm -hmm. of the season. Down to who's on which starting tribe uh, yeah. as well, where, you know, sw switch it up where, you know, if, uh, you know, Penner is on Matt Singh or, you know, uh, who knows uh, how this all would have played out. Yep. In addition to these three returning players also, that are, you also had this interesting uh, casting twist where we had not one but two famous people in this season where we had Jimmy Johnson already. So we bring in another person from the world of sport mm -hmm. in Jeff Kent, a uh, former uh, uh, co-MVP. Yeah. Co-MVP should be co a Hall of Famer. Should be yes. a Hall of Famer. I, that, uh, are you, are you wearing a Jeff Kent Jersey? I am rocking a San Francisco for, for those listening. I'm rocking a San Francisco Giants Jersey, but it is not of Jeff Kent. It's, uh, it's of his buddy, uh, Barry, Barry Bonds. Bonds. Yeah. <laughs> Let's you might have given him a, a four finger handshake <laughs> sometime <laughs> along the way. So you had Jeff Kent who was there, which is very exciting to have. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Jeff Kent, if you if you didn't know, was like a real deal. Uh, you know, uh, Major League Baseball. I would say star, maybe yeah. never like superstar. Probably always overshadowed by Bonds, who was uh, the superstar uh, who they uh, famously did not get along great. Mm -hmm. I think we're underselling it. Hold on. For, for those that aren't sports fans, I'm a big sports fan. Jeff Kent. Uh, let's talk about previous uh, contestants. Gary, Hoga, Ho Gary Hogaboom, mm -hmm. old guy, retired for a long time. Jimmy Johnson, he was just an announcer. But Jeff Kent. Well, what I like about Jeff Kent. On Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> he's just whatever, man. Like on, on Survivor, that's not impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on Survivor, yeah. Jeff Kent, he uh, he's credibility. Immediate credibility. This is... Uh, this isn't some Jamo. He retired, I think it was three years before he played. Baseball players, what are they good at? Stamina, uh, hand eye coordination, strong foot. Like, th this is a very different kind of skill set that we're going to see. And if you are any kind of sports fan, it's just the, the beauty of Survivor is you're a regular person and you're pitted against people from other, from other sides of society. Well, guess what? Now you're up against Jeff Kent in a challenge where you have to hold something very heavy with your forearms. Good luck. Have fun. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's around the topic of Jeff Kent. Since I know we're going to be here for probably over four hours, I wanted to have like an insider to try to help us out. So I know he's going to sound a lot like Carter is, but I did acquire Jeff Kent and I have <laughs> him to kind of help us a little bit along so I can ask him some uh, yes or no questions and he can uh, help us yeah. along with a little okay. Jeff Kent bobblehead. Brian Cohen has a Jeff Kent bobblehead and he's wearing a Giants uniform? Uh, yes, he is. The official Jeff Kent bobblehead. Yeah. So okay. if anytime we were, if I can ask him if he's uh, going after Penner this week, he can probably say yes. <laughs> okay uh so jeff kent is here and the kudos to jeff kent who comes and plays hard the whole mm -hmm. way through uh that he gives like a very like very famous that uh he talked about how that 
uh, about the money. It's probably more famous for being remembered about what he says about that. Uh, oh, after it's not even uh, uh, it's six hundred thousand after mm-hmm. Obama gets through with it, but. He like, but what he's actually saying is like he made a lot of money playing baseball, and all he wanted to do was win this stupid game. Yeah, I mean Jeff played super hard, and it's such a disappointment that he's never played again. Because I, th- it would be such an interesting twist for him to come back as the vet that he so despised that he wanted to get out. I love to see him kind of embrace that role uh, do it of, again. Being, yeah. of being the vet. Maybe he would have to target all the the three time players as as, as the two time player himself. But uh, mm-hmm. he he just played so hard, and I just you know he was just so blinded by getting out Penner. Like that was his only mission in the game. Like I know he said he wanted to win, he, he was here to win, but. It just seemed like his only goal was to get out Penner and get all the vets. And if he can just, if he could have just put that aside, like I really think he could have done so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, also, in this season, we are going to have a TV star Lisa Welchel. Now, are either of you old enough to have been uh, Facts of Life watchers? I, I am a not. person that acknowledges the Facts of Life existed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that there's not too many uh, facts of life deniers, are there? <laughs> I know it's real. Mm-hmm. Yes. If it wasn't on MTV or a teen drama, I, I it missed my uh, missed my boat. Okay. So, uh, star of the '80s uh, sitcom The Facts of Life, Lisa Welchel ends up also on the show, and I just always thought it was really interesting of like that you had two different people who are famous to some degree and both pretending they're not. And neither one ever really uh, figured out that the other person was also like, uh, isn't that wild that you have somebody who's pretending to be famous and another person that's pretending not to be famous. Uh, and then they just like, they never sort of like mm-hmm. uh, they reveal their secret identities to each other. It's like the Spider-Man meme. They're just pointing at each other. I know you. Do you know me? We're not going to say anything. But mm-hmm. we, had, I mean, we had a couple of people didn't know who they were. So Dawson knew who uh, Jeff Kent was. Didn't come out. Uh, yeah. Penner, obviously, and Scooby both knew who Lisa was. And it, they didn't really reveal it until the final travel. So it was as opposed to some other seasons. It, it, it kind of just was swept under the rug. And they really were able to play the, how, how they wanted to, just being themselves. Yeah. So you have the three returning players. You have the two famous people who are undercover. And then you're going to have a couple of people who are going to be survivor superstars uh, Mm -hmm. in their own right in that they will go on and uh, become returning players. Uh, Notably, Malcolm. Uh, This is also the final of the three Malcolm seasons that we are talking about here on the countdown. Uh, Of course, uh, this is the origin story for Mm -hmm. Malcolm. And Malcolm is is really all over this season, Brian. Yeah, I mean... He, he was by far like I think production was probably so upset when he couldn't hang yes. out to that final child. I mean, but it, it kind of makes for great TV that it's like the the right before the final tribal, you know, he, something that Rob might know a little bit about. But uh, I mean, he was just he was the MVP he was uh, all over the place from the pre merge to the merge. But he played such a hard game finding the idol. Uh, he was such a, just so charismatic on his confessionals. He just drew me in every single time. Like I, he just I don't know. He wasn't always saying the smartest things, but just how he would say it was like, yeah, Malcolm, like he absolutely knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. He just seems like such a cool guy. He's got a swag. He just he just captivated the television every time he was on it. Yeah, Ari, it was love at first sight between Survivor and Malcolm. Ah, he, he made references that everybody loves. Dementors. He's got the mm-hmm. Harry Potter crowd. What what else we got? Mac tr- the Mac Truck crowd. He's he's got mm-hmm. he's got all the crowd favorites. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk a lot about Malcolm here today and the game that he played. Of course, his partner in crime was Denise, who uh, went on to uh, play an impressive game and win. She would come back in uh, Winners at War, which we have not yet talked about on the countdown. So uh, good on Denise uh, for her first time checking in on the countdown. Uh, All right. uh, How about Denise on the rewatch? I let, let's talk about the show's introduction to Denise. They her first scene, you know, they show her nodding, which we'll we'll see a lot of that. But the, her introduction to us, the audience, is her listening to Zane and nodding yeah. her head. Like I think that's a brilliant, just a subtle way to to introduce us to Denise. Uh, and she's brilliant. Yeah, she does uh, a great job here in this season. And I think that it was uh, a real theme of the season where that you had Lisa and Scoopin who were really all about their faith and Christianity in this season. And then you had uh, Malcolm and Denise who were like uh, very vocal about uh, faith, not really having a place in the game. I think that they uh, both like had to really bite their tongues at times about 
uh, the uh, the role of like God in the game. Uh, I think that that was like a very interesting thing uh, to watch as it went through. And you know, uh, Denise is gonna have a lot to say about Abby Maria and her behavior uh, along the way, and that's mm-hmm. all uh, very interesting to uh, talk about here tonight. And of course, and- a- Abby Maria herself, uh, the two time Survivor player, uh, making her first check in on the countdown here at number 11 on the countdown. Uh, Brian, how about the the uh, run that Abby Maria has in this season? Yeah, I'm very familiar with uh, this archetype, the Brazilian uh, kind of crazy person that kind of kind of reign in. That's the very much Camilla from the challenge. So I'm very familiar with this type of person. Mm-hmm. And I think th- this type of archetype really plays well the first time through. I think once they're brought back and they see themselves on TV and they know what their character is supposed to be, they kind of lose who they are. So the original Abby is by far the most entertaining. The fact that she is so oblivious to like how anyone perceives her when her when she was just stunned to be. Uh, when people told her she was the most unlikable and she was like, I, I can't believe this. How is this? How is this? How yeah. is this thing? I, I've never been told this. It, it's just so pure and so entertaining. Like, how how could you be missing the boat that much? But that's what makes Abby so good. She's just so blinded by everything around her. Brian, are you saying that you feel like there's a big difference between uh, Philippines Abby and Second Chances Abby? Yeah, I just think even subconsciously, people, when they see themselves back, they just know what people want from them to do what their character is supposed to say, how they're supposed to react. So this is just Abby being her, her pure self and not blinded by what uh, Twitter might be saying or what anyone else might be saying for her to do. And she just doesn't know any better. So she's going to you know, call people an idiot, call people a moron, do, do all these stupid things that uh, is just so Abby that she, she's not thinking about how anyone else might be thinking about it. Yeah, it's not an ideal strategy to win the game, no, but uh, Ari, I, I was loving it. Uh, I- she really gets hot by the end. I, I've got a lot to say about the whole good guys, bad guys, and how Abby Maria fits who are the into all good of guys, it. Right? Who are the bad guys? Yep, a lot, to, a lot to talk about. Abby Maria. So, like, so to talk about that with, with Abby Maria, let's. Uh, a, a lot of it, I think, what we really need to realize is it's her playing the game. People, people watch characters on television and really take offense to it, but Abby's just playing the only way she can. And it just, and ultimately, it just doesn't mesh with the people she's on the island with. That's it. And you know what? I want to really bring up something as well. You know, Jeff asks her, is it cultural? I'm not Brazilian. I'm not Brazilian. But I, I will say this. English is her second language. And to communicate and to express, like, to communicate and to express yourself for a language you don't know, it's very difficult, especially in a game like Survivor, where everyone's always listening to anything you're going to say, take it out of context. So so I think I want folks, whenever you rewatch this, just really pay attention to what Abby's actually saying and doing. And I think you'll notice and realize it's just her tone of voice. Because once we get to the family visit and she starts speaking in Portuguese, you hear a lot more expression in, in her mm-hmm. voice. So. Uh, I, I want to take this time to rehab Abby Maria. Rehabby Maria. We're gonna we're gonna, re, we're gonna rehab Marie Maria. Yeah, look, I am a big Abby Maria stan, and uh, she just cracks me up whenever I get the chance to talk to her. So that this is fun to see her. I, I definitely feel like there's a lot of piling on with yes. Abby Maria. Like, was she pleasant to live with? Probably not. But also, uh, maybe I think that at times the other contestants might have gone overboard with uh, talking about, you know, uh, just how unpleasant she was uh, to, to live with. Uh, She's very know, they, direct. Yes, yes. So uh, we'll we'll talk about all of that. I, I do think an, another theme, as we sort of like uh, touched on here in the opening of Survivor Philippines, is this idea of who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, and I think this comes from Penner. This comes from Lisa, mm-hmm. and I think that the players are very like keenly aware about how they're being portrayed on the show. You have returning players. You have Lisa, who is somebody who has been in the public eye. And so I I do think that there's this idea of like, who is the audience rooting for is very much, and how do I want to be seen? And I think, Ari, you have a number of players trying to hijack the narrative of like, this is the move I have to make for me now, and here's the reason why. Yeah, I mean, so... Totally. Exactly. I, yeah, I, I think that's totally fair. And I think you see a lot of confessionals about that, about people having self-reflection of, especially with Lisa, you know, she's very conflicted on, am I being a bad person by going against Tandang? Can I do this? Is it is it okay? Is it right? Uh, 
Um, she has a lot of that self-reflection. It, 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 does that make me a bad person to lie and to go against my word? And we even see that uh, with a number of the other people that just don't, they have, have to have that realization themselves that, you know, you can lie, you can go against your people because it pushes you further. And it, it, it's kind of, it was kind of a throwback to original Survivor where people didn't know they can do that, but it was fun to see them come out of it with the religion that yes, they can. And they didn't take it so bitter. So personally, when they did do it, which was a breath of fresh air for some other seasons. Yeah. Um, Ari, do you have any ideas? Uh, why, why did this season end up so low in the rain? Like we've talked about a lot of the positives uh, that w why 11? It's competing against a lot of it's, it's competing against a few seasons with returners, right? What, what do we mm -hmm. got? Second chance. What else we got on there? Winners got, at uh, war. Winners at war. So there, you know, there's already th a third of it's already being taken by returning mm -hmm. seasons, which already include their all their own favorites and storylines. And so uh, mm -hmm. even then, most people are saying this is a top ten. I mean, we're off by one. Come on, gang. Let's. Uh, mm -hmm. If you yeah. think it's top ten, it's top ten. Yeah. This is what, um, yeah. As far as like uh, reasons why uh, people might dock it, uh, so I think that the Mike scooping of it all mm -hmm. is a factor, and I, and I do have to say, like, uh, it is kind of a buzzkill uh, yeah. to see uh, Mike scooping, uh, famously uh, not a great guy, nope. and also like very much talking about his faith, uh, which you know it comes across a little bit more hypocritical than mm -hmm. in the real time, very and uncomfy. so. Yeah, very, very uncomfy. And so and, and he's portrayed positively on the show. And so it is uh, a little hard to uh, stomach uh, all of the scoop in you're going to get along the way. On the bright side, there is a lot of him getting injured. I think Scoopin's presented more as delusional, though, because yes. he's saying positive things about himself, so but delusional. no one else is. So I, I think it's actually, a re this is why I love Survivor. It, you know, there, there's storylines that take a while to, to really capture, and Scoopin, in season two, before he got cut off from the fire, it was the same thing. People were criticizing, making fun of him, mm -hmm. saying uh, he was being selfish. So meanwhile, uh, in Australian Outback, He's praying about thanking he's the thanking Lord he's the leader. So I think there's a lot yeah. of disillusionment that that is actually on screen, but yes. he's presenting it as a positive way. So I I actually uh, it, it's not that bad uh, because the the character is that he's disillusioned. He's he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, and Mike is really uh, so delusional in that I think he's the only person in the history of the show that gets to the final tribal council thinking that he is the winner of the show that they, that uh in his head he mm -hmm. realizes like uh well you know i've won the season and i think he expected to be crowned the winner of survivor that night and he was not and he, i think he looks very upset at the finale i, I don't know if there's any other people that who uh came in thinking that they had won I, I think that Russell in Samoa thought he won for a while, but then by finale night knew. I, I'm not sure if there's anybody else. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some tweets uh, mm -hmm. as to uh, whether or not. Maybe some people thought maybe there's a chance, but I think Mike Scoopin d definitely thought he was the winner of the season, Brian. Yeah, he did. I mean, he said it multiple times, and we used that straight up. Like, I mean, I, I get the idea of wanting to be positive and optimistic and like believing in yourself. But as Lisa said, you also have to be kind of realistic about your chances. I think you know Lisa came in with the right mindset. She knew she probably didn't win. I think there could, a case could be made that she maybe should have won, but I, at least she came in realistic that you know she probably wasn't going to win. And scooping, I mean, so for some of it, I guess it's you need to have that level of uh, confidence in yourself to even go on Survivor and do some of the things he does on Survivor, winning the challenges and just believing yourself. But you also need to have a, a realism that he just he just lacks mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of mike scoop in here I, I will say also personally i feel like the season does uh run out of gas a little bit ari when we uh get past the penner vote at the final seven i think that the season uh which is like going 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 i do think sort of slows down as we get to the carter vote the abby vote and i think that the finale is kind of a slog Usually the finales have like, well, nowadays they'll have like six, eight people in there. Now it's right. just, this one's just a four. And then the moment Was Malcolm, I feel like, yeah. I feel like the the moment you see Denise sitting there, you're like, oh, GG, good game. Tip of the cap. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, 
Abby Marie is the only one post merge keeping anything interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's another season that we have like in the 20s. Um, I did you know, uh, Kara Moen, I think starts with the final five and Eric Reichenbach uh gets injured mm -hmm. uh right out the gate, but that there's no other season, I, I think, that we have a finale with just four to go to the final three past uh, Heroes versus Villains. Yeah, it's interesting. Do you, what was what do you think the reason? Because there were only one medevac. There was no other like quit or injury or anything like that. What, why do you, do you think they all planned all along to have the final four or final like have a reward uh, challenge up until the final immunity? Usually, they, when they do something like that, it's because of you know multiple people quitting or something else that would go. Like, was that, do you think that was a a production decision leading up to the whole, the whole season? It's a good question. Yeah, I really don't know exactly uh, what they were thinking. Uh, maybe could it be that they were thinking like, oh, maybe this will be a final two this season. Mm -hmm. But like, oh, like we really want to give Malcolm, a sh you know, uh, like uh, a puncher's shot here. So let's make it a final three uh, yep. and maybe to get Malcolm the win. But again, I don't know if that's how they look at these things. Are right, you have any thoughts? I mean, the, the show's changed, right? I mean, we're we, we got to compare it more to what happened before 25, right? Right? We're now we're used to, uh, you know, five, six people in the finale. But uh, around the time of Philippines, this was normal, wasn't it? So just uh, in the season before, I'm trying to think, I think we have a final five to final start five. off the finale of one world where it's uh, the it's the final three of Kim, Sabrina, Chelsea. And then uh, you have Christina and Alicia in the finale. So. Uh, there was five in the One World finale. There was five in the Caramoan finale. Uh, I think there was, uh, they got down to four, but then somebody came back from Redemption Island in the uh, South Pacific finale. So, um, yeah, I think the same thing with with uh, the Blood versus Water as well. Maybe uh, in Survivor Kagiyan, which is also a, a final four, uh, mm -hmm. going into the finale again, that was going to be, that was a final right. two in that season. Right. So, uh, I wonder, it's, it's just weird that they do the, like, uh, Oh, here's the challenge for an advantage. And then it's going to be a final three. So maybe there was some thought about a final two and they ultimately uh, didn't go in that direction, but okay. A anything else, a uh, big picture about the season. The only other thing is I really, I know this, some people don't pay mu as much attention to this stuff, but I really did enjoy the challenges. I think especially the immunity challenges post merge that there are really only a couple of the standing in place, balancing and doing like there was always in, they were constantly in motion. I like the ones where, you know, a, a few people advance at a time and it gets to the end. I really, a lot of them were close. Um, you know, we had a couple of people pull out immunities when they were about to be voted out, which made things mm -hmm. interesting, kind of an old school way of saving yourself. So I, I really just enjoyed the challenges and I, I kind of think sometimes they'll get glossed over, but they were very visually entertaining. Yeah, I'm not much of a challenge guy, but yeah, you're right. It looks beautiful. In fact, I feel like this season has like the saturation level set to the max. It's bright. The mm -hmm. entire season is very bright and like all the colors really pop. And uh, like uh, like just little things like that add up to to making the show into production better, right? Like there there's some seasons one world before it was kind of dim and blue and dark. So uh, you know I'm really I'm really into the uh, the the brighter colors uh, and the intro. There's an intro, Rob. Remember the intro? Yep, yep. The intro is here, and so uh, we get to see all of the Survivor players uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. as they should be at the top of the episode. And uh, the, the only other thing I want to add is that it is a very bad weather season. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the worst rainy seasons of the show. I think, does Jeff say in the finale it rained for 21 straight days? Yeah, 20, which is basically up until the merge, and maybe, I guess, a, a couple of days after that. That's unbelievable. I know it, it is a bummer that uh, Dana had to be medevac but i do think it is kind of appropriate that on a season we bring back medevac people we do have one medevac so i do like the kind of the symbolism uh there so now you, get, you get to see though, all of them relating to her struggle and having to be pulled so it did kind of fit with the theme that we had someone had to leave the game all right let's talk about the, the season uh from the jump uh here we go we are going to uh, get it started with our three returning players uh and we uh, see about how they got injured of course uh just to work backwards from our countdown uh we've seen penner in cook islands but not the season where he has gotten injured and i have watched uh russell swan get hurt and of course uh mike scoopin in survivor australia you know i, I really feel for 
Russell Swan here mm-hmm. in this season because that he ends up in uh, this position where, you know, he almost dies in Samoa, which was another season which uh, like miserable, like mm-hmm. rainy conditions that contributed to him not being at his finest uh, when he's trying to still go out there and win the challenge for the tribe. And then he comes all the way back in this season. And I really uh, felt for him as that he is really just like, uh, and at times like speaking to Mm -hmm. God and just saying like, why, like, why has this happened to me? I came back to the game and I was supposed, this is, was going to be my shot and I was going to win. And then nothing has gone right for me. Since I've got like, uh, uh, why this doesn't make any sense? And, and, and I, I really felt for Russell. Yeah, you have to. I mean, he wants it so bad. You can just see, like, he wants to win. He wants to, he doesn't want to be the leader, but he wants to be a leader and he wants to win. He wants to do well. And it just goes, uh, to this, as Malcolm would say, so poorly and even more poorly for him that it, they come so close to winning challenges and he just can't pull it out. And it, you just see him miserable and he's trying so hard. And it's like Charlie Brown with the football every single time. He keeps getting pulled away from him. And it's, you know, I, of all the people that I felt their frustration on their exit, with, like, I'm just done with Survivor. Like, I felt his pain. I'm like, I'm just, I can't do this. I am so done with this show. Mm-hmm. And here's this guy who his previous experience is number one being called the leader and the and the chief and not just that but then his tribes his his tribes win his tribe wins mm-hmm. consistently yeah. and so what what does that do to the ego and then we we put you back congr- and uh, it's the complete opposite right he's on the complete opposite end of that so it's a he, here's a guy who I'm sure is successful and dominates in everything he does in life and even mm-hmm. in his previous TV experience and now what. His his second opportunity, uh, it just the complete opposite of what he wants it to go or what he expects. Yeah, and like from the start, it there's uh, like uh, not that many moments of peace nope. for for Russell. And then we get Mike Scoopin, uh, who comes back, uh, who is going to make it all the way to the end of this game. So we're going to see him uh, all, all the way through. Um, so. We're gonna divide it. We divide up the tribes, and uh, again, much like the first season, uh, we have our marooning. Yep. And uh, <laughs> that w- what's really great is like uh, kicking everybody off uh, the boat, uh, like we had back in. I don't know if we had a like a straight up marooning uh, at any point since the first season. Another throwback. Uh, to, yep. Then we would have a lot of maroonings uh, here on out. And Probst is like saying, like, "All right, come on, you get p- Penner. You got ten seconds." And Penner says, uh, 10 seconds before what? <laughs> you gotta get off the book, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probst, this this was also one of Probst's best season. The, the, the dynamic between him and Penner is just top notch. Every interaction that they have throughout the whole season, yeah. whether it's in challenges or a tribal, like if they ever wanted to bring in someone to co host the show with Probst, their dynamic together, him and Penner, would just be unbelievably yeah. entertaining. I don't think Jeff ever signs off on that, but <laughs> no, uh, I, I couldn't agree more <laughs> about uh, their relationship. And I, I think that uh, what really helps is that I, I think Penner might be my favorite contestant in the <laughs> history of the show that he is just so interesting to watch in every i don't think he's the best player right. but i think he's my favorite player to watch as uh that like every conversation he has that there's gravitas mm-hmm. uh there's humor that he brings to the table he's just so interesting to watch and i just have so much respect for him just as a person for you know everything that he uh, and forget like what he brought to the table as a survivor, but everything that he went through over the last couple of years uh, with uh, his wife, Stacy passing and her battle with ALS and just the, the love that he uh, showed that just a, that he's an incredible husband. He's an incredible parent. And I, I just uh, love watching him and I uh, feel like very lucky to have gotten to know him a little bit over the years. And so that I think that that's such a big part of why I love this season. It's just that this is the best Penner season that there is. 
Yeah, and it's not even close. It's the most entertaining Penner, and it's by far his best gameplay season. Like I think if you know he was dealing with it, like if Lisa and Scoopin were smart enough to realize, I think Penner could have won this season or very much got to the end if they made the right decision down there at the final seven and stuff. But he's just, as you said, he's just so eloquent. Everything he says just sounds so smart, and just he's so thoughtful in every word that he says, and it just sounds so perfect. Yeah, Penner is a very entertaining person. Yeah, he's a heck of a guy. He's a mm-hmm. heck of a guy. And, you know what? Uh, with, with Penner, and also when he plays his game, one, he plays hard, but he doesn't do it in a mean way. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? It's not, uh, he's very aggressive with his dealings, but he's not aggressive with his tone or or his feelings either. He's such an interesting player because he's just like such like a cards up guy. Uh, like, you know, you imagine like you're at a poker game with him and he's like, all right, look, I know you've got a king and a queen and I've got a jack and a ten. You're going to you like uh, like he he, like he will will, like like let's just put everything on the table and then let's let's talk about what do we do next? Like there's almost no subterfuge to his game. I mean, he gets the idol here. He doesn't tell uh, people. So he does. He does keep some secrets. But, you know, he's very much like an above board guy with how he talks. And it's off putting that we see uh, throughout his survivor seasons where, especially in the cook islands, uh, people don't like that. People don't necessarily want to be so upfront. It ends up being kind of his downfall in this season mm-hmm. where Lisa and Scoopin come to him about a deal. And he's frankly too honest with them mm-hmm. about like, uh, like, well, you know, let's just uh, wait it out a little bit, uh, which is not the answer that they want in that moment. And so it ends up being something that hurts him, but it's just, it's so is uh, like brutal like truthfulness uh in the game is uh, like very fun to watch and this is also i think the only time where he has an advantage he's playing from the front rather than playing from behind or from being from a really bad social uh social place right he, he's actually coming into this from from an advantage and he actually has social capital to deal with mhm so I think that probably the best way to talk about this uh, pre-swap part of the game is just to talk about uh, the three tribes. And uh, we could talk about uh, Matt Singh and uh, their sort of uh, trajectory. And then we'll and then we'll talk about uh, Calabaw and Tandang rather than uh, like bouncing around uh, for the episodes because uh, we are going to have four tribal councils in a row where Matt Singh is going to go to tribal council and the first of which is where they're going to vote out zane and zane is in my mind one of the most compelling first boots in the history of the show brian uh zane what what might have been with zane what might have i mean we saw with shane right i think that's kind of like the kooky just stopped smoking kind of off the ball kind of wacky archetype and that could have been his role i don't know where he went wrong i think you know he said he didn't quit it was a it was more of a, a bad move but it seemed like a like a self-proclaimed quit. It's like, yeah, you can vote me out. He tried to play it off. Like, oh, I'm actually just trying to draw the vote. So Russell doesn't play an idol. It was, it was all over the place uh, strategy, but he goes out there making individual deals with each of the girls. And then he makes a, the side deal with Malcolm and, and Russell and tells them that he's made the deals. With all the girls, he's, he can have a uh, pick of the litter of whoever he wants. He comes in playing, way too hot way too fast uh and it blows up right in his face which is such a bummer because yeah because if he was able to settle and kind of relax a little and let the game kind of play out he could have been such an entertaining person for more than just one episode but he was entertaining for that one episode i love yeah. zane like he just every time he made an alliance with someone he had a catchphrase you'd always say you in my corner now <laughs> he, he you in my corner now he had uh he had a great catchphrase for everyone and then uh, I love Zane because he feels like his his jobs, like what he's had as a job, is what's gonna make him the the perfect survivor player. Is like he was like he's he's uh, done retail, he's worked at a junkyard, and he does retread tires. So that's mm-hmm. uh, you know the the Voltron of the survivor three. skills right yep. there. Yeah, and so yeah, he is just uh, shot out of a cannon, and so he's uh, make he's making deals with everybody. I mean, he really does feel like that. Uh, you know, he could have been like a Russell Hans uh, in another dimension. Yeah, a little, a nicer Zane could version. have played five times, <laughs> yeah. We could have had uh, Zane's, uh, you know, Zane's uh, nephew on uh, season 41 upcoming. Could have, what could have been? What could have been? Yeah. I, I, I feel like his strategy going in, so he's very proud of his social game, and so his idea from the jump is, 
let me say I am the weakest person and I should be voted out. That that was a strategy to win Survivor. Like that, Allegedly. like it was it was like that Allegedly. South Park bit with the with the uh, underpant gnomes, right? It was like a step one, tell everyone to vote me out. Step two, question mark. Step three, <laughs> win Survivor. Win Survivor. I, he, I, I think what he was going for, I, I, this is what he was going for. He was testing how strong his social game was, and he was making a really big bet that everyone was going to vote out Russell Swan. But uh, he was very wrong because you can't have that strategy in a game where someone says, vote me out, and everyone says, okay. Do yeah. you take everything he says at face value, Ari? I mean, my read on it is that he quit smoking right before he came. He got there, was in over his head, played a big game, and then uh, quickly said, okay, everybody vote me out. And then sort of then came around and said, no, 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 I changed my mind. I want to stay. No, I, well, the, the reason, the reason I'm going to say no is there, there's this scene with Zane and Malcolm where, where he asked him, Hey, do you want to quit? Right. I'm going to vote you out. And Zane's giving him the the crazy look to the point where Malcolm even says, "You have this crazy look in your eye, and it's scaring me." <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I I really think he was he he was trying to p- throw like a like a uh, make an impossible shot, right? He was trying to throw like a like a like a court sh- from the end of the court. He was trying to like shoot it all the way. Nothing in, but so that- net. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. I I think he just had a terrible strategy, and yeah, I'm sure he thought him saying, "Please vote me out." And he was probably expecting people to yeah. say, no, please don't. Although Angie does do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah should I mean, come he does get sort of the reaction that he wants with everyone saying, no, don't quit. But the problem is when you just put it out there, especially on the first day, everyone's just looking for a reason to vote someone else, someone out and someone saying, vote me out. It's just very easy just to be like, OK, we'll vote you out. And then yeah. it's just, you know, it doesn't allow any, uh, you know, people to go anywhere else. And to top mm-hmm. it all off, he tells people uh, Russell might have the idol. So even more reason. That's like the kiss of death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, speaking of Russell, uh, we see that uh, Malcolm and Denise are going to then uh, say like, okay, like, look, let's uh, and really Malcolm is the one who's pushing this because he tells Angie to let's let Russell think that he's in charge. And then uh, that'll be what will ultimately do him in. Ari, do you think that had Russell come back, say, instead of Ozzy, what if uh, Survivor South Pacific was Russell Swan and coach? Uh, do you feel like that uh, like Savai is going to be like uh, trying to subvert Russell Swan like Matt Singh ultimately tries to do here? I think what would end up happening is... Wow, what would end up? Well, all right, so here's my opinion on Russell Swan. So so I, I feel like there's a really big theme, in, even in Philippines, right? Like identity. You've got uh, Lisa and Jeff Kent. But like with Russell, like I always think of this Jay-Z quote. It says, uh, Jay-Z's like, no matter where you go, you are what you are, player. And you can change, but that's just the top layer. Man, you was bef- you w- what you was before you got here. And I feel like deep down, Russell Swan is just a guy that's used to telling people what to do. He's at the challenge. I mean, his whole arc is saying, I am not going to tell people what Mm -hmm. to do. And then, of course, there's a montage and that's television. But when we get to the challenge, he doesn't want to do the puzzle, but he has no problem telling them what to do. I I think ultimately Russell's story is he is who he is. And it all depends on whether or not those people in South Pacific would have loved, would would they have liked that uh, someone telling them what to do at all times? It Mm -hmm. all boils down to that. And I think the answer is no. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's like the perfect storm in a lot of ways, a literal and, uh, and uh, what's the other one? Literal literal and uh, metaphorical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That, for Russell Swan, that it's no good. Where that I, I think that's just like the the meta game of like, oh, don't let just let the returning player like think they're gonna be in charge, uh, but then we're really gonna vote them out. Like, don't just follow the returning player blindly. Has like caught up here, and you know, I think he is a leader. Uh, I, I don't mm-hmm. think that there was that much he could have done to to change it. Maybe if it was like a second chance this season, and there were like a lot of leaders on the tribe, but he. Not only like he, he came out to a group where in both of his seasons was sort of like in Samoa, they gave him the necklace said, okay, you're the leader. Uh, and then also in this season, like he was like the de facto leader of this group, like uh, unless somebody else was going to step up to the plate uh, that there, there wasn't that person. 
And the problem is, uh, obviously, you're a leader on a tribe that wins nothing. I mean, he survived three tribal councils. So it, he was able to at least make enough inroads and show he's good enough in challenges to keep. And it just happened to be that they just lost the fourth challenge. If he if they win that challenge and then he survives to a swap, and now all of a sudden he's a leader on like a new version of Tandang and they're winning throughout, I think he's the type of person that brings a core together. And now all of a sudden Russell's leading that tribe through the merge, maybe holding on to and going all the way to the end. It just so happens. And he just happened to be on one of the worst performing tribes in Survivor history. And eventually, you know, his number was called with uh, Malcolm and these being so, so close. Yeah, Brian, I think the one thing you could point to is that he makes some uh, questionable managerial moves oh, sure. in these challenges where that there are certain people that say, like, don't put me on this. Uh, and he ends up putting Angie uh, on mm -hmm. the puzzle in uh, the very first challenge. And Zane is, is doing the running. So he's playing some people out of position. Yeah, he's not winning any manager of the year awards. That's mm -hmm. that's certainly not. He he's he, he's gonna be on the hot seat come the off season. I think the the media is gonna be calling for for his head to be fired. But I mean, we saw with uh, no offense to Angie, then she wants to run, and then she's like gassing out after one heat on the, all the other challenges. So I think he was kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. And at least Russell wasn't in the uh, the puzzle, uh, you know, falling uh falling apart for seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um Ultimately, uh, it's going to be Zane who becomes uh, the, the first boot in the season. He brings a lot to the table uh, in the first episode, but he ends up being uh, the first person uh, voted out, and he ends up uh, being voted out uh, unanimously. Yeah, which is a theme of a lot of the season, despite there being a lot of back and forth shifting of alliances a lot of the votes, all, all pre-merge votes are unanimous, and even That's some post-merge ones are also unanimous, but it just felt yeah. like going in, you weren't sure a lot of times who was going to go, but then it just turned out to be unanimous. Yeah, the Matt Singh votes, uh, I never realized that before, go 5-1, uh, 4-1, 3-1, 2-1. Yeah, even then Calabau on their two votes, five, I think one, those four, were uh, unanimous also. So it's, 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 But even going in, you still thought, like, oh, maybe someone else would go, but uh, it just turned out to be unanimous. Yeah. Ari, should Zane have ever come back? <laughs> <laughs> yes let's bring yeah. let's bring zane back yeah um so it's very I think, zany uh a, a, an interesting one to talk about here is uh roxy who ends up uh getting voted out second i really don't know what to make of roxy and her time on the show she seemed like that i mean at times that she it seemed like that she was like a very smart person seemed like that she had a very good read on everything uh really did not like the malcolm and angie uh showmance at all uh was uh very much she called it uh that malcolm was getting stuck in a booby trap uh with <laughs> angie um then she also then uh speaks in tongues uh which mm -hmm. denise uh really does not care for uh like i got the sense that russell really liked her uh russell did not want to see her go but later on after she's gone russell talked about how that they were with uh a i forget what how he described zane uh i think he's a person who quit smoking a beauty queen and a lunatic uh were the three people <laughs> so uh that i thought that that was uh an interesting description of roxy yeah, poor Roxy. She, she's kind of a victim of the smaller tribe format, right? Like, once you lose Zane, and then obviously we see Malcolm and Denise as, like, an all-time pairing. And at that point with five, since Malcolm has Angie right there, she, like, Roxy's just kind of, you know, there's nothing really she could do. But if she's in a tribe of eight, a tribe of nine, you know, she is strong enough in challenges that I think she would be able to survive at least a few votes of a tribe going downhill. Here, she's just, you know, there was really almost nothing. She was just drawing dead with the way the, the tribes shook out, especially after Zane went that they lose again. Like, there's uh, 10 out of 10 times she's going home there. Mm -hmm. Roxy is interesting, I, but I feel ultimately the reason she was cast is because when Jeff asked that question about people getting hurt on that boat, she nailed it. She brought she up Russell was, Swan. She, yeah, she brought up Russell Swan. And I felt like I was Russell. watching someone uh, like uh, like oh that's right they asked me this before let me uh, let me give them the answer they liked before. <laughs> she yeah. nailed it. Yeah, she nailed it. It did seem like uh, they they were a pair, uh, the only two black people that are on the Matt Singh tribe. And again, uh, Russell Swan does not want to lose her, and it's really Denise who's the swing vote here, and. In uh, in my mind, I'm really wondering, like, was this the right decision for Denise to ultimately 
uh, vote out Roxy instead of Angie. Uh, Russell Swan and Roxy uh, would much rather uh, vote against Angie at this vote. Uh, Denise ultimately goes against uh, Roxy. Uh, we see her talk about how she really does not like when she is uh, speaking in tongues, which I have to say, full disclosure, I do not know uh, a lot about uh, mm -hmm. wh what's, wh you know, how that works and what that entails. But for Denise, uh, it really seems like that her proximity to Malcolm causes her to go with uh, keeping Malcolm around just so that it seems like that she's thinking uh, a vote ahead. Is that how both of you saw this? Yeah, it's the type of vote where in the moment you think, all right, so Denise votes out Roxy, but obviously An like Malcolm would side with Angie over her if it comes down to four. So in the moment you're thinking like, wow, why would Denise do that? She's really setting her up for like a best case to, to force a tie at four. Little did we know that obviously Malcolm and Denise were one of the best pairings in Survivor history, that they would be the much stronger pair. But uh, she put a lot of faith in that belief after only six days that her and Malcolm would be this much stronger for pairing. Usually you would see the showman's kind of take over from the, the friendship mance uh between malcolm and denise so, so she put a lot of faith in that it was proven right but it was for that point in the season only six days in pretty risky to put that much faith in malcolm yeah and denise ultimately is going to win the season so it's hard to second guess right. uh too many of her decisions I, I do wonder if uh i feel like that roxy was the better challenge performer than angie was Angie's a track star, though. Come on, she's a track star. See, she knows what she's doing. Plus, <laughs> you can't go against that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I wonder if maybe they get an immunity. I, I don't know how close the third challenge was. I think the fourth one is the one that's really close. Yeah. But uh, to me, I, I, I feel like that you know, you potentially you run into a two-two split if you're Malcolm and and, and Denise potentially against uh, Russell and Roxy at the next vote. So. That's that's the only problem there, Ari. Maybe Denise was thinking, well, here's an obvious target in Angie for next time, right? Uh, maybe she was just maybe uh, Denise was just thinking one move ahead and figured it'd be a little bit easier to uh, to sway Swan towards uh, Angie in the future rather yeah. than trying to do it towards Roxy in the future. And you know, I want to I want to say something about Roxy speaking in tongues. It reminded me of uh of the spell that Chucky does in Child's Play. It was like Sumane Abela. It's not like Chucky to me when I was watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Akiva. Not a Ch not a Chucky fan. <laughs> um this episode is called uh, Don't Be Blinded by the Headlights. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> yep. some uh, advice that Denise has for Malcolm. Yeah. Can't, can't, don't watch the blinders. Keep, keep focused. Don't let yeah. them get you. And yeah. I know you brought it up before, but like Roxy's saying the booby trap, she, she's been waiting like days to say that. She, was, <laughs> she thinks she wrote it down in her journal <laughs> preseason. The hotel. She's like, oh, this is a good one. On the, on the airline napkin. Nailed it. Nailed <laughs> yeah. it. Okay. Um, speaking of Angie, uh, she's going to go out third in this season after uh, Matt Singh is going to lose uh, their third consecutive tribal, uh, goes to tribal for the third consecutive time. And uh, her and Malcolm are cuddle buddies at this point. Yeah, you, as uh, you know, Boston Rob's famous rules: who sleeps with who? That's the pairing. And uh, Angie and uh, Malcolm, they're they're the pairing. Watch out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Russell Swan, uh, you know, he was not happy that they ultimately kept Angie around. Um, Russell Swan and Angie like get into a big uh debate at tribal council. Yeah, he's like, You willing to put your life on the line, little girl? And the yeah. best part is, she says, Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, did I skip over when uh, what is what is the tribe uh, need yes. right now? Was that yeah. in the second? Uh, that was, that was, uh, second that was the Roxy tribal council. Yes. Okay. Let, let's uh, talk about that moment because that's a big uh, pre-merge moment mm -hmm. in the season where you know Jeff's trying to get Matt Singh straightened out, and uh, there's some debate about whether like what's wrong with this tribe right now. Mm -hmm. Why 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 do you keep losing? Uh, and Denise feels like that what they need to do is uh you know they gotta work uh around the camp or maybe it's i think it's roxy first says uh, yeah. that we're, we're doing too much work around the camp we need to save our strength for the challenges denise says uh no it's actually we need to work around the camp so that we are able to then like uh be able to 
have water and everything that we need for the challenges. And Jeff ultimately goes to Angie and asks her, Angie, uh, if you could change uh, one thing about this tribe, what would it be? And she says very earnestly um, that we could have cookies. Brilliant. Good answer. Good answer. Good, good answer. answer. <laughs> yeah. I wish Steve Harvey was hosting yep. uh, Survivor <laughs> to respond to that. And so then he, uh, Jeff says to uh, Malcolm, like, Mal Malcolm, really? And this is uh, Malk is in a tough spot here, Brian, yes. because He's now his yeah. showmance has given a clearly <laughs> bad answer. And now he's sort of like, well, she's not wrong. Uh, and Jeff is incensed. Yeah, he's trying to do a, a great spin zone. Well, I think what she's saying is, you know, we want some happiness. We want some food. We're hungry. It's raining. We want some food. And Probst is not. I was like, Malcolm, come on, man. That's a bad answer. You got, you got a bit. That's a bad answer. I believe no. Angie is more well-rounded than we give her credit for. D does Probes not uh -oh. come out in challenges <laughs> tempting people with cookies and mm -hmm. saying you are risking your life in the game for a million dollars for cookies? Does mm -hmm. he not do that? He does. He does. Um, he cookies. Mm -hmm. Get some cookies in here, Probes. Yeah. All right. Well, ultimately, uh, we're going to see... And it's uh, between Angie and Russell Swan here at this next vote. And uh, they're going to ultimately uh, split up Malcolm and his showmans. Even Malcolm is going to vote mm -hmm. against uh, Angie here on this vote. Yeah, and this was another all-time showing from from Probst in this travel. She's talk talking to Angie, asking her some questions, and she's kind of relaxed and giving like laid back answers. And he's yelling at her, "Wake up, Angie! Wake up! Are you seeing? Wake up! Open your eyes! Do you see what's happening here?" Probst Jeff is did not like her. No, he did hold back on a few people. Angie and Katie later on get, really gets the wrath of uh, his score and throughout mm -hmm. the season. He really gives it to some people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jeff wants people that are out there uh, really uh, playing hard and uh, not talking about cookies. No. Play big moves. Not not big cookies. Big moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, I, I don't know if Roxy would have ultimately made the difference. I, I feel like that this one was uh, a big blowout in the immunity challenges. Uh, this is where they have to dive into the water. Mm -hmm. uh, this was this one was tough. Yeah, uh, Denise and Malcolm are the only uh, star showers in this one. Everyone else uh, was was falling off quite a bit. Yeah. So ultimately, uh, they are going to vote out Angie, uh, and they come back. It's really rainy at Metzing. You know, I believe that uh, after this tribal council, this is uh, when Malcolm was on the podcast during season forty. He told the story about how that uh, Matt Singh in the early days of the game that they were coming back from the tribal council. I think it must've been this one where the boat that was taking them back to camp actually capsized. And uh, Malcolm and Denise and Russell, I presume uh, were all like thrown into the water uh, that night coming back from the tribal council. And Malcolm had to, you know, uh, talk Denise into staying in the game at this wow. point. And that is really the point where Malcolm says that, you know, their relationship changed to one of like, okay, this is my ally to like, this is a like super important person in my life. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of shows like this is one of my favorite pre-merge episodes of Survivor ever. To the to see Matt like th these three coming together, you got the Russell great line of uh, th this is going to be one of the great comeback stories of all time. Little the, does he know he's not going to be part of it, but the mm -hmm. other two, it is going to be one of the great comeback stories. And like this whole uh, falling like of Russell uh, of this is like his last stand uh, to really push through of the of the Matt Singh demise and this to see it come unfortunately falling apart for him and the rest of Matt saying it was just it's so captivating to watch to see how close they came on the, on this challenge and stuff but, but even just the beginning right here with the rain and just the misery that they're all going through it just sure is so captivating yeah the immunity challenge here in this episode is like it comes down to like uh like a quarter of an inch yeah. where they're swinging this wrecking ball back and forth trying to break these pots and all right malcolm ends up missing his shot and then artist swings and then it comes mm -hmm. back around but uh they were this close to getting russell swan through yeah and the slow-mo of it the of malcolm yeah. shot they did with the slow-mo coming back and then then pulls it out it was just a, a beautiful beautiful editing job
and then the music cuts off right as mm-hmm. Russell starts his rant. It's just very well done. The, the editing. Yeah. I, I really want to go in on on episode four for a bit. I mean, we're we're all here. We're all listening because we're we're uh, we're Survivor fans. But I'm sure we all want to recruit and get more people uh, in our lives and our family and friends to, to start watching the show. And so one of the reasons I really like Philippines is if you really want to introduce people and get them hooked on the show, I feel like Philippines one just as a season is perfect. It's easy to follow. You can keep up with it. It's interesting. But episode four specifically, if you only have 45 minutes, this is the this, this is the episode. If you finally convince someone to watch this show, episode four, if you only have one minute, 24 seconds, start with episode four because it is silent for that entire time. You can feel the misery. You see the wet feet. You know it's been raining for a while. You see sounds of uh, of the thunder, but you hear you hear them. But all you hear is their despair. They're silly. They're not saying any words. It's just brilliant. And the first words out of someone's mouth, it's Russell. He says, "Take a break, dude." It's just very well done television. You guys already went over the the editing of the final challenge with the slow motion, and then it comes back to see artists being a total smasher, destroying their dreams. And then we haven't even touched, to, to top it all off, the tr- the tribal council. It's a very rare time where we get three people. None of them are immune. It's just really good television with an idol, with an idol hunt and comedy along the way. It, it really has, every, this episode has everything you want, not just for Survivor, but TV, right? To be entertained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. It's probably uh, not since Palau that we have uh, a three-person uh, tribal council, unless I am uh, missing something along the way. And I know that uh, Twitter will remind me if that's the case. Uh, but that you know, it's um, you know wild to think that this is uh, what it's come down to after we're so early in the season, and you know uh, we see Malcolm and Denise. You know uh, we know they're together. But they have to do like a real like uh, snow job on Russell Swan, where that uh, Denise uh, is going to talk to him and tell him that they're going to vote for Malcolm. And, you know, I I just think that there was uh, so much interesting stuff uh, from Russell talking about uh, that his upbringing, uh, the story about uh, punching the bully, uh, I thought was like uh, really interesting where. Uh, if you didn't rewatch uh, the episode, he talks about how uh, that when he was a kid, he got beat up. Uh, he said, not like adult uh, beat up, like how mm-hmm. kids uh, get beat up. And then uh, one day he like punched the bully. And then uh, after that, like uh, that he just uh, that he wasn't afraid anymore. Uh, and so he uh, like uh, really like uh, just, uh, you know, found a way to get past that feeling. And I thought that that was like, uh, you know, a really interesting story. And and Denise is being like a very savvy player uh, in mm-hmm. that moment and sort of like capitalizing on like, uh, you know, Russell pouring his heart out uh, in that moment. Um, the, the breakdown that Russell has after the challenge is also so uh, gripping where that, he, uh, that he, he really, he looks to the heavens. So like, God, my God, why have you forsaken me of mm. that? Why has this happened to me that, you know, God, you put me out here and this wasn't supposed to happen. Like, why, why have you put me in this position? And you know, it's a great question for, you know, uh, anybody that's ever, you know, had something uh, not go their way. And you really like question like, uh, so, you know, sometimes in life, things are going your way. And like, ah, everything is uh, for a reason. Uh, and then you have these other times where uh, nothing is going right. And you just really like uh, question, like, what, what is it all for? Like, why has any of this happened to me? What, what did I, what am I doing wrong? And, uh, you know, I, I thought that that's uh, so like uh, emotional and uh compelling from russell and then uh all the way to tribal council like uh you know it's a uh very interesting tribal council of you know uh russell doesn't know that ultimately it's going to be him yeah and what's interesting about the breakdown of how 
this this uh, tribal one with Malcolm and Denise both having to convince Russell that they're going to vote for each other, it really kind of foreshadows how the Final Four is going to play out where, again, Malcolm and Denise are going to have to go against each other. Here, they're pretending to go against each other, and Russell eventually is voted out. But then at four, they really are going against each other with uh, – uh, Scoop and Lisa representing uh, Russell in that moment, and they really are the swing vote. So it was, it was very interesting that they were starting to turn, faking to turn against each other, and then eventually they will turn against each other in very similar type moment. And are, it's such a like existential crisis for Russell because at the tribal council that he talks with Jeff about, like Jeff is like, but but you know you, you know uh, like you know people make mistakes, it happens, and Russell's trying to say that no, that his whole life is about excellence and right. and success and succeeding and so that uh, this is not supposed to happen yeah jeff says you're just a guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that's just a guy <laughs> that's all uh, so uh with russell uh, you know i want to go back a little bit I think it's fascinating that we got like a therapy session on television. Like it felt mm -hmm. a little, uh, that was interesting. We, you don't really see a lot of live therapy sessions on, on national television. And then uh, to, to go back to Denise, I think because this is more about how savvy Malcolm and Denise are than, uh, than, than Russell. I mean, with Russell, there's really not much you can do. His whole story at Tribal was what everyone says throughout the whole season. If you're not going to get rid of Denise or Malcolm, they're going to win. I mean, it's a really good... Uh, a pin that just travels throughout the rest of the season. I mean, that's he, he he's the storyteller for what's happening now that will extend throughout the, the rest of the season. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Russell Swan uh, is ultimately going to get voted out here. Uh, he doesn't end up uh, coming back again uh, post Philippines. I don't know if he really is particularly interested, but mm -hmm. I, I do feel like that he's a guy who that, you know, in an earlier season, uh, seems like that he would have been a guy who re like really could have maybe taken his group to the promised land. Uh, he seems like that he is like that type of leader that I think he could get the right group of people like pumped up who would like run through a wall for him, who would be like ready to go out there and lay it all on the line for him. It just so happens that the two groups that he was at, and he had a, he got a little bit of buy in from the group in Samoa, but just no, he had nobody who was just all in on this group. Maybe Roxy might have been, but mm -hmm. other than that, uh, this was not the right group of people for Russell. Yeah, if Russell plays a single digit season of Survivor, I could he would be someone who would very much easily get down to final four, final three, and if he could win the final immunity, w would totally win the show. He fits that mold of you know building a group together, trying to you know build a coalition and going strong through the game with it he just he, he just happened to be up against malcolm and he's two of the best players that you know played and, and super loyal to each other that you know as the, the they kept losing and losing there was really like there's nothing he could do other than putting people in a better position to win but for him himself i would love to see him come back i don't know if he would i think i think i fully believed him when he said i'm done with the show but i you know i mean that was that what that was seven eight years ago mm -hmm. uh this season so if he wanted to come back i would love to see him try it again and really you know, push through that now so many years off, but I, I just don't see him coming. I don't see him wanting to come back. Yeah. Put him on the challenge. Yeah. There uh, you go. <laughs> I don't know about him on the, on the challenge, but do you think he has sort of like, uh, I was not quite to this level, but like the Tony thing where should, if, if he came back a third time, he has sort of this flame out appearance here in Philippines. Is he kind of remembered for that? And that, uh, people aren't necessarily like looking at him as a target. I think he would just need to embrace, though, the leader. I think him trying yeah. to go against who he is, as Ari said, like that's only going to like push you even more to that direction. He just needs to step up and be like, "Look, I I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to do what I can, but I want to have like input and you know, you know, make this more of like a, a democracy. But I'm going to try to be the leader. That's who I am. If he tries to go against that, that's where he fails and falls apart." Yeah, I think it's more about the right group of people exactly. for him, and uh, we'll see. But I do think that, you know, if they end up doing some sort of like an all-star season, and again, uh, I think that they're going to look at some people that they might not have been thinking about as like uh, returning players like only mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. If you're going to continue uh, the pledge of having, a, you know, a 50% diverse cast, then I think that he's somebody who they should definitely consider because his, you know, arc through the two seasons of Survivor, I, I think is like a, a very interesting one. Uh, like, I, I think that, that he has like a really good game uh, still in, like, 
put him out there and don't let it rain on him for right. uh the you know 90 percent of the time so also a very funny uh scene from the episode four when he was going on the idol hunt is this something survivor doesn't always do these are more something you uh, you see a lot on bravo and mtv shows where they really play with the editing he's like you know i know it's i, I i'm looking right past the idol i know on the screen they're gonna do a little flash and i'm gonna be like i'm such an idiot and then they do a little flash of exactly where the idol is i thought that was a very it's a very fun scene that cbs yeah. and survivor doesn't really do too much and i i i really appreciated it okay um, let, let's uh, talk about Calabaw, uh, because uh, they are going to ultimately... Uh, actually, you know what? Let, let's do it this way. Let's talk about Tandang, and then we'll double back to Calabaw, because they have uh, the next two tribal councils. Uh, the Tandang tribe... Boy, uh, this is uh, we've talked about like Kasaya was sort of like a you know dysfunctional functional group. Uh, Ari, uh, th that really describes the Tandang tribe. It's people that work very well together when they're when they're uh, at, you know their their butts are on the line. But uh, the vo the moment it comes to talk about how much they like each other, they they really don't. But but you know what? Let's really break it down. It, it all boils down to Pete, the the puppet master, but he's actually uh, you know he's more of a Pinocchio trying mm -hmm. to cause chaos, and then mm -hmm. someone that you never want angry is just going to be angry at you, and it just mm -hmm. uh, you know with six people. It's yeah. going to implode. It, it yeah. takes a while for the implosion. Brian, uh, Pete really played with dynamite. And uh, the, he this comes up in the finale where, you know, uh, the, Jeff talks about how like uh, what what Pete did. And he's sort of like bragging about how like, oh, I got uh, RC and Abby Maria to hate mm -hmm. each other. And uh, RC says, you know, Pete must have really long arms because <laughs> he's going to pat himself on the back. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, and and, and uh, like Pete really like was like was like f the full little finger experience where aha uh -huh, chaos is a ladder. Oh wait, uh no, I'm dead now. Yeah, he was very much like Doctor Arts with uh, the dynamite going out to the Black Rock. He's like, be careful the dynamite, don't let it blow you up, and then it blows mm -hmm. him up. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he he did he didn't really understand the full wrath of Abby. He enjoyed watching him with the sideline, but he needed to realize that that's gonna come right back around and get you as well. He you know he <laughs> he did the he was able to separate her and RC, and then they should have cut bait with both of them because or even just maybe stuck with RC less than less than Abby. Uh, but other than that, like he he played with fire too much with the, with Abby. That's yeah. literally his regret from his final words. I should not have played with mm -hmm. Abby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's what, that's what makes Abby so fun on a season is that she just brings a level of chaos that, you know, you, why you don't need like all seasons of uh, like game bots and stuff like yeah. that. You want people that are going to be different and like cause different issues and fights and people that have to like relate to each other. And having Abby there is such a fun character. And I'm so glad she made it as far as she did because she really added so much throughout the entire season, especially in the in the early days when Tandang wasn't going to tribal without our, without Abby. They, they would have been pretty boring uh, as a tribe. So with her there, really made it entertaining for when they weren't even voting people out they don't go to tribal and yet there's always something every mm -hmm. episode with them there, there's always some little beef or fight or struggle or vulnerability that's worth uh looking into so the early story at tandang is that uh lisa is not fitting in uh with this group it seems like that R rc and abby and pete uh are getting along i guess uh artists is part of that as well uh, RC is going to like be reaching out to scoop in, but Lisa is the one who doesn't really fit in. Uh, Mike scoop in recognizes Lisa Welchel. Who, who was a bigger fan of who? Like they, they <laughs> both geeked out over each other. Scoop and geeked over, uh, Lisa, Lisa over scoop. In. it was, uh, it was very interesting to see them interact. Mutual admiration society yeah. of, mm -hmm. uh, scoop in and Lisa. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, Lisa was the outsider, uh, in the, in the tribe. And it, it goes to show like if they lose, Lisa probably would go home first. I, I would imagine that dynamic, but because she was able to kind of stick, you know, get her footing and get a, a few days with the tribe, she was able to build other dynamics and let Abby and RC kind of do their thing um, and allow Lisa to really kind of build a, a foundation within that tribe. Yeah. yeah with, but, with Lisa, what was happening was it looked like she kept leaving in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of uh, middle of the day. And people were like, why, why is she leaving? Like she wouldn't announce it to anyone. She would just get up and leave. And I think yeah. that weirded people out. She might have been having some uh, emotional moments uh, while, uh, while she was out there. But really, a, a lot of the drama is going to come around. Uh, <laughs> RC finds a clue in the rice. Yep. And uh, ultimately, the Hidden Media Idol is going to be the cover to the rice in this season. And so 
RC is going to uh, talk to Abby about, okay, uh, this stays between us. Uh, and so RC and Abby are uh, very close friends. Yeah, they clicked immediately. They uh, they get each other. They finish each other's sentences. They're they're gonna ride off into the sunset together as the best yes. pairing ever. RC reminds me of uh, Lisa Simpson. I feel like get get Hannah Shapiro. Let's do a let's do an overachiever archetype. I feel like <laughs> someone like RC cannot handle the personality of a, of an Abby Maria. If oh, uh, if only she knew. Poor RC. Yeah, if- this rivalry would become so heated that I, I I still believe this is like one of those like Corinne sugar things where I, I don't think that these two speak to this day. Challenge rivals three. Let's do it. Let's go bring them there. That'd be perfect. They're bringing survivor people. Let's yeah. Do it. Yeah. To the point where uh, I'm not sure about this, but I think that like RC might've been in the mix for second chances and would not do it. If Abby Maria was also on the ballot. <laughs> What wow. a gangster. <laughs> she thinks she has enough to pull with a survivor. You can't have me if you have Abby. I feel like yeah. uh, Survivor's taking Abby over RC any day well, of the week. Well, th- in fairness, they did try to bring RC back before they uh, brought back Abby, where RC was on location in season 27 uh, before they're going to bring Abby back in season 31. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, yeah, I, I think they definitely wanted to uh, see RC play again. Uh, it has not happened to this date. Um, but all right. Uh, well, they, they cast have... Angelina, and uh, you know, it's about a bit of a re- it's an RC reboot. Angelina, mm-hmm. they rebooted the the <laughs> archetype. Okay, so um, at, over at Tandang, uh, we're we're gonna see that uh, eventually, um, Abby uh wants to just uh, relax. This is by the third episode. Uh, uh, Abby just wants to chill out. RC wants to look for the idol. Uh, and they basically start to feud over what they should do. And uh, Abby is upset. Uh, she goes to Pete and uh, tells Pete about how uh, th- that uh, RC has the clue for the idol. Yeah, Abby very upset that she doesn't want to look for the idol. She wants to relax. She wants to chill out. So in retaliation, she looks for the idol, but with someone else. And she finds it with that person, and it uh, blows up their entire relationship. So uh, that's just the kind of uh, person we're dealing with here. Yeah. So Abby Maria is going to uh, have the uh, the idol eventually. There you go. Uh, her and Pete have the idol. Uh, RC doesn't know where it is. Um, Meanwhile, another fun, another fun aspect of the season, by the way, the uh, idol in plain sight look. Uh, you know, Survivor China did that, obviously, but I, I always, I also enjoy that that it's not, you know, needing multiple clues or it's hidden under, you know, the deck outside of the water or up in a tree. It's, it's right there in plain sight. I, I like that as well as an aspect for the idols. Yeah, it's been a minute since uh, they had that in any of the seasons. I'm trying to think uh, if there's any other times uh, since China that they had that, but uh, no, that's a that's a good pull. Um, so. Ultimately, Pete is going to try to really drive a wedge between Abby and RC, which he did not need to do. That is not necessary. Uh, And so uh, he's going to take the clue uh, and then uh, put it uh, in RC's bags. I have that right. He dug up the clue from where Abby showed him and then threw it into uh rc's bag yeah yeah i think he was waiting for an opening of like rc's bag to spill and then wanted to make it seem like it was right there yeah he had a it was a very uh, intricate plan that, uh, I, I don't i don't hate it but they don't go to tribal to make use of it this isn't a bad move maybe if you do it after tribal i don't know it's just uh i don't yeah. hate it but uh it was a bad move uh <laughs> All right. Do you think that uh, Tandang needed to throw a challenge to sort of like blow off some steam? I, I, personally, I'm anti throwing, but those people needed to throw uh, probably two challenges. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this was just like um, this. This is the case for throwing challenges mm-hmm. uh, where that I, I just think there was like too much like bad blood going on, like too much friction. And the tribe ended up like completely like f- like they needed to sort of just like let some of the like the uh, venom out of this tribe. 
I mean, what's happening is, so Abby thinks RC screwed her. RC has no idea what's happening. So it's two people living in alternate realities. They can't even communicate because they're they're operating under two different sets of circumstances and facts. And the only one who even has any idea is, is Pete. And he's not going to say anything. So it, we're, we are watching, we're witnessing two people living, compl- just living in completely different worlds, speaking different languages. Even though they're mm-hmm. on the same beach, yeah, yeah. The okay. only problem with them trying to throw it is, like, I don't know how many other people will be in it because I feel like if they were trying to throw it, I guess they guess maybe RC out in that spot. But like, I don't think Lisa would be super comfortable thinking that oh, maybe they're going after me. Obviously, Scoop it would be with RC. So now it's just artists and Pete and, and Abby throwing it, and Abby never competes in challenges anyway. So it would be it would be kind of difficult to throw it in that type of scenario. I feel yeah. like. Abby's sitting out a lot of challenges early on and Jeff is like annoyed from the start of yeah. like, uh, again, Abby Maria sitting out of an- uh, another challenge. How many challenges have you even been in Abby Maria? So like I twisted, I twisted my knee. I twisted my knee twice. I twisted my knee. It's like we mm-hmm. keep winning. What do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff uh, was not really uh, loving Abby Maria early on. Um, is there anything else that, important to talk about from the uh, pre-swap Tandang before Malcolm shows up? I don't think so. I think that, okay. that's really it. They were just yeah. a ticking time bomb, and this was the tick, tick, tick part of it. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then let's talk about what's going on over at Calibur. Uh Calibur, really, uh, a lot of the story is about uh, Penner versus Jeff Kent and the crew. Yes, Jeff Kent will not let a vet win. He can't do it. They got to get the vets out. Everyone's got to stick together. We cannot let a veteran player win this game. Mm-hmm. That is his main focus. And I guess from his perspective, he, he goes touches on this in, in the reunion. He wants to try to, you know, you know, get the target off of him, and he just dumps it all on the Penner, and Penner makes it as an, like an easy target as a veteran player. So I do get it from his perspective. If he's worried people are going to recognize him, he needs someone else for people to go after. So why not go after Jeff? Or Penner. Yeah. You want yeah. you want a you want a veteran to win. You want one of us to win. Mm-hmm. And Love. Penner knows that he is in trouble with this group, and uh, realizes that he needs to go and look for the idol. Uh, and he realizes that the idol uh, must be around here. Uh, and he ultimately uh, deduces about uh, that it must be the rice. The rice must be the clue, but he needs uh, to get everybody out of there so he can ultimately search for the idol. Yes, very fun and seeing him searching all around camp. Uh, and I think, who was it, Dawson or, or Katie? Yes. One of them run up, uh, and he has to pretend, oh, I lost my contact. The contact just fell down there, but I got it. We're all good. I was just looking for my contact down uh, below the shelter in, in the dirt. I was able to find it, though. Mm-hmm. What a save. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that he, he couldn't he couldn't uh, find it and uh, was able to bluff Dawson off. Uh, he finds the idol eventually while everybody's going to hang out in the cave. And so Penner ultimately uh, has has an idol. And so he's going to get some protection, Ari. And for the first time, Penner is now on the opposite end of, of, of the Yule conversation, right? Now he's the one with the power, and mm-hmm. now he has a little bit of leverage that he can introduce later. And so now it's really it's really cool to see Penner on the opposite side, right? Like we saw him on the receiving end of uh, uh, of this, and now he's the one holding it. And, and you know what? He does what he needed to do, right? He secured himself probably uh, at least a vote or two from, uh, from Jeff's perspective. So yeah. it did its job. It protected him before Tribal. So yeah. by the third episode, uh, that it's Carter uh, who realizes that, uh, hey, was there a thing that was on top of the rice box? Yeah, the only words Carter spoke speaks basically the entire season. But he does he but, does recognize that uh, something's missing. But by the way, you know how this conversation even starts? It, it's literally Penner at camp, and he says, "My ass hurts." My I didn't even realize hurts. my ass hurts until I sit back down. And then they intro like, hey, by the way, isn't the idol missing? Like, uh, like what a, what a great, there's no mm. cut. That's li- They were literally talking about their asses hurting, and now it's uh, game time. <laughs> yeah. And so, all right, they realize that uh, Penner probably has the idol. And so uh, we're going to see Penner and Jeff Kent talk. And 
they're talking about that uh, we uh, see Penner basically like a go, uh, you know, full Penner talk about how that uh, that he uh, suspects that Jeff Kent thinks Penner has the idol. Yeah, it's a great read from Penner all around. He recognizes that Jeff it has him as his number one target and wants him out. He recognizes that he thinks that he has the idol. So why not just come clean completely, gain some honesty points and, uh, you know, secures a, a good relationship with him and knows that comes with Carter and really puts him in a good spot. So yeah, what a, a very top notch read by Penner and a, a very smart play. Yeah. They want to get something going. Is that the four finger handshake? Yeah. I, I love that Jeff Kent names his moves. Yeah, like uh, he always has names for his moves. There's a four finger handshake. Later on, we get the the, the pinner punch. Uh, I like that one too. Time to pull the pinner punch. Pinner punch. Um, so, all right, how do you give the four finger handshake? <laughs> I, uh, is it look? I I've tried recreating recreating it. What what is that? Like how? Like what, how, do you, how, how do you, do you drop the pinky it, uh, out? The pinky got to drop the pinky. Yeah, you go with yeah. The pinkies though, you kind of curl up the pinky <laughs> and you do the rest. Otherwise, I don't know how else. Get, yeah. get rid of the thumb has got to be kind of weird. Yeah, very, very mm. Sandra esque to have a very arbitrary, uh, haha, got you, I lied. Mm -hmm. Four yeah. finger handshake. Did Jeff Kent invent the four finger handshake or is it a real thing? It's been passed down from generation from generation. <laughs> Kent's. Yeah. Okay. Uh, four finger handshake. Uh, the number one result uh, looks like it's survivor stuff. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's. That there is a, uh, I think that might be a Jeff Kent original. Okay. It looks Good very weak from the photo I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah. If anyone gave me that handshake, I would know immediately they were lying to me. Yeah. Do you think you could tell if someone's <laughs> dropping the pinky in the handshake? And you, can you like, uh, yeah, feel that? Pink. Not the mm -hmm. pinky. Yeah. He seems to be grabbing. No, no, no. The four finger handshake is you grab everything but the thumb. Hmm. It's oh, very so you, weird. So you use all five, but you only grab four. Interesting. He, he like seems like a real like, tell. He like grabbed his yeah. like forearm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that feels like an Oreo cookie thing. Like it's very yeah. obvious that you're uh, doing your tell there if you don't grab the person's thumb. Clear, clearly, you're lying to me with this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so it seems like that the guys are starting to really click now at Calabaw to the point where uh, Dawson. And uh, Dana and Katie uh, are starting to suspect that uh, something is up. And uh, we're going to see that divide play out a little bit more when uh, Denise gets there. And we're going to ultimately uh, get to uh, the first tribal council they're going to go to uh, in the next episode. Anything else you want to set up from Calibor? Not really, but I would have loved to see how a tribal would have went with the six of them because I think it, we would have had a rock situation, and that could have uh, been a lot of fun to see to see play out. Unfortunately, we obviously didn't get it with Dana, uh, a medevac, and obviously with Denise joining them. But I would have loved to see uh, yeah. a, a potential rock thing. Yeah, how would that have gone? Say they went to like the fourth tribal council. Um, now I, I suspect that Penner might be like very forthcoming at the tribal council of like. Uh, well, you can put the votes on me, but I have the idol. I'm not going home. Uh, so I, did I put the votes on Jeff? That seems uh, unlikely. Yeah, unless do Jeff and uh, Carter try to play off like they're going to vote for Penner and then Penner plays his idol and they play off one of them. But I don't know if they're the girls would necessarily buy that or if Penner would give the idol to Jeff in that situation if they think he's going to play it for himself. Um, a, few, a few fun dynamics that could have played out. I think what would have happened was Jeff probably like uh, the women probably would have thought that Penner was the target from Jeff. That's all he's been saying. Penner plays the idol uh, and Jeff probably votes another way because he wants to be in Penner's boat for a little while. So yeah. it's probably okay, so uh, a Katie the or Dawson. The women vote Penner and then uh, Carter and then and it's basically they got uh, it's a three zero vote. Yeah. And, and I feel Jeff, Jeff and Dawson, we were talking about pairs earlier. This is a very weird, interesting pair. They're, they're kind of like the, uh, uh, they're, they like circulate around each other. They're like, uh, uh you know, like a, like a moon circulating a planet. And, and Dawson decides her strategy is I, I love Dawson, but her strategy was let me be a professional, annoying person to Jeff Kent. She literally changes her tone every time she speaks to him. It's great. She was like, she goes, Jeff, is this a fire? Like specifically calling out like her voice to to make sure she's annoying Jeff Kent. She's great. Uh, we need 
we yeah. need more Dawson's in the world. We find out early on that she recognizes Jeff Kent. She says that she has a, a boyfriend who used to watch sports and she recognizes. I mean, like, what a pull. Uh, mm -hmm. If that if that's the case, uh, that that's how she recognized uh, Jeff Kent. It's sort of like it's just like a passing thing. But uh, coming up in the next episode where she's ultimately going to get voted out, uh, we see her really like ratchet it up. Um, but before that, we are going to get uh, the uh the dissolution is that a word of uh malcolm dissolvement and dissolvement that sounds like something yeah. i would say so yeah <laughs> sure uh malcolm <laughs> and denise are gonna go their separate ways but not before malcolm is going to uh track down the uh mm -hmm. matt saying idol and pocket it uh before they go and so we're going to go to a reward challenge where uh russell swan is voted out of the tribe and so it's going to be a seven on seven game where one of uh, malcolm and denise is going to go to each of uh, the tribes now all right i know that you uh were interested in talking about malcolm and denise pick a buff and then there's a moment when they're talking about uh, should they trade buffs mm -hmm. very interesting how how does the season shake out because Ma so malcolm grabs his he asks denise want to trade which by the way another theme right we got trade later on so he asks if you want to trade denise says nope so we've got malcolm on tandang we've got denise on calabar and so uh you know if we if she said yes we've got a completely different uh a whole different story right how do, do you want to do yeah. you wanna indulge do you want to do yes. uh how would yes, this shake out Okay, so I, I don't know how close the uh, two challenges are. Now, Dana is going to, like, uh, there's nothing that Malcolm is going to be able to do to save Dana. So she's going to be a lost cause. Mm -hmm. um, so episode five's immunity challenge ends up being the uh, thrash, splash, and bash. Uh, tribes race uh, to a steep hill and remove knots from a drawbridge. Uh, very first close. To spill. So it was very close. I, is Malcolm the difference maker to get Calabaw to win? So I think that came down to the puzzle, right? And I think um, I don't think either Denise or Malcolm were part of the puzzle. So I don't think it really changes much. I think the, the result probably stays the same there. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tandang lost by one second. I had in my notes, so um, could Malcolm have changed the tide? I mean, uh, Katie was the one that left them uh behind, so um, you're no stronger than your slowest, yeah, okay. Um, but could they could Malcolm have like uh, take Malcolm off of like made Tandang, Katie more, uh, more put him powerful. on Calibon? No, I'm just saying that that uh, they have like one more second to do the puzzle, like mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they have a bigger lead at that point. Well, I think um, Malcolm was a key player in that reward challenge right before it, so maybe with the if they win that one, they have the additional strength of uh, whatever the food yeah. that they want, so maybe that play maybe that uh, gives them an extra boost. I just wondered, does Malcolm get uh, Calibot to at least one of these wins here? Yes, because there's one that he wins by himself. The 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 JT Tooth Memorial. Yep. The, the mm -hmm. I don't know what that one's called. Yeah, oh, yeah the launching the, the ball the in the in the big nets. Yeah, yeah. yeah Malcolm he single handedly dominates that challenge, as Prop says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it does uh, change, impact the season. I like you know um, Malcolm. I think ends up having a good relationship with Lisa, where she ends up telling him about the idol uh, when she finds it. I wonder if, um, you know, Malcolm ends up like uh, going more with like uh, Jeff Kent, like Pete ultimately tells Malcolm the plan later on because they have such a good relationship. So I think it does really end up uh, changing things up. And then, then obviously would then change uh, Denise's kind of story arc of being at every tribal council, maybe like sitting out one. Does that make her not as she appealing loses her as, mojo yeah loses them like does that maybe l allow lisa or someone like that as a you know better tell a story i think having the the store the backing of been to every tribal and survived every tribal is like a great story to tell at a tribal mm -hmm. so losing that that you know maybe that ends up costing denise maybe denise is able to sit down tandang and sort of like have like some group <laughs> therapy also a lot of issues in this group yeah, she could work through uh, get RC and uh, Abby back on the same page. Yeah, work and artists idol. and Mike and like uh, yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of rivalries in the season. People that really dislike each other. So maybe Ar Denise artist, 
Oris is the spies of Scoopin throughout Tandang. He's also one of the funnier yes. uh, ongoing storylines. Every time he does something stupid, where he there was that one challenge where he dove in and broke the mask, and Artis is just infurious with with Scoopin that he broke the mask there. He he just can't stand so everything Scoopin does. Just gets on Artis's skin. Yeah, Scoopin Artis does a thing. Cut to Artis. Yep. Yeah, Artis hated Mike Scoopin <laughs> hated so it. much, so much. He had uh, <laughs> flames on the side side of his face, and um. Artis was very uh, coy, Ari. I don't know if you remember any of this, that he never, he said there was a reason why he hated Mike Scoopin. And he was very coy about, he never said publicly what the reason was why he hated Mike Scoopin so much. Wasn't it the mask thing? I, do you no, know the I feel, I it rings like, a bell. I feel like that there were uh, interviews. I don't know if he's ever done a quarantine uh, confessional uh all along the way maybe he explained. invested money in something maybe the product was mo- i don't know i'm not mm-hmm. sure you get caught up in a scoop and ponzi scheme <laughs> um i i don't know but he r- r- uh really hated uh mike scoopin you, you hear every now and then just artists going come on mike <laughs> just being mm-hmm. very annoyed yeah. <laughs> yeah yes uh he would really not like his decision that he will make uh when we get to the negotiation in the oh, reward yes. challenge in a couple episodes but okay so denise is going to go to kelebo and then uh malcolm is going to go off to tandang so they're going to go uh go their separate ways uh they'll meet back up at the merge and so uh we uh, we have a interesting reward challenge though right after the swap where we're gonna be uh, like uh, uh holding up our little platform things with a statue and then you have to knock the other person's statue mm-hmm. off first time we get this challenge on survivor uh and it's a doozy yeah very fun one you get to see some fun strategy of uh you know some people tossing it up in the air and then diving at the at the statue to knock it off you have a very fun match of artist's length he could basically just stand on the other side of the circle and reach over and uh mm-hmm. knock over i think it was katie or, or someone's uh statue very funny stuff there very very entertaining challenge my yeah. favorite matchup was dawson versus abby maria dawson pull inadvertently pulls her hair mm-hmm. and i feel like we we really missed out on yeah. those two interacting post-merge yeah, Abby Maria tells Dawson, hey, uh, play like a man, uh, not like a B word. A yeah. uh, lot, lot of B word in this season. Which is, which, which, by the way, play like a man. Dawson's like, huh? Like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Also, uh, time to bring yeah. out, time to bring up the point. People, uh, Dawson, we call her by your last name. What a, a round of applause for Dawson. Sarah. Yes. <laughs> She did it. She's like breaking glass ceilings before uh, yes. we knew they were there. Yes. Are you saying that she's the first uh, woman to go by last name on the show? <laughs> I don't know. If she's the first one, but uh, it was pretty natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of another I one. I mean, this is pre Wentworth. So, yeah. Mm, yeah, I can't think of what another. A, what n- an n- icon. What a legend. Good yeah. For Dawson. I do feel like that uh Jeff calls Jerry Manthy at points. Uh I'm not sure in which season that is. Uh but J- Jerry doesn't play again post uh Heroes vs. Villains. So uh I think he's, it's been done before. Not, not consistently. Much. I uh, to be honest, with as it was going through, I almost didn't even realize that that was Dawson's last name. I thought that was just her first name. Uh mm-hmm. so good for good for her again, not Billing. Yeah, Brian, are you a big Dawson's Creek guy or only One Tree Hill? <laughs> only One Tree Hill. I haven't gotten into Dawson's Creek just yet, but it's it's on the list. It's, it's on, on the list. list. It's, it's coming. Of Dawson's Season three, Creek. episode seven of uh, episode <laughs> three eighteen. <laughs> yeah, Penner says that at one point. Um, all right, so Malcolm comes to Tandang, uh, and Malcolm. Everybody loves Malcolm. Malcolm says that he is like the stud football player from the rival school. That's more like Friday Night Lights, right, Brian? Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, that's a uh, you know the 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 New Orleans kid that comes in, but he's hated. But yeah, that's a uh, star football player coming in. Take it all, take it all the spotlight. Yeah. RC said that her strategy when Malcolm showed up was to flirt with him, but I, I think Pete uh, beat her to the punch. He br- he bro flirted by telling <laughs> he, him. He, he telling him he has five thousand. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So Denise is making friends uh, with the women, but this uh, women's group at the uh, at, at Calabar, even though the women will outnumber the men, does not last for long because Dana 
is uh, not feeling well. Uh, one of my favorite lines from the season is that Penner is talking about how cold it is. And he really empathizes with Dawson because she's so little. And he says, and I'm a big fat guy and I'm cold. Yeah. You've mm-hmm. got to feel for her. She's all, they put her all wrapped up in like the tarp. And I think Penner says, like, just get naked, get under here. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of an aggressive uh, move. Yeah. So let's strip all the way. In, Look, in all of your clothing, Penner. remove it immediately. <laughs> yeah. In first to Penner, you know, you're you're in wet clothes. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. For sure. Just the visual of like, get naked, get under this big blanket, and we'll, we'll hold yeah, you. Yeah. If the same. blanket is dry, uh, yeah. you know, you're better, you're better off than uh, like having like these uh, wet clothes stuck to you. So medical comes in. And poor, uh, poor Dana, uh, that uh, she's having like some sort of a stomach. Do we ever find out what her problem is? I don't think they ever said officially yeah. what it was. But the, I felt bad. The doc kind of downplayed it the way he said yeah. it. He was like, oh, no, her tummy hurts. I feel like it was a lot more than like a little tummy ache. She was like in severe agony, like hallucinating. I feel like yeah, you know, using was- the word tummy makes it seem so uh, light. She was in bad pain. And uh, the doctor says, eh. No, but she's fine. <laughs> uh, she can sit it out. And she's like, no, no, no. Stop the it. doctor gets called in. He's like, well, what is she dying? I don't know. Like, uh, no. Well, then stay yeah. in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll yeah. come back in 12 hours. See if you passed out. Yeah, yeah, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, here's what we're going to prescribe for you. Just wait another day. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. The old uh, survivor rubs some dirt on it. Yeah, uh, I think officially, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a quit. I think I've been burned on uh, this week in Survivor history trivia on this before. Uh, yeah, this is technically a quit yeah. and not a medical evacuation. Yeah, let's get nerdy. How about this? Can we like get a petition going, Justice for Dana? Of can we retroactively change this to a medical evacuation? <laughs> Yeah. Well, she says it. She, never, she never had. She never had her uh, name written down. Never was voted out. Just, you know, there's a case to be made for Dana to come back. Well, yeah, that's came up <laughs> on the read, but Jeff was sort of like half heartedly said that. I guess there's yeah, a yeah. case to be made for Dana yeah. to come back. <laughs> didn't didn't sound like that. That was going to actually uh, no. be top of mind for Jeff. It okay. Not. All right. Uh, Penner knows what it's like to be in that situation. Yeah, it's excruciating to get. Uh, what does he say? There's, there's always like a pit. Uh, in your stomach the entire time, a hole in your heart that you're removed from mm-hmm. the game. It, uh, it never yeah. leaves you. Okay. All right. Um, we talked about this immunity challenge. Ultimately, uh, Calabaw is going to come up just short. And so uh, we're going to get a, a little bit of uh, Dawson uh, trolling uh, Jeff Kent. And she's, yes, yeah, she's, uh, our, she's talking about like our, our baseball players, uh, good athletes. <laughs> <laughs> well, What's she let's going rank, for here? I, I think a tier list with Puya is what she's going with. Number <laughs> one, football. Number two, basketball. <laughs> End of list, baseball. Binum. <laughs> but yeah. so what's the play? If you know he's she's a baseball player. Professionally you, annoying. That's do, what she is, she's is having fun. Is it smart to out him there? If you think like you could go home, did, no. should you out him? But, but they could be no. like, oh, let's vote out the $60 million guy. Why are Damn. we going to let him get the money? Yeah, if you're going home, you got to try to mix it up a little bit. I feel like she had this card in her pocket. You might as well go for broke here and just toss it out there and see if it sticks. She was more interested in having fun, I think. <laughs> terrible, terrible move. She had a lot of information and just didn't or couldn't do anything with it. She she was more concerned with just annoying him. <laughs> yeah, I, I think she tried to maybe like extort him like uh do you think that that's what this was it's like hey like if i if, if he know like uh then i could blow up his spot at tribal council he wouldn't think to vote me out like her subtly trying to uh let him know that she knows mm-hmm. what he knows that no one else knows mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so yeah but this instead it just really... inspired him to put the target on her but you know last week i watched millennials versus gen x and this kind of comes up like when hannah is uh suspects that brett is a police officer and not a funeral director and she kind of does the same thing <laughs> tweaking ideas yeah, it, it is i guess if you're that bored it, it is uh kind of your own tv show of uh, yeah. tweaking jeff uh, to see if you can make him squirm knowing that he's a he's a baseball player but no matter what, like, I think that this is uh, a, a a bad move. Like, I mean, this comes up a, a lot, even going back to Survivor Kagiyan, where uh, that hasn't happened yet uh, by the time this airs, where, you know, Sarah, she, she like, uh, confronts Tony, you know, one-on-one about, like, are you a cop? 
uh, and Tony denies it in her one on one. But I still think that that's the move, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna bring either bring it up to everybody when that person's not around, or then bring it up to them one on one and uh, see if they bite. But don't just annoy the person and mm-hmm. give them a reason to want to get rid of you in front of everybody. It's a good good for us. We got to watch that funny scene. But yeah, I think especially because she knew it was between her and Katie going home. So I just don't know why you go home with that card in your pocket. It may blow up and you're definitely going home, but you're almost definitely going home anyway. So at least try something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She doesn't out that Jeff Kent is a baseball player. Um, she will be uh, more concerned on a uh, more memorable exit where she gives a kiss and a hug to Jeff Probst. Yeah, big uh, smooch right on the cheek for Probst. Yeah. All right, he gonna, moved his head. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was where uh, the shrug gif came because I knew it came from this season. I thought it came from this moment. I didn't realize it came from later on, but I thought this yeah, was Penner's where boot. the shrug. Yeah. yeah, I thought it came from this. I was expecting it. Yeah. So, Ari, are you surprised that it takes 25 seasons for a contestant to kiss Jeff? <laughs> Probably not because I'm sure they ask, like, uh, are you a Jeff Probst uh, stalker? And I'm sure they remove them immediately from the from the casting mm-hmm. pool. Yeah. Well, how about at the reunion where she doubles down? Sprints forward to kiss him right in the lips. Good line yeah. by Jeff yeah. to cover himself. She doesn't yeah. kiss as well as my wife. Uh, that was a good line. Mm-hmm. She went running up there. It was like, a, is that Sia? How how would Nicole react, Rob, if at a live know it all as a fan ran up and just kissed you? How would that um, go? I, I don't think that the fan would get out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think it would go well. It wouldn't go great for the fan or me. Like, well, I, I didn't do anything. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, 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 I, I don't advise it to any, uh, anybody who's thinking of doing that on a live show. Right. Um, all right. Uh, that, that was Dawson. Uh, we have one more episode uh, before the merge. And uh, we really start to explore uh, the dynamics over at Tandang. Uh, Denise and Katie are the only women that are left in that group. Um, we're going to see also some more of the issues at Tandang where, uh, all right, Mike Scoop and eats raw rice. <laughs> well, that's the way the chickens eat it every day. <laughs> that, was, that was his response. That's what he told people. Kucha corn? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so it, so Pete Pete informs us he thinks it cooks in your body because it's pretty close to 100 <laughs> degrees. Yeah, well So that, Mike I, makes horrible decisions. Yeah. So that got me thinking like uh Brian, if you get like one of those like rice cookers mm-hmm. like uh is it at about 100 degrees? I guess so. Can you like just swallow like popcorn and shake yourself up a little bit? Does that pop the popcorn like in your stomach? Is is there is there a whole like new cooking mechanism you can do with just the uh, things in your body? You know, Mike Scoopin tells us in Survivor Australia, he says, I am a student of nutrition. I know, like, <laughs> the man <laughs> is not. He is not. Uh, he makes a lot of wild food choices. I mean, he, he makes uh, bad choices all right. around. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so he's, he's just, like, eating the rice uh, <laughs> just nonstop. He's eating them out of house and home. And so... Uh, that's going to be sort of like the backstory for the reward challenge, which is like this giant wicker ball in the mud and they're playing for sandwiches. This got me thinking about Ari, like this is like very meta to me, but like uh, just to imagine like the buy-in the show has to have from its contestants of like, all right, get in that mud pit and push this ball around all day. And uh, whoever can do it, well, you're going to give a sandwich to. Well, if you ask Artis, he was not very happy with the decision of giving up the sandwiches. So I think he would have been all in. The the, the buy-in is for people like Artis. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's well, rough. Because you, you had like then like uh you had like scooping was like pushing and like he's like sitting on Penner and Penner's heads between his mm-hmm. legs, and they're like, well, we'll stay here all day, Jeff. Uh <laughs> that it was like at some point, like I don't know, like I feel like everybody should just like go like walked off. Like, all right, this isn't worth it. <laughs> 
And I feel like the survivor should have pulled the plug on this challenge to begin with because, like, this is not meant to be played in the mud. Like, that ball is so tough to push in the mud. It needs to be played in, like, an open field. I think once the <laughs> rain is coming and it's muddy, like, the ball's not going anywhere. It's a good I, point. Like, they pull, like, bring out the backup challenge for this one. Come on. In, in my mind, yeah, I was thought it must have been meant to be put played in the mud, but you're right. Like, there was no way to win this challenge. Yeah, that ball's in concrete. It, you know, you could have, like, an NFL team try to push that thing, it's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah. let alone like a, the super hungry survivor players. Yeah, Brian, you're right. At this point, like scrap the giant ball, like it just throw like a like a rugby ball in there. Mm -hmm. And then uh like all right, that uh first team to like uh, score two tries. Right. Did they say that right? Is that right? I think so. Um, yeah. This supposed to be first to three. They would have been out there for 39 days. It's <laughs> 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 crazy. That that challenge reminded me of this old Harry Carey SNL bit where where Will Ferrell comes on dressed as Harry Carey from yeah and uh, the '96 World Series and he's like these two tribes are so evenly matched like that's what ju it just reminded me of like that ball did not move it, it stayed move. right it in the did middle not move yeah at all and so uh, yeah they're in like this like tied up in this scrum and uh, Scoopin uh, says at one point like this is like heaven. And Penner responds to him like, this is like something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love the second anything out of out of the ordinary pops up in their like challenge or whatever, probes his ears just shoot up and he he loves it. So the second they Penner and Scoop and start talking about trying to talk turkey and, and cut a deal here, probes is all it's over. He's like, all right, what what are we talking about here? How can I get involved? What what's, Was it the, what's the sandwiches were they playing for? I think so, probably okay. something like that. But yeah, probably the second this talk uh, comes up, uh, Probes is all over it. He's like, "How can okay. I get involved? How can we push this forward?" All How right. Often we get diplomacy like that between yeah. two tribes. All right. So, who who uh, first throws out sandwiches for the rest of the rice? I think Scoopin is the first one to to offer it up that he they will uh, take the L on this challenge for the rice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Penner says they can catch fish. Uh, Jeff Kent surprisingly seems like uh, that he's in it. I feel like that uh, Jeff Kent is almost like uh, to Penner. Oh, I mean, he doesn't have as much disdain as artist has to scoop in, but I feel like that's sort of like the first time player who uh, is like the uh, like person who really wants to be in command, but hates the returning player. And he I think like for, he was on board. He was. And I think, you know, I, what's interesting is both tribes thought they got the raw end of the deal, which makes me think that it was a fair deal. Uh, mm -hmm. But also for Penner and, and Jeff, they know how much rice they have. Like for Tandang, they don't know how much rice they're even getting. Yeah. So for Jeff and Penner, they know they don't really have that much rice to begin with. So yeah. you might as well take the guaranteed fish here, uh, sandwich here. I don't remember what I said in the evolution of strategy, but uh, I think this was a savvy move for uh, Calabaw, where they get the sandwiches. It's the sixth episode cycle. Like they're pr likely mm -hmm. going to merge in two days. Like, yep. let's take the sandwiches. Maybe we'll catch a fish tomorrow. Worst case scenario, we're back to eating their rice on uh, two days yep. from now. Yep, or they probably get a replenish of, of rice and stuff at the merge. Maybe they right? get more rice at the merge. Yeah. Also. So yeah, I think they definitely made the right. Plus, you get you know the the morale boost of going out and doing something new, and you already know ten dang. Some people don't want to do the deals so now. It kind of creates even more tension amongst them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I think they definitely got the better end of the deal. Yeah. So artists is not going to be happy about this. So uh, Calibre gets the picnic, and so artists uh, was so impressed by he says. That was a, a brilliant move by Penner, Ari, that uh, he says that uh, Penner uh, played Scoopin' like a fiddle. The only person satisfied with what happened was Scoopin'. Mm -hmm. Artis was pissed. What, what does he say at the challenge? You don't know what I what I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we get the great finger wagging. That was mm -hmm. a great gift that we got. We get mm -hmm. artists nodding no aggressively. You see his mm -hmm. earrings. Oh, it's great. Uh, artists, we don't get a lot of artists, but we get a lot of reaction shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, artists, yeah, just uh, that he didn't like scooping at all. Uh, they took that at the finale, uh, though, that at least if he's not talking, he looks like he uh, wants to kill you. I, th I do think that uh, artists might have been suffering from, I think, what they call the uh, RBF. 
mm-hmm. and he uh, did not look happy. But he did uh, say like briefly that uh, that he I think it was felt like that he was painted as the angry black man on the season, mm-hmm. uh, which you know I think that uh, the, uh, some of the other players I think probably if you ask like Abby or Pete, uh, I know RC was podcasting with artists after the season. I just think that being around Mike was his trigger. Yeah. Yeah, artists hated scooping as much as Jeff Kent wanted Penner out of the game. If they both could have played with different people in different scenarios, they would have uh, had a much better experience. But yeah, everyone was doing? annoyed by scooping. You know, like artist wasn't alone. Every no. everyone talks to talks about how annoying scooping is. Yeah. What about an alternate universe where artist is on Calabaw and Jeff Kent is on Tantang? I think everyone's a lot happier, so it's probably not as entertaining of a season. So I think they mm-hmm. they, they chose wisely of who was going to be on uh, which tribe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Penner says he's going to catch fish. Uh, he's not going to be able to uh, catch fish. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, ultimately, we're going to have like the slingshot, like lacrosse ball uh, challenge, mm-hmm. and Malcolm is on fire here in this challenge. I do think that if they end up swapping Malcolm for Denise, uh, that maybe he's the difference maker here. Uh, He's the MVP. He's eating Carter's lunch, I think uh, Jeff says. (laughs) And basically, uh, we're going to see a Tandang win here. About Okay, uh, what are we doing after the vote? Is it time to pull the Penner punch, Ari? The Penner punch. Might be time. It's all up to... Who is it up to? Is it up to Carter? Is he asking Carter for permission to vote out Penner? Is that is that what the discussion between the two of them are? I think Carter has a good sense for it, though, because he recognizes that Penner would be a good shield for them going into the merge. Like a lot of a lot of the target and the heat would be on Penner. Uh, he has the idol and coming down in numbers. I think it would help them to have an idol. So uh, I think they I think they made the right decision. Obviously, it doesn't play out well for for Jeff soon after the merge. But I think that it is the right move here to keep Penner and his idol, knowing you're going to be down in numbers and need to make a, a play here. Yeah, um, there's a, a great moment when Carter misspeaks to uh, yes. Penner and wants to know uh, if it's going to be uh, Kate. Kate, uh, Katie or Penner and uh, Penner starts off like, well, I, I'd hate to lose Katie. Uh, but I, you know, I really do as much as that's like a great, uh, moment, I, I do think that, um, Carter like then corrects himself and from Penner or Katie, and he's like, I, I mean, Denise, uh, I, I think that Penner is responding about the, uh, Katie or Denise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, uh, Penner even picked up too much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, of it, but it was just—it was a very funny slip up. It's very funny. Uh, Penner is also not particularly great uh, with selling Katie on this because, uh, like, Katie walks over and he's like, "Well, I guess it's Denise. I guess that's that. <laughs> All right, let's fish." And then she was like, "Wait, that was so shady." Yeah, does it take uh, the, you know a big detective to pick up something's not right there when uh, Penner just drops that? Yeah, that's usually a sign, RE one survivor, when somebody just tells you the plan. Like, "All right, I guess that's that." All right. All right. Uh, Bye. <laughs> that's the plan. Okay. And poor Katie uh, got reamed out also during this challenge. I think Probst like, and Katie again, completely ineffective holding Calabal back here. Brutal. Yeah. You know, I, I think that Jeff has gotten better, but especially like this is a season where, you know, uh, the women who are not really like holding their own in challenges, like uh, he just he kind of had no time for. Mm hmm. I wonder if that actually I know I think you talked about this last week if if Jeff talking up someone has an impact. Do you think Jeff so vocally talking down someone has an like obviously people know like someone like Katie's not that good in challenges, but if Jeff is really pointing it out, maybe people are noticing how bad Katie is, but if Jeff is pointing it out so much, do you think that would play a, a kind of a factor in people's thoughts? He, Jeff actually had Rob, you did an interview with Jeff around this time yeah. and it, it came up this topic. Yeah. Exactly. It came up exactly. And his argument was the players are, are already saying it and thinking it. So his, his uh, explanation is when he does that, he's doing it for the audience at home. So, you know, t- take that for what it, for mm-hmm. what it is or what it's worth, but I'll, I'll believe him uh, in that scenario. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, are Canton Carter going to pull the Penner punch? Uh, Jeff Kent does not want to get screwed by Penner. Uh, so they go to tribal council. And I, I feel, really feel like that Penner uh, plays up that he's going to play his idol tonight. 
Uh, I think that that's kind of what saves him here. Hmm. I, I didn't pick up. On, you I, thought, I didn't pick I, up on that either. Yeah I, yeah, I thought he just kind of played off that he felt it was like a super obvious move. I didn't pick up that he thought he was going to drop the idol here. That would have if that that was his move. Then uh, um, good on him for kind of playing that up. But that's not that's not the vibe I picked up personally. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like that. Um, uh he's I, I feel like he's implying it here at this mm. uh tribal council um you know uh maybe i'm sort of like you know as a just like a penner stan i'm trying mm. to give him more credit there uh where maybe he shouldn't uh deserve it but i i don't know i just felt like that uh like he's uh kind of just like uh giving like a whole big spiel at this um, tribal council that I kind of feel like that he's sort of saying like um, he is saying that uh, I, I, I have it. I mean, it, yeah, he is talking about like, Oh, I, like, I would respect the blind side. I would hate it, but I would like respect it. I think is kind of what he said. So maybe that's trying to kind of throw him off the scent a little bit with the idol. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, it is going to be Katie who gets voted out here yep. uh, and she will be the final vote in the pre-merge uh anything else from the pre-merge either of you uh want to mention i don't think so very i mean a very exciting pre-merge not a, again not a lot of surprising votes but very uh entertaining stuff along yeah the, way. the stage is set for what's going to be a uh wild post-merge game here in survivor philippines so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick break. Uh, the, these first two hours have flown by. I've had a lot of fun talking about Survivor Philippines. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will talk about the post-merge of Survivor Philippines. A lot of exciting votes to come in a uh, very interesting uh, post-game, uh, all sorts of moving parts, a lot of fun votes to break down. We will do that uh, in just a moment when we come back. Uh, don't go anywhere. And we're back to talk about the post-merge of Survivor Philippines, and it should be a good one. All right, so episode number seven, Denise is already feeling like uh, she's cursed. She's been to every tribal council, and uh, she would be at every tribal council. Should Denise have been on Island of the Idols as like uh, the curse She'd thing? She'd gone to Ghost Island. Yeah, to Ghost Island to be reborn, to remove the curse. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually like, uh, what about Denise on Island of the Idols to sort of like give therapy to people? Like you sit down with Denise. Like that probably would have been more practical than talking to Robin Sandra. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so, all right. Justin throwing out some ideas. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... All right, uh, we're going to go to a big merge feast, and everybody's uh, getting to uh, know each other. And um, a any highlights of the merge feast? The only highlight I had was actually them beginning the merge. They they broke broke out the Survivor theme song as they were merging, <laughs> which I really appreciate. They don't really do that too often to bring the theme song mid episode, and it really got me pumped yeah. up. Like this is like a big moment here. Here we go. Here's the they're bringing out the theme song. The big guns are coming out for this well, merge. I think the it's the Philippines remix. thing. Yeah, I think they do it a lot this season. I mean, we didn't talk about it too much, uh, but it's like they you get like the like Borneo like. Like a uh, like a lot throughout the season, and I like it. I'm here for it. Yeah. So good job on the uh, Survivor score of season 25. All right. So a big thing that happens. Lisa Welchill. She's uh the mom. Mm -hmm. She sees people have wet clothes. Uh, <laughs> she's doing this uh, before Reem made it cool. Everybody has some wet clothes. She's gonna hang them up. And she is going to end up finding Malcolm's hidden immunity idol. She she did not mean to do it. She was just being very nice. She didn't mean to. And then uh, so we we move forward, and Malcolm's strategy is just is to just stare at her for uh, for a very long time until she confesses. Yeah, yeah. He's thank a, God uh, the church lady headlight. found it. Yeah, thank God the church lady found it. Thank God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so uh, she didn't mean to, uh, you know, she ends up uh, confronting uh, uh, Malcolm and Malcolm makes a final three deal with him and Denise uh, and, and Lisa Welchel. 
Yeah, he kind of calls a shot saying, uh, I don't want to go up. Like, these are not the two people I want to go up against. And I don't think I can beat them. And uh, sure enough, obviously, Denise pulls it out. So Malcolm uh, kind of saw the future coming uh, coming right towards him. Mm-hmm. Penner is going to start to talk to Scoopin a little bit. Uh, they have an interesting relationship, uh, the Penner and Scoopin relationship. Sort of like a marriage of convenience in that uh, they both feel like, well, like my best shot to win is to sit at the end with another returning player. I think it's a nice reminder that uh, they don't know each other. They're mm-hmm. they're strangers just as well. Just because they're uh, they can share an experience uh, doesn't mean they know each other. Doesn't mean they're going to play the game together. But you're you're right. The the convenience is there, and I think they're both looking at it that way because they're they're both hearing the same thing about the returner. So uh, I'm sure they're they're bonding over that. Yeah. But the bigger bonds are probably between uh, all the people that want the returning players to go. Uh, And so, uh, oh, I hate returning players. Uh, You all hate returning players. Uh, Let's all vote together. Yep. The the plan that uh, Jeff wanted to do since day one. Let's get out the returners. Uh, Russell's already gone. There's two more left. So now I got two people to get out before I focus on anything else. And that is getting out Scoop and Penner. Mm -hmm. And so... Penner punch. Um, Get a punch. <laughs> we get our immunity challenge here after the merge. Uh, it's an endurance challenge where uh, that Jeff says they've like ratcheted up the old uh, like uh, hold a hand over your head. Now hold two hands over your head. No, the, the, this is the, uh, the they're holding the. The the, I think they're yeah holding a rope of weight of uh, their yeah they're holding the bags uh, are up but they're holding it by rope yeah exactly yeah exactly okay. and a couple two, of these yeah two two winners though man and women the last man and woman uh, win each get uh, each get I mean I love when they do that especially right at the start of the merge give uh give extra people more of a chance as you're still trying to figure out the dynamics of, of getting immer- uh, immunity kind of mixes things up yeah is this a little challengey uh Brian that they'll have like a men's immunity and a women's immunity yeah very very challenging guys day girls day uh mm-hmm. yeah, each earning a chance of safety so that they, I'm very in my comfort zone uh, with this type of this type of challenge here and yeah. I want to point out Denise she beat out Pete scooping Penner and Malcolm in this challenge so you know men versus women she still mm. beat all those guys. So if it was a real immunity challenge, she's still a contender. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, Jeff Kent's winning this one. Uh, mm-hmm. here, here's a guy who, who, for a living, works out his forearms. And I, I thought it was a wrap. But yeah. uh, another, there, very, another very funny Penner uh, props moment, too. When uh, Penner drops out, uh, props goes, Penner, out of the challenge. Can be voted out. Penner goes, oh, thank, well, thank you. Thank you. And then props goes, glad you're on the show, buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So... After the tribal, uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of uh, moving parts. Uh, we want to see some plans talking about uh, the, the returning players. Uh, who Who's it going to be? Uh, Penner or Scoopin? Yes, that is that is the question. And also, is Tendang going to stay strong? Is, is Calabau going to recruit people over? Uh, but one of the big things that they didn't touch on the entire time was we didn't get the sense of Malcolm and Denise like, Obviously, their pairing was going to work together, and we never got to see them come together post merge and, and talk out a game plan of who they were going to kind of stick to. And I feel like that was like a big missing piece for this vote. Of you know, they had the whole game plan of uh, bringing over a couple people with vote with Cowbell, but if Denise was going to flip and vote with uh, Matt Singh uh, with with Tandang, the plan was moot anyway, and they didn't really show that. Mm-hmm. To to the point where you find out that Denise voted for uh, for Penner later on, you're like, oh, okay. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, in the next episode uh, that Penner's going to be asking about, like, who voted for me? Uh, and, uh, you know, Denise admits to it. And when uh, Jeff Kent talks about it in the reunion show, uh, he talks about how, uh, you know, he, he wanted to work with Penner, but he couldn't get Denise on board. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was obviously the big, big problem with the, with this whole uh a kind of a line structure here was they Calabau didn't have Denise. Denise wasn't really a number for them because they, if they're going to have Denise, they would have had to recruit Malcolm over and Malcolm wasn't jumping over there. Wait, mm-hmm. so who didn't, who couldn't get Denise on board? Um, when they were going to vote against, uh, is that at the, at the next vote is going to be Jeff Kent. So, uh, that okay. he couldn't get Denise, uh, mm-hmm. to go with them. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, um, because like the their their structure there, Calabau was there were four, but they're really only three because Denise, you know, her her and her and Malcolm were kind of their own little silo. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, also in this episode, Penner is going to uh, start to talk to Lisa about uh, that. He sells, uh, talks about how he recognizes her and he is sort of like uh, really gets uh, like a really like understands Lisa. And she's like, how, how do you know all this? He's like, uh, what you're you think that you're the only actor here. And mm -hmm. the relationship between Lisa and Penner is one of my favorite things in the season. Uh, every scene with the two of them, uh, I, I love it so much. Yeah, the the whole when Penner really like cuts to the core of of Lisa's childhood of having to impress people and making sure everyone likes her and making sure no one says a bad thing about her and you can just see Lisa's eyes just like opening up and like yes oh my god yes that that's exactly what it is and like they, they, it's it's such an interesting dynamic I totally agree Rob the fact that you know Penner obviously is in that industry so he he gets it he knows what it's it's like and. That for Lisa, probably had no one really understand her so deeply, and it. I, like, I think you know, Lisa says multiple times this experience was life changing for her, and I think this was kind of the beginning of it for her of really accepting her and you know where, where uh, coming up as a child star and now kind of being like a normal person in the world, and this really helped bring her to that moment. It was, it was okay. like another therapy session on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, at the first tribal council after the merge, uh, Penner is uh, gets enough of a read to play his idol here. Uh, and this was fortunate. Uh, Mike Scoopin even voted for uh, Penner at this tribal council, uh, which is wild. You would think he would not necessarily be in on the plan to vote out the returning player. Uh, but he's in on this to vote out Penner. Penner uses his idol. Uh, there are four votes on RC. Interesting that they didn't split the votes. Uh, maybe Lisa didn't want to be on board to split the votes between Penner and Scoopin. Uh, ultimately, uh, Penner plays his idol, and RC goes out of the game. R.I.P. RC. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, RC, uh, that she definitely uh, feuded with a, a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised that, uh, you know, we didn't get a ton from RC, but the show loved her. They did. They loved her dynamic with with Scoopin. They loved her dynamic, obviously, with, with uh, Abby. Uh, it, it was. It's too bad that, like, yeah, she couldn't. You know, I think she she read it well that she had to flip from from Tan Dang. But I think everyone was just so uh, able to kind of come together and go against her and, and Penner in that moment that she really, unfortunately, there was she was drawing dead there. I, I don't think she she didn't have much of an out at that point. She she kind of there were too many burned bridges within her old. Tandang tribe that there was really nowhere for her to go. No one was willing to pick her up. So she was just, you know, an easy one just to, to kind of clip right to start the merge. I want to point out that Abby Maria threw that challenge. She dropped as soon as RC did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, uh, she had her eyes set. Like, uh, I feel like if, it, if Penner didn't play his idol, RC was done for. She didn't have much room to maneuver. She just, I, I feel like when you're stuck on those small tribes and then you're getting the stigma from four, three, five other people, you're, you're the other people you're, you're merged with. That's it. You're, you're a bit tainted. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't much for RC to yeah. do. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, good she was job. A very uh, competitive physical. It, it'd be nice mm -hmm. to, to see, to see, uh, RC again. Miss Survivor 2013, I believe. <laughs> what a what moment a for her, I'm sure. What a yes. champion. Yes. Okay. Uh, she beat out Kim Spradlin. <laughs> That's a big win. Good for her. It's a, it's a big win. Okay. All right. But let's talk about where things really start <laughs> to get wild here on uh, this uh, next vote. Of course, Penner is uh, a little confused after the vote. He's asking, uh, so what all happened here? Uh, who voted for me? And uh, ultimately, uh, we hear from uh, Denise that she was one of the votes uh, for Penner. Uh, that Penner appreciates her honesty, uh, but she's going down her own path. Yeah, Penner needs to uh, get in the back seat and let someone else drive, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, Missy also would say. That that's his move. That's his move right here. Let someone else take the take the wheel. Yes, he says uh, that all all I can do is take my foot off the gas, get in the back seat, pull a blanket over my head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all. You, you, it's just hope that somebody else makes a mistake. Yep, it's gonna hide. Okay, uh, the merch tribe is dang rain. Uh, so so rainy. Great name. What a great name. It's a great name. Yeah, better okay. than just you know combining the two tribe names. That's a little better. Yeah, g give me the Dang Rain. Is that Did is you... that one? Of the... yeah. Is it one word, Dang Rain? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one word. Yeah. 
So, all right, we have a big reward at the final 10 because um, ultimately uh, the team of Malcolm, Denise, Jeff, Penner, and Lisa win the reward. And they're sort of like, this is nice. Look, oh, we don't have like all these like uh, uh, negative uh, Nicks and Nancys around. Mm -hmm. uh, this is that there's no... There's no Abby, no Pete, no artists. Uh, this is nice. This could be a this could be a thing. Yeah, and I think again, this is something what's missing from newer uh, seasons of Survivor when they bring in all the other twists, like Edge of Extinction. There's so many other things to focus on that some of these post merge reward challenges get dropped, and I think it really does. Uh, hamper a lot of the entertainment and gameplay because it, it allows new people to be paired up with different people. They go off in different things. They have bonding moments. They're eating. They're mm -hmm. full. They're experiencing new things and it and allows new relationships to develop. And we saw that a lot throughout this season of different pairings coming together and forging Final Fours, Final Threes at these rewards. And I really hope that is something that starts to come back in newer seasons of uh, Survivor because that, that really does add a lot to post-merge games. It, it so, really stood out how much how much deals are made during reward challenges and even even the reward challenge losers back on the mm -hmm. beach. Uh, it really stood out this season. Yeah, uh, that's where deals are made. I'm trying to think. So are, are you saying that we don't get that a lot now in the uh, modern game? I don't think so, because, you know, when there's like Redemption Island and stuff, they're focusing on those challenges on and then they an edge and they're focusing on those, even though with X, like they, they I feel like a lot of these post merge rewards, like they get cut. We don't see them as much. And, they, and they, you know, they're focused more on the hyper gameplay and stuff. And I think the gameplay can come from results of these reward challenges, whether it's, you know, who you leave out of a, of a team, where you go, you know, finding for, forming new random pairings and bonds that you might not necessarily have if you're stuck at camp all day going off allows you to talk freely without other people kind of listening in obviously Although yeah maybe the rewards uh not being as delicious or uh as as attractive as they are now with like here's chinese food on the corner of the <laughs> right of the, of the beach have fun yeah these are a little I, bit more luxurious i i wonder if it still is happening and we don't see it as much because then we get the L I or who are you sending to ghost island who are you sending right. to the island of the idols and we end up spending more time on exactly. like the person that got sent somewhere as opposed to seeing uh the people who are on the reward talk some strategy but uh so this group uh has a real good uh talk and they're feeling like okay maybe we could potentially uh work together uh lisa welchel is going to start to be very conflicted of, you know, am I trying to get to the end or do I want to be at the end with good people? What do yeah. I do? And yes, that's that is the struggle. That is the struggle, struggle through the whole season. Right. Yeah. What could I do? Do I cut the people that, you know, I think I could beat? Do I want to go with the the quote unquote good guys? Well, what does my heart first head say? This is this is the struggle Lisa faces all all through the end game. Yeah. So there's a, a really great moment that happens in this episode, Ari, where uh, Lisa is talking with Scoopin. And so uh, that Penner walks up and uh, that they're asking like, uh, like oh, what, what are you talking about? And uh, talking about you. yeah, we're talking about you. <laughs> uh, and uh, Penner tells us uh, Scoopin uh, that uh, he's like, well, you should win immunity. But wait, I'm going to win immunity. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's a, a great moment because then he's going to call this shot here. So great job by Penner. And then Incredible. this episode, this episode, uh, like Penner is the main ep the main character of the episode. I feel like he accomplishes so many things. Right, makes the merge. Uh, he wins something he's never done before. He wins. Uh, he wins immunity. Right. So uh, yes. this feels like. Uh, and then the episode title is called "Dead Man Walking." It's a very. Mm -hmm. This feels like a very celebratory Penner episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and unbelievable reaction by Jeff Kent when Penner does pull it off. Uh, he Penner notes this is his first time ever winning immunity, and Jeff's like, "Oh, well, unbelievable! What a joke! This is his first win. What a what a bum." And mm -hmm. and, ta and talking about uh, you know the editing throughout that whole time, it's uh, like Penner. Uh, we're gonna skip ahead to the challenge. It's Penner uh, getting towards the end, being intercut with everyone else saying, "Come on, Jeff," or, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. "Come on, Pete." There, everyone's rooting uh, for everyone except Penner. So it's just very well done on to really let you know, like uh, this is this is the dead man walking. And, yeah, uh, when he pulls it off, it just makes it. It just opens up the game. Well, it's an impressive win because he does put a puzzle together in the end. But the first part is like getting through like uh, ropes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So uh, good job for Penner to uh, win this thing. 
And uh, yeah, he uh, has a great reaction to winning and uh, Penner is immune. Can't go for Johnny. Johnny's time. Mm -hmm. He has a bit of a walk-off dance once he wins. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is going to really set into motion a mad scramble that's going to really shake up the game because now uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, not such a great thing for Mike Scoopin. Uh, Jeff Kent even lets Mike Scoopin know. Uh, This isn't great for you, Mike. No, yeah, the you, the target might be on you, Mike. Uh, you got you got some problems, yeah. And this also, obviously, I think sets up probably the biggest one of the biggest moments of the season. Late Lisa getting the plan in motion to try to to blindside Malcolm, uh, yeah, trying to keep Tandang strong here. Yeah, she wants to blindside Malcolm because he has an idol, and she tells Pete about this uh, that Malcolm cannot be trusted. But Ari, what does Pete do? He talks to Malcolm and says, "Hey, Lisa thinks you have an idol, but that can't be true, right?" I don't believe I look dead into his soul. I know. I know the, he's a puppet master who knows every time someone is lying to him, but yeah. uh, you know, g- good old Pinocchio is the one that got played. I'm going to call Pete bro 5,000 Pinocchio from now on. Cause he's the, he's the puppet master that can't puppet anything. Yeah. I didn't even think that Malcolm had like such a great denial here. Like I think Malcolm is like, doesn't really sell it great. That he doesn't have the mm-hmm. idol. And Pete's like, I believe him. Yeah. With every fiber of my being, Ma- Malcolm's great and charismatic, but when it comes to Pete, all he does is stand there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think if Pete pressed them even like a little bit, Malcolm probably yeah. would have but have just caved because I was he caves later and just shows it to everyone. So I think if Pete pushed him, he would have just admitted to it and said he had the idol. Pete says Malcolm freaked out, so I believe him. Yeah, classic telling the truth is when you freak <laughs> out for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and so Pete's not buying it. Now Malcolm knows that they're coming for him, and so Malcolm is ready to ready to scramble too. And so they're trying to come up with, okay, what is uh what is the uh, next uh, move that they're gonna make? Because now we can't vote for Penner. Uh, some people don't want to vote for Scoopin, and so there's some talk about uh you know could it be Jeff Kent? Could it yeah, be Jeff? It, could could the, it be Pete? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the Tang Dang strategy was to get rid of Calabaw. Like Jeff, Jeff was next on the list because Penner won immunity. And then and then we're split with uh who who are the who are the Pete votes? Like uh, so Jeff Kent is trying to get the votes to be on uh Pete. Yeah, so it's the old Calabaw and who who are the ones in the middle, right? It's all based on Malcolm and Denise. I guess that's what it what it boils down to. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately at, at this tribal council, which is going to be a wild tribal council, Jeff mm-hmm. calls it uh, one one of the best. Uh, so the five Jeff votes are going to be all of Tandang. Uh, the four Pete votes are going to be uh, everybody else from Tandang minus Penner. Yeah, Penner with for Abby. a very weird rogue vote for, for Abby, um, mm-hmm. which obviously would, would have changed the course of the game there if you forced a tie. Yes. Um, I wonder if uh, did you do 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 they all go to rocks or does someone in that moment flip? No, to I save think themselves? somebody will flip in that somebody at that flip. point. Yeah, then nobody uh, wants to go to rocks for Jeff Kent. No, I wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think so. Um. A- anyway, so at this tribal council, uh, we're gonna see uh just a, a lot of talk about Malcolm uh and uh you know what who has idols. Yeah, Malcolm comes out, uh, clears the air, says he has an idol. And then Jeff probes pretty casually, I think. He's like, yeah, anyone else want to say they have an idol? And Abby goes, yeah, <laughs> I got one. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's so hard for Abby to, to lie that she's just like, all right, yeah, this is uh, this is what I'm doing. This is what I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you can't lie. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk about like uh, what the plans uh, should be and who who has the five, who has the six. And you wonder how this tribal might have played out differently in a modern season where they all get up, start whispering to each other, start talking here. They kind of had to stick to whatever plan they had and kind of just go with what they think everyone's going to do. But if you can get up and whisper and move around, I wonder, like, I feel like this could play out a little different. Maybe Penner gets on board with a plan and doesn't toss their vote out there to Abby. And it, it, things could play out a little different. What yeah. I don't understand about Penner is he's the one that calls out everyone like, hey, there's a group of six of us right over here. Let's just do the thing. And uh, everyone agrees, but you, you can't believe what anyone's saying. But why did he vote for someone 
completely out of the loop from where everyone like I, i'm truly wondering what happened he says in the next episode i, I was, was po'd <laughs> <laughs> another plan i wasn't involved in uh, honestly it may have been it may have been him throwing away a vote because he was safe and he had no fear of repercussions and he wanted to throw his vote on abby I mean, I, who knows i believe penner if penner says that he did it because he was po'd like i think he did it because he was po'd all right yeah, like, fair. Yeah. Like it doesn't make him look good why would he lie and say that if it's not the truth like i think that's definitely has to be what his real uh reasoning was mm-hmm so yeah, ultimately it's going to be uh, the one vote for Abby, and then uh, we're going to see five votes for Jeff Kent and four votes for Pete. And so uh, Jeff Kent gets voted out. Jeff Probst says it was one of the biggest blown opportunities in the game. Uh, and I, was, did Jeff just really want Pete to get voted out? Uh, the the Probstism. I usually like him. This one made no sense. I didn't know what he was talking about or who mm -hmm. he was talking to. Yeah, I don't know. Was he talking about trying to flush Malcolm's idol? Was that the blown opportunity that they blew? I, like, otherwise, I don't know Unclear. what else was blown. Nothing really was blown. Yeah. I, I got the sense from the previously on that he was talking about uh, how it could, they could have gotten Pete voted out, but, uh, you know. I'm sure he, he has these probesisms like written down and like, he memorizes them before every mm -hmm. episode and he's like rehearsing in front of a mirror and he's like slapping him himself in the face every time he fails so i'm sure he was gonna say that no matter what happened right mm -hmm. the blown opportunity that they can never happen again except he yeah. put it out two episodes later <laughs> <laughs> yes real blown opportunity okay uh episode nine uh we find out okay uh what happened uh penner was po'd uh mm. carter has to explain to penner uh what's going on and penner is very quick to say well i don't think it would have changed anything we don't change anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess not. Yeah. If no, if no yeah. one's the rocks. Like, let's not think too much about this ever again. <laughs> okay. We've um, endured. Now let's go. Yes. Okay. Um, Lisa and Malcolm have such an interesting relationship over the course of the season. Yeah, Lisa's very grateful uh, at the level of grace that, that Malcolm, sh Malcolm shows her after the vote, saying, it's just a game. There's no hard feelings. You were playing hard. Uh, it's all good. It's all good in his in his uh, in his mind. Mm. Yeah. Um, so at least he's going to like really go back and forth so many times over the course of the season about her feelings about Malcolm. Uh, but she talks like also really, really struggles with like the game being, you know, too big for her. And, you know, uh, this isn't the real her. Ari, one of the things I struggle with when I watch the season, and, and I really I love watching Lisa Welchel because but I but I do think about these things of how sincere do you feel like Lisa is in her confessionals uh with the audience? Like how much is Lisa Welchel playing a role in her confessionals? And I don't normally think about this for contestants on Survivor. But I do feel like that she's somebody who's very much in the pu she's in the public eye, and 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 she thinks about like how am I being portrayed? And I do think she has a little bit like what Penner was talking about of what what sort of story are you wanting to tell? Do you feel like that she's completely honest with the audience the whole way through? I, I think she's being honest because we see the change later on, right? We'll get to it, but. I feel like whenever uh, she has no problems expressing herself if she's struggling with something or towards towards the end of the season she, it's it's a uh, it's time to win. She's not she's not mm -hmm. messing around. There are a few things that get in her way from what she wants to do, but uh, I feel she's always genuine with the audience at least in terms of what she's feeling and thinking because uh, later on we do see a change and she's a bit more uh you know uh, is not cutting time as Brad Culpepper would say. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Penner is uh, wanting to uh, get Lisa and Scoopin to come over. Uh, he says that Lisa and Scoopin play a Christian game uh, where artists and Abby and Pete play a bully game. Uh, so um, Penner uh, starts to work on Lisa uh, and uh, try to get her to, to come out and join up with him. Yeah, this is where we really get uh, Penner's kind of deep dive into Lisa's history of who she is, trying to really play to the to the person of Lisa, not a you know working str uh, strategy, of course, but the strategy of 
playing to her, playing to her heart, uh, mm-hmm. and really getting to the core of who of who Lisa is to try to get her to flip over to his side. Yeah, he says I to am her, "Playing my ass off." Yeah, and he is. Mm-hmm. And he, he is. is. Like, you had to be a pleaser. You <laughs> had to a lifetime of performing to do the right thing. You had to be liked. And the toll, the cost of that, that extraordinary youth you had, it, it did cost you something. You lost something, and now you know. It's like, so it's dramatic. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. That that was probably, I think that was, like, you you were, like, embodying Penner right there. That was, like, I think your best so, one. It was so, <laughs> it, it, he's, he's so serious. It's so yeah. great. I, I, lo- I, I love it. And she's like, yes, yes. Uh, what if she's not Little Miss Perfect anymore? Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I mean, it was, it was one of the best, like, uh, human pitches. Like, I think the show, like, they really ever have seen you. You always typically see, like, oh, this will be better for you. You're going to flip from the bottom of one alliance to our alliance. But this was such a human level pitch. It was it was one of the best ones. I and mean, he really, what Penner was playing his ass off. This was, you know, him balls to the wall. Everything he had, he was putting into this game. And this was probably his finest moment right here. You're really getting to the core of Lisa. And yeah. Speaking her language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all right, that's one of the things I think is so interesting about Survivor of it's like, okay, well, what is the like combination to open this lock of, okay, is it like the numerical argument? Is it like this emotional argument? Like, is it revenge against somebody else? Like, what what's the code you could punch in to get this person on board? Now, what's uh like i guess wild about this is that mm-hmm. it doesn't end up working <laughs> right. right like she's still gonna end up <laughs> sticking with tandang after all this but uh this is penner uh playing his ass off for for all for all the love we give uh we're giving penner and the speech how beautiful it was how great it was great message it doesn't even impact her decision at all right so i think that's a mm-hmm. really good uh like just an example well, and like just demonstrate what's really going on here it, i mean it gets her thinking uh yeah. she ultimately doesn't end up uh going in that direction but uh she's you know she's she's close um all right so let's see uh we have our uh reward challenge and uh we're gonna see uh this crew of uh who's gonna go bring stuff to the kids it's gonna be what penner malcolm denise and Carter. And, and Carter. Carter. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So uh they go off they go off on reward, but they leave all of Tandang back at camp. Yeah, this is so uh Tandang hoping to kind of come back together, you know, let's have a, a day of harmony, day of peace. And uh Abby immediately calls out Lisa for, for being naive, for being uh <laughs> so, you know, she 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 doesn't really understand what's going on in the game. You know, she she in lack of a better word, she's an idiot, she's a moron, is basically <laughs> what Abby was trying to say, but didn't get to those words at this moment in time. But uh that's what that's what she's worried about with, with Lisa. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, ultimately, uh, Scoopin is going to win immunity uh, that we see that the Tandang group is thinking of getting rid of Penner here at at this point. Uh, It really is going to come down to uh, like uh, what what is going to happen with Tandang? Could we see uh, Scoopin and or Lisa flip? Yeah, and it's pretty crazy to see such a you know, Lisa and Scoopin be such a strong pair and it's such a decisive vote that really shapes the rest of the season. They vote separately here. Scoopin is the one that flips. Lisa stays strong uh, to Tang Dang. And I think that's so uncommon to see such a, a, you know, an alliance pairing vote separately in any vote, let alone such a critical vote uh, like, like like this. I mean, Malcolm and Denise voted in, in tandem throughout the entire season down to the last vote. Uh, so to see them vote separately here, especially after the, the plea that Penner made to, to Lisa, like what was Lisa, like, so like did Scooping not fill Lisa in that he was flipping and Lisa decided, all right, I'm just going to stick strong here. We know I know it's, it's for yeah. not. Well, just to set up that vote, uh, that this is where we end up with Penner making again another pitch to Lisa, mm-hmm. and this is where we get the uh, famous. Uh, I- I'm going to ask you a question. I- I'm like a storyteller. That- that's what I do, you know. Uh, Survivor is-, is a big story. Uh, what's the story that's going to be told this season? Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? Who are the underdogs? Who's the audience going to root for? What does the audience want to have happen? Uh, and um, they're saying, he's saying like, uh, like, look, don't you want people to like you? Don't you want to be a pleaser? 
to make the audience happy. Um, uh, and uh, Penner tells her that uh, you might be the fulcrum character. Yeah, I mean, he's bringing out the big guns for this one. Everything he's everything he's got, he's putting into this speech to to Lisa to get her to mm-hmm. to make the move that you know he thinks the that would be good for him, and he thinks that the the audience would want to see flip on the bad guys, flip right. on Tan Dang, flip on them. But all right, for Scoopin though, you know the votes are going to be going against artists, his nemesis. So there's incentive there for him to vote against artists who they have not gotten along, and then also. That I do think that Scoopin does see the value of keeping Penner in because that seems like that that would be an ideal final three uh, person to join him, or, or at least someone to get in front of him. Right? If there if there's going to be a no returner is going to win, might, might as well go with another returner. Right? You got to choose one of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I basically like if yeah. Uh, although like. It seems like maybe that's a Lisa win if uh, she sits at the end with uh, Penner and Scoopin. But well, Michael uh, Scoopin lives on another planet. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but by the yeah. way, I want to bring this up because it cracked me up. As soon as he wins immunity, they come back to camp, and he goes, "If I can't win the physical, might as well win the uh uh." And then Denise goes, "The parlor game," just to completely <laughs> downplay what he just did. <laughs> the parlor game. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So. There's some talk at the uh, tribal council about how after last night's uh, tense tribal council was their tension. And Lisa talks about how like she actually was treated with more grace from the people she voted against than the people she voted with. (laughs) And Abby immediately looks at Lisa dead in the eye and says, did I show you grace as well? (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah um, you can feel the fire coming out of her eyes she didn't like it so uh we uh see some uh talk about like uh did tan dang can have concern that they didn't have the numbers tan dang lisa tan dang's feeling good but abby has one person she's not sure of she is she you know in a very very critical vote it's always smart to call out the swing vote to say i'm not sure if you're gonna stick true to your word abby calls at least i don't know where lisa stands so i'm I'm gonna put her on blast here in front of everyone Mm -hmm. yeah um ultimately we're gonna see that five votes for artists uh scoop and flipped uh not lisa very interesting again that this pair uh did not vote together and so uh another member of tan dang goes home here at the uh final nine uh but that really now does free up lisa now to uh not stick with the numbers over at tandang so all in all uh like uh i don't want to give mike scooping too much credit on this podcast but you know uh we don't often say that you know people that flip uh put themselves in a better position but uh he really does kind of set up getting to the final three with this move he does, and I think it's because he like he flips by himself, but he really flips for him and Lisa, which I think has always kind of been viewed as the best way. If you're going to flip, you have to flip with at least one other person, because otherwise that way the vitriol is not focused on you, and you kind of at least have someone else in your grouping on the new new alliance. So he basically flipped for Lisa, and now at least he still has a kind of a core member that he could work with. He's not so reliant on this new alliance that he's that he's now forming. Yeah, I mean, I could see it either way, because from Lisa's perspective, where, okay, so so let's let's just okay we have an easy vote we have the numbers here at tandang uh at five but then when it gets down to seven we can always like flip the script on pete and abby and artists uh like whatever two people are going to be left whether it's you know carter and uh, denise uh whoever's whoever's left from that side that they could always like uh turn it around and then vote out the other three yeah, and I think actually, yeah, flipping here is probably uh, uh, probably cinches that Scoopin and Lisa have no chance to win because I think if they go to the end with Carter or Malcolm or Denise, like they lose to any of those people, so mm-hmm. they have to go to the end with a fellow Tandang member, probably ideally Abby. Yeah, but even whether it's Artis or or Pete or whoever, so flipping here, it, it really I think is is really the worst move they could possibly have done to for their chances to win. They had to stick with Tandang as far as they can and maybe get closer and make a, a move here, but. You know, securing your place in the finals with Malcolm, Denise, or or Carter is you know not going to get you any favors. Okay, uh, let's talk about one of my favorite episode titles in the history of the show: uh, "Winers or Wieners." <laughs> that's episode ten. I think that's uh, Denise says that. 
Yes, that's that is a, a Denise quote. Denise Denise original quote. winner quote. Or the okay. hashtags were out. Yes. All right. So um, we're figuring out, uh, you know, uh, w- what's going to happen uh, next with the vote. Uh, uh, Lisa Scoopin and Penner are talking about, uh, you know, now there's a seven. That, that's all the, the talk now. It's all about the seven versus uh, Abby, Maria and Pete. Yes, got to get one of them out. This is the, the we're the, now the good guys. They're the bad guys. We got to get uh one of two one of one of those guys have got to go uh, got to go next so we, the good guys can move forward so, in this game. I apologize. It's it's the 6. Uh mm-hmm. it's the 6 versus uh Pete and Abby Maria. And so uh we have our reward and uh it's the spa reward where Carter and uh Carter Abby uh Malcolm and Penner go on uh, the uh, the reward, and this is a very funny reward challenge too, where they they had like run around and flip over kind of circles to, to to you know keep one of them open, the other one has to stay closed. And Abby yeah. had absolutely no idea what the challenge was about. <laughs> Probes even said like, "Abby, do you have any idea what you're doing?" She's like, "No, I have I have no clue what I'm doing here." So yeah. very complicated uh, challenge. Sorry. I, I misspoke. Uh, it's uh, Abby, Carter, Malcolm, and Pete go on the go on the reward. Uh, and they co- they have a nice reward and they come back, but then Abby does not stop talking about how good the reward was. I, I forgot exactly what she was saying, but she was just talking about how good. She's the- like, oh, I'm like a pregnant lady. <laughs> like, I'm so full. And then, she, and then they brought this out. And then, they, and then Penner's like, yeah, rewards are cool. They're cool. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, uh, she they ask Carter a question. He starts to talk, <laughs> and in typical Carter fashion, she cuts him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of Josh Wiggler's favorites. Uh, they're like, Carter, what was your favorite part of the reward? He's like, uh, the sauces. Uh, oh, and by the way, it was really like the cookies they had so good. Mm-hmm. Poor Angie. <laughs> yeah, um. Yeah, but Abby Maria was talking about stuff that like uh, I don't know. It didn't. She was going on and on. It's like she's oh, like, and then she's like, and then there was like a calamari <laughs> with a mint sauce. I'm like, are you sure that's a, that sounds like a gross food eating competition? So, um, all right, let's uh, get to you know trying to figure out a uh, big point in the game, big turning point in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Malcolm wants to think about the final four. Uh, they're thinking ahead. They've got a six. Uh, now they need a final four. All right. Uh, we're going to talk to, uh, some different people. Um, so, um, Malcolm and Lisa are, uh, you know, uh, they're open to, uh, the alliance with Malcolm and Denise. Yes, Lisa's not as sure. She does. She doesn't really want to go to the end with with Malcolm and Denise. She feels they're probably the toughest people to beat. So she would rather go w- with Penner uh, and tries to make the pitch to Penner to go to Final Four. But Penner's, you know, he's uh, a little more indecisive. He doesn't want to lock in anything. He doesn't yeah. want to commit. Want to keep uh, his options open. And obviously, that turns out to be kind of the, his big downfall of uh, not committing here to Lisa. So Lisa has to go to the, you know, grass is greener with, with Malcolm and Denise to lock in something. Yeah. Lisa's going to check in with Penner and uh, says that, um, you know, she wants to go to the end with him. Uh, and he says, well, I mean, first off, thank you. I appreciate that. But I am personally more comfortable taking care of business. One thing at a time. I think uh, I really am comfortable taking care of Abby and Pete. Uh, but I'm not interested in committing to anything to anybody, not yet. So too early. It's too early. Got to two uh, easy boots first. Yeah. Is that normal for someone like Penner? Is he? Doesn't he strike us as the guy that w- that would take advantage of that immediately, or or is that someone who had a bad experience at Cook Islands and said, "All right, I got to switch it up next time." Like I, uh, it feels very out of character for Penner not yeah. to agree. The default is, you know, say yes to everything. Uh, that's that's what you want to do. Um, at the previous tribal council, uh, where artists gets voted out, I mean, Lisa just voted with uh, Tan Dang against Penner, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that he just doesn't trust it. Like maybe uh, that he th- is wondering, maybe could this be a ploy? Where then she's gonna go back to his group and say, "All right, hey, just so you know, Penner made a deal with me. So 
I think that that's where maybe like the trepidation came from on his part. Yeah, I think Penner was trying to play a, a fairly honest upfront game here, and he didn't want to get in a scenario where he was then caught up committing to something that he was going to back out from and having to lie to Lisa because he thought he maybe was starting to build a level of trust with her, even though obviously she voted for him. But but so if he doesn't want to then commit to something and then has to turn his back on her, and all of a sudden he's caught up in a lie, and he, I think he's, he's just trying to play kind of a more straight up game here he doesn't want to commit to something 100% until he is 100% even though I think he should have been 100% because this is you know I think the ideal scenario for him but he just didn't want to to get on good jump yeah. in with both feet yeah Lisa thinks he missed an opportunity uh so ultimately Malcolm Lisa Denise Scoopin uh make a final four yeah and I and it keeps Final yep. four that we uh, see the montage of through the rest of the season. It's in every okay. previously, and and we see Lisa struggle to keep that final four throughout the the rest of the uh, rest of the episodes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the group of six, uh, they're gonna try to split the vote uh, here. Uh, Carter actually wins an immunity, so good job by Carter. Wow. Uh, and they're gonna split the vote uh, three three and uh, put three votes on Pete and. Three votes on Abby. Uh, is it foolproof? Uh, Penner wants to know. Could it screw up? Uh, yeah, but you could get hit by a car going to the post box, too. Uh, it's, a, it's a better story than the Minos one. I like that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and so uh, that Abby Maria <laughs> is trying to get Lisa to come back. <laughs> I, I, I like that a lot. She, so, so the pitch. So the pitch is to get rid of Malcolm. And Lisa's response is, wow, that's a great plan from two rounds of go. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is what I like about Abby. So after Lisa, she goes to Penner right away. She goes to fight. So mm-hmm. uh, after uh, after Lisa, we hit, we see a, we see a Penner talk. Uh, and then and, and by the way, I think this is the perfect time for me to meet for me to mention all this talk about good guys, the bad guys. Abby Maria was the one who got screwed over and flipped on and why she she's being portrayed as if she's the the villain or the one that did something wrong to someone else. So I think it's very interesting, right? Like the whole talk about it is about good and bad. And yet the one who was betrayed was Abby Maria. Yeah, Abby Maria was loyal the whole time. She wasn't uh, pleasant for the other players to be around. And uh, they really uh, let us know how they were feeling. Yeah, I think the fact that everyone, even like after the game and, and every confessional or exit like there, like Abby was just, we just couldn't stand it. Like, the, the, with the, you don't really see people celebrating as much as they, they did after Abby was eliminated. I think that really goes to show what a breath of fresh air that they all had once Abby w- was out of the game. So, yeah, Abby was the one that was turned on, but I think she kind of forced the turning on uh, herself. So, I think it, it kind of came back around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, we're gonna go to tribal council, and so uh, we're let's, a lot of talk about you know would it be a good move to uh, take Malcolm out? Uh, and you know there's some concern that you know uh, Malcolm has the idol. You know Malcolm's idol is a pretty decent shield for him. I think that he uses it like pretty well, like defensively throughout the season. Of like, hey, uh, don't vote for me because I I have the idol. So uh, people are sort of like. Uh, just go somewhere else with their target as opposed to ever going to Malcolm. But this is where we get into the real debate about uh, Abby Maria and how pleasant it is to be around her. And Jeff, you know, tries to throw a lifeline to Abby Maria. Um, Could it be cultural? Yeah, he tries to um, give her a chance to explain like, you know, maybe it was, you know, she's not really understanding what people are saying or maybe what she's saying. People aren't fully understanding her, Uh, but no one, no one's, giving her a chance especially denise denise is all over the fact like no this is not cultural i deal with people who their english is a second language all the time and you know they are pleasant people very nice people and that that is not abby this is this is abby uh just being uh the b word uh so that, that is that is who she is mm-hmm. yeah you know, I, I really i really feel it's uh it's a language thing uh you know again like there, there's a certain limitation with your vocabulary when english is your second language uh and and i think it really manifests itself with this like her there, there's certain words she, so we're talking about someone who's very upfront very direct 
and now has a limited grasp of the language where you know this whole game is about communicating. Sure. So culture, uh, I don't know. But uh, they're, they're, she's definitely at a disadvantage. It's definitely a, a harder version of the game uh, for Abby. That's for yeah. sure. And not to mention that people are hungry and tired. And so <laughs> like, you, you know, like, uh, and I don't speak a second language, but I'm sure that uh, it probably takes like a lot of brain power to mm -hmm. like uh, be able to do that sort of uh, processing. And so when you're at a diminished uh, capacity that that certainly can maybe bring out your worst impulses. Again, I, I love Abby Maria. I have uh, very much enjoyed uh, being in her company every time that I have been around her, but uh, I have never played Survivor with mm -hmm. Abby Maria. Uh, like, uh, and, and two groups of people who did, did not love the experience. Uh, a couple of <laughs> people did. More mm -hmm. people did the second time around. Uh, if yeah. she asked me to give me, to give her my wallet, I would probably do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, but I do feel like uh, she does get raked over the coals in a lot of these uh, tribal councils. Uh, you know what? I think the point I'm trying to make is, right, like a lot of times on this show, we, we talk about like bullying or the piling on. And sure, of course, some people are very annoying to live with. I, I just want to point out that it's just very interesting, right? Like uh, th th there is one person that stands out and it's her, right, compared to the mm -hmm. group. For someone being unpleasant, we, we've all dealt with unpleasant people, but yeah. I just feel like the show portrayed it very differently than when it's been done before. And it's happened a lot, right? Uh, and yeah, the perspective we're getting is from the other from the other people. Yeah. I and, just find it very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's definitely an interesting discussion to have because I think that from the players that are out there, uh, they felt like, that, I mean, Penner himself says that, you know, they're, they, they're playing a bully game. Abby, Mar they would describe, you know, Abby Maria is the bully uh, that uh, though on the TV show, we see like five or six people talk about how much they can't stand Abby Maria. And uh, she ends up being like left all alone. And you do feel some sympathy towards her yeah. because uh, once like Pete and artists are gone, you know, she's there by herself. Yeah. The symbolism also after this, uh, uh, a tribal council after P is gone. She's literally the one sitting all the way on the end of the seating at tribal council. And there's like gaps there in between them before all the rest of the people. So the, they really did try to highlight how alone Abby was. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you, you do feel for her, but then even when you try to feel sympathy for her, she'll then like <laughs> say something else. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not going to feel as much. So you want to like feel for her. So you want to root for her as the mm -hmm. underdog. Like that's normally what the audience wants to do. Like her coming back and winning that immunity yeah. should have been such a cool moment, but then you, <laughs> then you still <laughs> kind of want to see her fail. So it's like, you kind of have that like, both ends of the spectrum where that's what makes her so interesting. and such a fun character. Yeah, but she's you gonna... hate her and you love her. She'll dunk on Scoopin quite a bit at the end <laughs> yep. of the season. Uh, that's uh, pretty epic. Yep. And then, um, you know, I, I really do think that there are times that she is like saying something that I don't know if it, if it is meant to be insulting. And the, the uh, people like, wait, did you just say like, uh, yeah, what, what, what's wrong with that? And uh, I was like, rude. Um, people are, you know, not feeling Abby Maria here in Survivor Philippines. Uh, but she brings a lot to the rewatch. All right. Uh, Abby's going to play her idol. Pete gets voted out. And uh, Abby's the only person left from her Tandang group. Yep. She's a lone wolf, but she's a yes. fighter. She's a fighter. She's a survivor. Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk auction. This Love is, it. I, for, I forgot there was an auction here in the Survivor Philippines. Yeah, great auction. We got two people spending 500 bucks immediately yeah. right off the bat. I'll say okay auction. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, like I always like to think back when I want to talk about these auctions on these seasons. Like, uh, what's the most memorable thing that happens in this auction? Uh, yeah. we, we watch people eat food. So yeah. bad for Carter. Carter really got the bad. He the two things he bought, he had to give up to the the tribe. He first wins food for himself and has to obviously trade it when Probe says you could trade this baked potato in for rice and beans for your tribe. Obviously, you have to do that. And mm -hmm. then he wins the like what is it the the lamb ribs shanks. or whatever? Yeah. yeah, the lamb shanks that are for the entire tribe. <laughs> so, yeah. so poor Carter really got yeah. uh, screwed here. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> that after Carter he uh, buys the rice and beans. Uh, then Penner, who has who just paid a hundred dollars for fried chicken, like stuffing his face, uh, he's just like, "Hey, Carter's the man. <laughs> Carter rules." <laughs> yeah, and then, and then the lamb says, "Carter rules, best guy ever." 
I, I feel like Probst was going to make him share whatever he bought. Uh-huh. If, if he bought the pancakes, like, all right, Carter, you got a tough choice to make. He was always going to make him share. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like Carter. <laughs> um, also, uh, when Penner gets the fried chicken, uh, that uh, he's eating it, and uh, Jeff asks Penner, uh, how is it? He's like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, and Jeff says, uh, you have a weird look in your eye right now. <laughs> uh, every time they have any interaction with each other, I just can't get enough. I want them now. Like they should have their own podcast. Like that's the next step. The Probst and Penner podcast, I think would, uh, break records. Too. Yeah. It would be unbelievable. Um, but Abby Maria, who does not get a lot of credit for her strategic acumen. She's coming in to go all in on the advantage. Now I'm just trying to think. Uh, has this ever been done before? I'm trying to think. Did, was Corinne in Gabon? Uh, did she come into the auction saying, "Like, hey, I'm all about an advantage today"? That I, I don't yeah. remember. <laughs> Definitely not the historian uh, on the panel. Mm, yeah, you know, I've only watched every season uh, multiple times. I, I can't be expected to <laughs> yeah, remember. And, and we're watching them here out of order, so. <laughs> Uh, they hadn't done an auction, I think. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. They had done one in, in One World, uh, right, right before this. So, um, Abby Maria is uh, she's ready for mm-hmm. an advantage. She'll try to make the most of it. Um, ultimately, uh, that um, Abby Maria and Penner kind of get into it uh, after the uh, auction. Yeah, Penner uh, brings up that Abby is, is very toxic for everyone uh, to be around. He uh can't you know if, if bad brings a lot of bad bad voodoo bad bad energy to yeah. to the tribe yeah, yeah if abby was a pokemon she'd probably be a poison type probably mm-hmm. but what's penner doing here is he trying to get a rise out of abby maria it's a good question normally penner is not i feel like he's not the antagonistic like socially type so i don't know mm-hmm. maybe you know he got like a, a rush of like uh his food he's like a, kind of like a food high and he's like you know i'm gonna yeah. poke the bear with abby here yeah, maybe he felt like, okay, well, if she's really going to act out, then the the tribe will definitely uh, vote her out here. Uh, and there won't be a chance like that she teams mm-hmm. back up with like Lisa and Scoopin or anything like that. Okay. Um, we end up going to our immunity challenge, and Abby Maria has an advantage. Uh, mm-hmm. First off, she uh, tells us very clearly in confessional, I'm not allowed to use Jeff as uh, in any way to assist me. Uh, but she talks about how that she has a two part clue. She's going to read the second part. Uh, she can't read the first part, uh, out loud, but she gets to advance to the end of this challenge. I love it. This isn't like, I feel like this more people should be like, especially with Abby. She's here. Obviously her backs against the wall. She's, she knows she's next to go. So again, just throw out all the stuff. She, I, I wish more people would do this. We, we kind of see it a little bit more. I feel like with people manipulating, obviously Tony did it with, with his idol, pretending it was a super idol and things like that. But this was great playing up that there was two things on there that you have an idol clue, uh, as well, and I, I mean, look, obviously, like no one buys it really, but I think it's like worth the shot here. She like, you know, always. rips up the uh, always. Uh, pre- he she rips up the the note as after right after she reads it, the note will uh, self destruct. Um, I I appreciate it, Abby. You know, obviously, she not she doesn't have the the best game mode uh, thinking for it, but she does have glimpses of it, which I think makes her even more of a fun person. Like she has these moments where uh, she's like, all right, she has a mind for the game. She is a survivor. She is a fighter, and she's she's showing it here. You know, we're doing these rankings, right? And and we see so many different casts. And, uh, and what really upsets people and bothers people when people aren't trying, right? And here's someone who is doing all she can to get that vote. I, again, it's a terrible lie. I mean, like, it's brilliant. Like, it's, it's up to me to read the second part. Like, what a terrible lie. But it's it's great because yeah. <laughs> it's so much better than what we were watching with, uh, you know, in One World, just the season prior. I think it's a really good example of why Philippines is so good, someone like Abby. Yeah, and she's up against uh, what Carter and Penner uh, in, <laughs> yeah. in in the end, uh, and then she's like flying through this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that she doesn't move the rest of the season like she does here in this challenge. Uh, she must have really been feeling it that day, and a very I, odd fr- challenge too. Where they, I don't think they've ever done this in the history of the show before, where they're ask them questions along the way, and if you get it wrong, you get more weight added to you. Uh, for each step of, of like the, the the immunity challenge, and they show the question the first time, and then they just cut it for the next two rounds, which I found odd. They just revealed who got the questions wrong, mm-hmm. but like that's another fun little twist on a challenge that they uh, I, I think brought a lot to it. It was very fun. Yeah, 
And then Abby Marie has no weight on her at the end. No, yeah, she, she got no weight. weight. No weight. Yeah. And everyone else has been working with five or ten pounds and they're tired and she's able to kind of rip through it. She yeah. does like a little Super Mario down the flagpole. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Good on Abby. And uh, okay, she is not going home tonight. Abby wins an immunity challenge. And so uh, it's looking like it's going to be Penner. Yes, Looks Penner like knows it's it could be his uh, his time. He's got to, as Lisa tells her, to work his magic. Go to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. On his hap, yeah. Puts on his hap and yeah, goes to go goes to do it. The magic yeah. is not going to work on me, but uh, go work it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she sort of <laughs> is like giving him a heads up that it's going to be him. Uh, he's getting a little frustrated uh, about like uh, like uh, what are, are, am I going home tonight? Uh, and Lisa's like, uh, sort of like tap dancing around, like, well, that's the name that I'm hearing. Uh, and so, uh, Penner is, uh, not happy, but he is going to try to, uh, get things swung around. He wants to vote for Denise. Recognizes Denise as, uh, the biggest threat. They don't want to, you know, risk going out Malcolm with, uh, with his idol. So go at, uh, go after Denise. Got a uh, Carter and, and Abby to to do it, but I mean he he learns of the the foursome of uh, Malcolm, Denise, Lisa, and Scoopin, and I mean his only out is try to get the the other veteran player to get Scoopin to kind of go on his side. Is Denise the right play here for Penner? I mean, uh, all right, what if that uh, Penner is like, all right, tonight's the night we blindside Malcolm, or we've got Denise. What a story! Every single tribal council, we got to end it. I, I think that's what he was going for. He could, mm. he's a storyteller. He can see where the story is going. He wants to, he wants to cut that chapter before uh, we can get to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, I, he goes to Scoopin and, uh, that he really tries to, uh, like, uh, blow some smoke to, uh, not, 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 not into the fire, uh, <laughs> to Scoopin. And he calls Mike Scoopin, uh, my brilliant old chum. <laughs> <laughs> It's like two uh, old two old dock workers coming back uh, at the end of a shift. <laughs> yeah, um, and so yeah, he's gonna try, but uh, ultimately they just um, well, they've got Penner on the ropes. It is inevitable. Yes, uh, the lines are drawn. Uh, he's really like uh, you know, sort of like begging to stay. Um, Jeff asks uh, at the tribal council. Lisa, is this like any situation you've ever dealt with? Uh, and she gives a very like uh, coy answer. She says, uh, yes, but it's too personal to talk about. Yeah, very and, odd that they would include that. The fact yeah. that nothing like I get it uh, if, you know, then she opens up and shares whatever uh, situation she wants to share, even if she shares it like next episode or final travel or something. No. But it, it never comes up again. So why include that in, in, in the yeah. episode? And Jeff asked, how, how difficult was that situation? She said, huge. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. It's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, um, maybe uh, we got to read, like, Lisa's autobiography or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, we're, we're up to this tribal. And, and I'm wondering here, there were no idols at the merge. Is this a first? Is so, this a... yeah, Abby Maria talks quite a bit about the fourth idol in the mm -hmm. season. Um, I, I wonder if this is an instance where, okay, so Malcolm has his idol. Uh, Penner brought an idol in and then and Abby, um, had, her. so Abby had hers. Yeah. So, yeah, I wonder if this was a point in Survivor history where that they just did not hide idols again after the merge. I mean, in uh, the next season, there will be idols hidden at the merge. But just to go back to, I don't believe that there were any idols found after the merge uh, in Survivor uh, 22 through 24. So I do think it might have been just sort of like a relic of the era of all the idols are found pre-merge mm -hmm. in the in the pre-swap camps or the pre-merge camps and that there is no idol hidden after the merge. Yeah. All right. Well, I do like that Abby calls it a, a fantasy immunity idol. I, I do like that phrasing for it. We got we got Dom who calls it a, a fugazi idol, and we got Abby with a, a fantasy idol. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in season twenty six, yeah, we're definitely going to get uh, like the idols coming up where Malcolm is going to find an idol uh, in uh, the pre merge, and then I 
don't remember if uh, what what happens with the hidden immunity idol on the uh, on the other tribe on the fans tribe. Uh, but then I think that uh, Reynolds finds it. Doesn't Reynolds find oh, Reynolds, it? But... Reynolds has it. Yes, Reynolds yeah. has it. Uh, yeah, and they played on Malcolm. Yeah, yeah. It was so... tough though because obviously coming into this one, all three were still in play at the beginning of the merge. Obviously, Penner plays it right at the first episode. But I guess maybe with all three still in play, they you know, and then even two still in play for a little while, they didn't want to toss a third back in yeah. the mix. Well, perhaps, and I don't know if necessarily like how they're thinking about this. You know, uh, like Malcolm's like need of the idols, like uh, like ultimately, like does that is it a chicken or the egg of like okay, well, it, you know, uh, Malcolm's in a lot of trouble here in Caramoan. Should we put uh, like throw mm -hmm. more idols into the game? post merge uh because uh that ultimately he's uh, malcolm's going to be a big part of sort of like the number of idols that uh get played in survivor caramoan uh, i mean he famously gets at the auction next season mm -hmm. uh the location of an idol that he can't find so there definitely are uh post merge idols coming up in uh the next season so then penner's gonna get voted out but, and by the way, again, if we want to talk about Abby's social game, she asks for a hug and he says, I'm not going to hug anyone else. No, uh, no more hugs. Um, <laughs> Penner, when he votes, uh, he does uh, say Denise uh, yeah. yells it out. And uh, Penner has such a uh, memorable exit uh, on the way out uh, where, uh, OK, uh, he leaves. Uh, and he says, that sucks. Uh, and he tells everybody, uh, keep your sunny side up and suck eggs. Everybody laughs. He like mm -hmm. does like, and what a showman. Yeah. Like, like a curtain call. It was like a bow. I felt like I was getting a bow from Penner. Yeah, he's like, like whistling a... the theme song to the yeah. show. Mm -hmm. He's popping out. He leaves. Camera stays on him. He pops right back out again. He gets a yeah. he gets a curtain he... call yeah. for his last yeah. appearance. He gives a final like, take bow. off his hat. He might have tipped uh -huh. his hat. Yeah. yeah, and his final words are Survivor has been fun and extremely painful. Yes. Wow. I mean, that's that's Survivor wow. in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. Put that on the tagline. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah. Fun and extremely painful. <laughs> All right. Like this top 40 countdown, also. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun and extremely painful. After uh, season one, you'll have to come out for a curtain call, tell everyone to suck eggs. You know, suck the whole, eggs. The whole yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, and Jeff does that shrug, uh, which yeah. has been captured as as a GIF. I mean, this is uh, the final appearance of Penner on the uh, chronologically, not the final appearance of Penner on the countdown. Uh, he still has uh, Micronesia that is uh, hanging out there. But uh, what a three season arc for Penner! Is was th this was his best game? This was his best he game. He got his best game. This was his best game. I think he actually ties his uh, best performance uh, from Cook Islands. I think, I mean, it's funny that he is like, a, in my mind, a legendary character. He never finishes better than seventh on mm -hmm. the show, but I think that this was the closest he came to winning. I mean, I think that as a finalist in Cook Islands, I think, I mean, really, uh, the trajectory of his story on the show is that you know, he, had he gone to the finals in Cook Islands, he would have been a hated finalist. And here that his story is like, well, if he gets to the end, he will win. Like, uh, that, that's really like he's sort of like come full circle in his survivor career to being the person that, you know, you wanted to almost bring to the end because everybody hated him so much to the person that was like so uh, beloved that could win over the jury and we have to get rid of him. Yeah, we never, I mean, we only really got to see him fully play, obviously, in Micronesia. He gets his injury, uh, you know, midway through or fairly early on. So, we, you know, we, he could have tried to make some headway there. But, yeah, clearly, uh, this was by far his best game, his best probably chance to win, uh, most likable game. Everything you would want uh, from, from Penner, you, you got in, in spades uh, many times over for from this run. All right. So... Yeah, here's where I think things start to slow down a little bit uh, on the show. All right, we're down to our final six now here with Abby Maria sneaking in instead of Penner. And so uh, we're going to start to get to uh, the family visit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very emotional one. Very emotional. Very, very emotional family visit. It is. Uh, of course, 
uh, we're going to get to see Lisa's <laughs> brother, Justice. Sister. Sister. Brother. Brother. Isn't he yes. beautiful? Yes. Yes. He's a good looking kid. Um, and uh, Malcolm's brother, Miles. We met Mike Scoopin Jr. It's a shame. I, I'm not ashamed. Obviously, Malcolm was going to play in uh, the, the next season fans' favorites, but I feel like Malcolm and his brother would have been prime picking for uh, Blood, Blood versus Water, Water type season. Yeah. That would have, they would have been all over that if uh, fans versus favorites wasn't uh, right off the, you know, right after this one. Sure. Uh, we meet uh, Denise's husband, Brad, uh, who will uh, make another loved one's visit in uh, Winners at War. Uh, <laughs> Carter's mom and Abby Maria's mom, who will also come back in Survivor Second Chances. Vera. Vera. Very confused about everything. <laughs> yeah, Vera does not seem to know uh like what what she show she's on. Yeah, Gu- guaranteed. If you're if you're uh, a child to immigrant parents and you're a Survivor fan, you really relate to Abby Maria. Like, uh, oh yeah, they have no idea what's going on. Like, just trying to <laughs> just trying to relate to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Malcolm and his brother win the reward, and uh, they're gonna pick Lisa and Scoopin. Uh, they want to sort of reward them as for their for their loyalty of sticking with uh, the Malcolm and Denise alliance at the last couple of votes. And so uh, Mike Scoopin Jr., uh, who's a, just a chip off the old block uh, in terms of getting injured all the time, mm-hmm. and then Justice uh, show up and. Uh, unfortunately for Malcolm, this kind of backfires because, uh, that then like, uh, justice, uh, really like, uh, gives Lisa a pep talk about like getting her head back in the game. Yeah. It felt like she needed permission from her brother, like give her approval. Right. Like, uh, like justice was like her inception totem. Like, Oh, okay. All right. Like I can, I can behave in this way. I am in the, uh, you know, in the survivor game, right. Not in the real world. It felt like she was just seeking permission, and uh, and Justice gave it to her. <laughs> she mm-hmm. she was in the game after that. I feel like after that, we hear a lot of confessional about her betraying Malcolm and just really uh, reconsidering decisions she's already yeah. made. She gets locked in with uh, once Justice comes to visit, and um, uh, what is it? Justice says like, uh, "Listen to your heart and just uh, like do what's do what's best for your game." And she's like, "What if those two things are opposite?" Yeah, I think like Justice would probably make a pretty good survivor player. I think uh, another uh, Blood versus Ward pairing. I think Justice could do uh, probably pretty well. Seems like he got a pretty good level head, a uh, good athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he would do uh, pretty well if, it, if they gave him a shot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Lisa and Justice and Mike and his kid, they're going to all be uh, like praying together and uh, that they want uh, God's will to be done on the season. Um uh, there's an interesting uh, conversation about uh, like what does God want from the Survivor season? Yeah, it was interesting. They were talking about that. I don't, you know, I think Lisa said to the effect of she doesn't. God, they don't. She doesn't think God really cares who wins Survivor, but it's about you know having making everyone have their best experience or get whatever it is they need out of it. Uh, and they're all kind of she's they're rooting for God's rooting for people in their own way. Uh, mm-hmm. It was it, it was a very contrast to uh, obviously all the kind of the God how it overtook what, with South Pacific with Coach and how that felt very cult like here it, it it definitely gave off different vibes which uh, was there, uh, better vibes that I you know uh, I felt yeah. at least for them for them here. Just got like fire tokens. <laughs> Fact. <Yeah. laughs> how does he feel about them? Yeah. Um, who who would he uh, who would he uh, bequeath tokens to? <laughs> mm, good question. Uh, go ahead, Ari. I, well, I was gonna say the 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 religious talk, right? It makes it's a little bit easier than South Pacific. They're with family, and sure. so it's a smaller group. So uh, I, I think uh, it, it's not as in your face as uh, like it's the whole game of South Pacific. It's an interesting theme on uh, the season. All and, right, um, uh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Malcolm is gonna win immunity. Uh, sort of like a little bit of a twist on the jailbreak uh, challenge. Uh, Malcolm wins immunity after Lisa was saying, "All right, this is our shot to get out, Malk." Mm-hmm. Yep, I think this is the third time now uh, between him, Abby, Penner, each of them. Theoretically, obviously, we don't know if it definitely would have worked with with Malcolm here, but pretty darn close. The three people here saving their butts with. With immunity wins, and it's kind of interesting. Malcolm obviously did very well in challenges pre-merge, but he really didn't win much uh, up until the end game. Now, and I think Bring that probably on. probably helped him. I feel like if he was winning immunity at like eleven, ten, seven, like eight, things like, I feel like his target level would have been way too big. And he, I don't think 
he would have been able to keep that idol all the way to the end. So the fact that he really wasn't winning as much. Do you think he was throwing? I don't think he was throwing. I think he kind of just worked out that he was going up against, you know, Carter and and Scoopin. They're they're pretty good athletes that they could beat him in some of these physical things. I think it just kind of worked out for him that he didn't win until later on in the game. And some of them are parlor games. (laughs) So, all right. Malcolm is immune. So, so much for that plan. What are we going to do? Is it going to be Abby or Carter? Scooping cannot think of one one reason to get rid of uh, Carter other than the fact that he's such a better person than Abby. Stand-up mm-hmm. guy. But other than yeah. that, it, sh- it should be Abby. Yeah, I mean... We hear, we hear the word respect like a million times during uh, during this episode. It comes up a lot. It, hurt, it hurts to vote out Carter. I feel... Did, did, did Carter know he was on Survivor? Sometimes when I'm looking at him, it feels like I'm, I'm watching like, uh, like, like Keanu Reeves yeah. just going, whoa! I asked Malcolm in one of the interviews, like, uh, like, what was the deal with Carter? Uh, that uh, and Malcolm talked about uh, he was like an amazing athlete; he could do all these things. But then he got on Survivor and got no food, and just like turned into like a walking zombie. <laughs> and and Carter, he up. also looks like a, like a 2006 like boy band. Like it's a very <laughs> you don't see guys like Carter in HD. You know what I'm saying? Like Carter's more of a more of an SD relic. <laughs> 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 more of a 480p guy yeah yeah standard definition so would carter have gotten any votes in the final three? Oh my oh, god oh i think i think so i think everyone loved carter i think if Every, carter... everybody loved him like i know they didn't disdain him jeff jeff can't like him i i guess he, he gave everybody rice and beans uh so depends who he's up against <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's like the Malcolm man. or Denise, he doesn't win. But I think, you know, if he's if he wins out and he's up against Lisa and Scoopin, if he's in that side, I think he's got a good shot to win there. I think yeah. so many people really did like him and just think of him as just, you know, just a great, like a nice guy, just someone that, that they, they would be happy to give him a million bucks. Yeah, mm. put him on the cover of the DVD. Yeah, okay. Uh, is Carter on the cover of the DVD? <laughs> <laughs> no shot. Yeah, okay. Let me see. Should I should I bring it up? Is that uh? I feel like that's more of a feedback show thing. But let's let's do it now. Let's see what we got. Uh, Survivor Philippines uh, DVD. Denise, All right. Uh, the three returners: Denise, Malcolm, Lisa. The three. Re- so so you think oh, that no, I uh, think Scoopin Abby, makes the cut? Okay. I don't think right. Russell is on it. I think Abby has oh, okay. to be on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abby, me... Malcolm, Denise, Lisa, Abby. Panner. Is that six? That's five. And then it's got. I guess Scoopin Jeff probably. Ken? Jeff Kent? No, I think Scoopin. Uh, I think Scoopin made the cut. I mean, you know, it was from 2016. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Let's see. Survivor Philippines uh, DVD is uh, from left to right. It is Lisa, Denise, Scoopin, bottom row, left to right, Abby, Penner, Malcolm. So just imagine Carter's uh, beautiful smile. (laughs) Yay, Carter. Yeah. Carter's the man. (laughs) Carter okay. Carter's bogus journey. That, that's what you can call Survivor yeah. Philippines. Whoa. And now I think uh, retroactively, I think we could just uh, take Scoop and out, put Jeff Kent in. Or just put Zane on there and call it a day. <laughs> yeah, you know what? How about this? Take Mike Scoop and out, put artists in. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Justice. Yeah. Sister. Or put sister. Justice on there. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. How about this? All right. Uh, so. Uh yeah, uh Malcolm uh talks about how terrible Abby is. Yeah. Uh calls her the B word. And a soul sucker. Yeah, which is even great, worse. No. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah. yeah. I mean Abby got Malcolm, Denise, and Penner <laughs> all to basically break and you know rip into her, which I that again that makes me like there had to be something there. It couldn't all like there there was something, you know, living with Abby to make those three break. Yeah, and it, really it, smart being yeah. negative about it. Like that's saying something. Yeah. It makes me laugh. In the previous tribal, Denise, Denise just just says, I'm done. Like uh she says it later on for winners at war. But mm-hmm. but winners at war, it's the intense strategy. But in this season, what, what really got her to the limits was just the existence of Abby Maria. Like, all right, I'm done. That's it. All right. Uh Carter gets voted off. Uh so uh see you later, Carter. All right. Uh, Abby's in the final five finally. And so, 
Uh, Abby's still trying to make everybody think she has a hidden immunity idol. You know what? Go go down thing. go down with the ship. She's got this lie. Uh, Maybe I'll play my uh, idol. Yeah. We'll see. Well, I'm not going yeah. on this week, so you guys got to strategize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Abby Marie is going to work on Lisa. Tell her uh, that she's on the bottom. She is, and she's uh, insisting Abby that she she's a swing vote. And you would think in a normal scenario, like she would be the classic swing vote. You got clearly two pairs uh, that you know. Right, yeah. Abby, right in the middle. Uh, she would clearly, you would think, would be the one that would be the swing, but she, she's just hating so much that they're it's like, wild. We can't vote. Yeah, Abby Maria ends up getting voted out by these two pairs, it, they, and they're celebrating after Scoopin's doing a dance and twirling yeah. around after he's. They're all so happy that she's gone. Meanwhile, she's like, of all swing votes, this is the one hundred percent the case uh, case for a perfect swing vote, right? If they keep Abby Maria here, Scoopin and Lisa, then Malcolm's not going to win the uh, final four immunity. Mm -hmm. Then they vote out Denise. They vote out, they vote out um, right? They, 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 vote out Denise, they, they, they vote out Denise here. They vote out Malcolm at the next vote. Uh, and then who wins the season? Lisa? Yeah, I think so. It's probably Lisa. Yeah. So million dollar decision for uh, Lisa Welchel. So Let's see. Uh, Lee, uh, Malcolm is going to, I'm sorry, Scoopin wins a reward, uh, takes Malcolm and Lisa to go on this boat ride. And he, uh, they're going to go see some uh, big whales. Yeah, whale shark. Whale, whale shark. shark. Is this when Scoopin drinks all the soda also? <laughs> yeah, he gets a, he gets a, a soda rush and then gets headbutt, headbutted by the, the, the shark. Mm hmm. Yeah. Seems By the way, dangerous. I want to point out, Scoopin says he doesn't drink sugar, but at the auction, he's drinking wine. So, well, he's another, another one from the delusion. I, I, well, he said, did he drink the wine? He said he didn't know if he was going to drink the wine. I, I was paying very close attention. If he didn't drink it, he was periodically like throwing it out because uh, it gets lower and lower. <laughs> Uh, are you saying that Mike Scoopin is not a man of his word, Ari? <laughs> that Mike Scoopin says things that are not true? I won't stand for it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, do your research. Do your research. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, we see uh, that Denise and Abby are uh, are getting into it, and uh, that you know Abby is going to uh, fire some shots back. She says Denise is a horrible person. Yeah, you got to feel for for these. You got the three people that she's aligned with going off on like a once in a lifetime uh, excursion here is getting food and you know getting sugar rushes and swimming with whale sharks, and she's you know stuck here with, with Abby that uh you know she who she clearly can't stand and is just is just miserable and has to kind of power through the day and yeah. get through it. Not Those two crap. Oh, go ahead. As I say, not to mention Denise also is going to get a bad spider bite like in oh, her yeah. neck, like a vampire got her. So, so that those two together, Abby and Denise, it, it's hilarious, and and it and it has two of my favorite scenes. When they're finally coming back from the challenge, they're all like, "What are they gonna do?" And she's like, "Well, here's a machete," and Abby Maria announces, "Oh, perfect to kill them all when they come back." So again, just another <laughs> lovely Abby moment. She she's hilarious, and then when when we're talking about that sharp burn, Denise is uh. She, this is a very uh, strong person. And and she's talking about her sharp burn. And Abby says, well, it could be poison. <laughs> so those two together, like, it's just a perfect combination of, like, like direct, but also, like, it's weirdly passive-aggressive, but also, like, aggressive-aggressive. Ah, oh, it's great. So mm -hmm. Those two together. They, they, they may not mesh, mel mesh well together, but they certainly mesh well for me. Okay. Uh... Final five. Uh, we're gonna get to our immunity, and uh, this time it's going to be is it Malcolm? It is Malcolm. Okay, uh, Malcolm has won immunity again, and so uh, no shot to vote off Malcolm, and then uh, he still has his idol. Which uh, this is also the last tribal council that he could use that he could protect Denise. He could, but he, he cannot see a reason why they would get rid of the niece here and keep and keep Abby when there clearly is a reason. Um, so I, I, maybe Malcolm was you know fine with Denise going here. Uh, he just didn't want to pull the trigger himself, and he's like, you know what? If Scoopin and, and Lisa want to do it, you know, let let them fire the shot. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to do it, but uh, if they want to do it, they can feel free. 
Yeah, but perhaps the reason to do it uh, might be to then, uh, if Malcolm doesn't win immunity at the Final Four, that maybe keeps uh, Denise a little bit more like uh, loyal to the cause. Keep keep her honest. Yeah, keep her on board. Where ultimately uh, she's going to like get read the writing on the wall. Uh, ultimately, by mm -hmm. uh, the next vote. I think at this point, Malcolm already has it in his head that he wants to boot Denise. But Denise, I feel like at this point, she's still considering going with Malcolm. Yeah. And, and I feel mm -hmm. like this interaction cemented it for her, that uh, her her game's changing. It's uh, Malcolm's no longer an option. Yeah. Could Malcolm have beaten Denise? Does Malcolm just overthink this? I mean, uh, the straw poll at the reunion, if you take that for what it's no, worth. No, don't take that for what okay, it's worth. Okay, I won't take that I, for what it's worth. <laughs> because I think that the story is there that uh, I think that like uh, those uh, that crew was like, hey, when Jeff says, uh, what would you have would you have voted for that? Like, I think that they were like, oh, don't nobody raise your hand. So uh, I think that throw out the results from that straw poll. Then, I mean, the thing is, though, everyone said all along the way, even going back to Matt saying, like, Denise, yeah. even Russell Swan said, you know, if Denise gets to the end, people are going to, they'll cut her a check for a million and they're going to write her own check for a million. Like, that's how happy they would be to give Denise the win. So everyone felt that way. I know, like, I, Lisa was very much on the Malcolm can't get to the end. He's going to win train. But yeah. a lot of other people really felt that Denise had it in the bag if she wins. So I, I, I think she okay. still wins. I feel All like right. it would have boiled down to Calabaw, Tandang, that thing, right? And then ultimately, uh, the one making the decision on who wins is is probably someone like Artis and RC, right? Like, uh, okay, well, RC, I th RC was the Denise vote. Um, oh, vote. I, I don't think she loved Malcolm. RC was at least the vote. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so. Uh, RC vote was the was the Lisa vote, so maybe I don't know uh, who she's gonna vote for there. If it's uh, Malcolm and Denise, uh, then the other jurors, uh, Jeff Kent, I think he's a uh, uh, Malcolm vote or Denise. He's he spent Denise? time with Denise. He Calabar. He spent time with Denise, but I feel like he's more of like a guy's guy. Uh, is gonna give it to Malcolm. So he voted for Scooping. Maybe he would he still vote for Scooping even if those two were were in there. I mean, he was no, pretty close with him. Uh, uh, he voted for, for Denise to win. Carter was the the Scooping yeah. vote. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe Carter would still so vote for cool. Scooping. Yeah, I think uh, Carter had a pretty good relationship with. Uh, but I, it depends who the other the third person is. Also, yeah, yeah. Scooping would vote for Malcolm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he yeah. almost took Malcolm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I think Malcolm has it. Uh, Abby Maria does not like Denise. No, uh, I think she likes Malcolm more. Uh, Penner, it's hard Alibaba. to say. Pete loves Malcolm. Like I feel like that Pete probably pulls like uh, the Abby and Artis uh, crew together. Like I think Malcolm has it. It would have been very close though. It would have been I close. Th I don't think it would have been very yeah. close. Of all the years, that would have been fun to have the fire making at four. Uh, yeah, maybe put this one in here so you can have Malcolm and Denise both in the finals. Yeah, I think there's there's eight votes on the jury. I, I think that Malcolm has uh, Jeff, Artis, Pete, and Abby uh, versus Denise, and then I guess the 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 rest uh, are going to be a little crap shooty. But I, I think he gets there. Yeah. Maybe the other person gets one. Like I could see him like getting mm -hmm. like a four three one, mm -hmm. uh, and like it's not a blowout against Denise, but I do, I do think he has it. Um, but he just felt like uh, he was too threatened by Denise. Felt like uh, maybe she was she uh, was so good at talking to people. Felt like that he couldn't compete with her in the final uh, jury questioning. Yeah, too threatened by Denise and too trusting of Lisa that he didn't really see the red that, that Lisa was so gung ho for to getting him out, which he probably should have seen the fact that she was wanting to cut him so much earlier in the game uh, when he had the idol. And he just truly believed that she was wanting to go to the end with him and didn't realize it until it was too late. Right. I kept, uh, I think that Malcolm kept thinking that he could reel Lisa back in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, he could not a scoop and he could. He could manipulate Scoopin, uh, not Lisa. She saw the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, uh, Lisa is the one saying we should keep Abby. Yeah, she was right. She it was, it was a million dollar uh, move right there if she keeps Abby, probably. Yeah, but she couldn't get uh, convince uh, Scoopin to still do it. But uh, what are you going to do? All right. Uh, so there is uh, some talk at the final five uh, tribal council about uh, you know how do you how do you play the game uh do you take somebody you can beat to the end or do you take somebody 
they're the people that you want to be there. Uh, and so, you know, um, you talk about how Abby Maria is saying that Malcolm and Denise are going to win the game. Scooping and Lisa, you are not going to win. Uh, and she says, Mike, you are an idiot and you are a moron. Scooper thinks he's going to win at the million dollars. He's not. She nailed it. <laughs> yeah. What a read by Abby Maria. Is this, Abby had like a good sense of the game. She just, you know, obviously, you know, for whatever reason, couldn't always articulate it the right way or do act in the right way. But she did have her pulse on her finger on the pulse of the game a little bit along the way. She knew what was going on. Abby Maria is a truth teller, okay? <laughs> uh, when Abby Maria tells you Mike Scoopin is a moron, Mike Scoopin is an idiot, people, they don't listen. Uh, you know, she told you Joe Anglum was moldy. <laughs> Nobody listened. You know, people need to start listening. Abby Maria has things to say. Go Abby listen Maria. To this She's, woman. Yeah. She knows it. She knows it, okay? Um... <laughs> Let's go to the final four, the finale. It's not the greatest finale in the history of the show. It's but not. there's some moments. There's some yeah. big moments. Okay. The setting is nice. Like the, the mountains, very yeah. beautiful. Okay. So uh, we're going to have a challenge that's before the final challenge. It's a reward challenge. Biggest reward in the game. Advantage in the final four immunity. And Jeff says, historically, advantages worked out very well. In the final immunity. Not this one. Not, not this, this one. one. Not, not, not this with this one. person. Not with not that this one. challenge. No, yeah. but uh also this same advantage uh when it comes back in Ghost Island doesn't work for Wendell either. This is not a great advantage. This is not an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost Island too. This will be uh cursing someone else's game. It'll uh, just keep coming back until it helps somebody win the challenge. Uh Malcolm will win this one. He will get an extra life in the actual uh final four challenge so um malcolm and denise go to get some water and so uh you know denise feels like that malcolm is i i mean it, all signs are pointing to malcolm malcolm is is on a roll he's winning all the immunities and now he has an advantage and so um denise uh wants to solidify the final three and malcolm says like uh you know uh like Sorry, eh, I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Ari, I totally agree with you. I think Malcolm, in his head, was fully willing to cut Denise. And I think if Malcolm commits to Denise here, I think fire would happen at four. I think you know she was pretty loyal to him the entire game, and I think she was gonna be loyal to him to the end. And all she needed was a little bit of reassurance. And God, it's really go. Obviously, I'm sticking with you. We'll go to fire at four. You know, who do you do you want to get scooping? You want against Lisa? Let's talk that out. I'll help you practice. If he does that, I think Denise 100 percent would would vote with him in this spot and force fire at four. Yeah, I mean and that Malcolm has to like play this so badly to get Denise to say, "All right, like, uh, like you know, I, I got to do what's right for me here." Uh, like Malcolm is not giving me anything. She had heard enough. She heard enough. She, I mean, and this is her best move in the game. Uh, that she basically uh, is gonna ultimately go with uh, Scoopin and Lisa to win the million dollars when Malcolm doesn't win the immunity. But uh, yeah, Malcolm just does a a really bad job here. So, so is this also Malcolm's uh, best game? Yes, but I, I don't think that the, you know it's really competitive. I I mean I, I don't think that the uh Caramoan game is like uh there are like maybe maybe a, a higher high or two, but um I mean that what is he coming ninth? Something like yeah, yeah. pretty early, early mm -hmm. move, early merge. And obviously game changers is uh kind of incomplete with the way he gets idled out and yeah, stuff like uh, that. So uh this clearly is by far his his best game. And I mean, you know, we, you always go through the the sliding door case of what is like the worst move in Survivor history. And I think a case being Malcolm not agreeing with Denise here is what is gotta be one of the worst moves because I you know, I think going over the numbers, he wins the game um mm -hmm. if he goes with her and, and agrees to stay with her and 
it's it's a pretty bad move considering all, all the the stakes there that are in play here. Yeah, it, it is a bad move. I mean, in, in fairness to Malk here, uh, he's twenty four years old. Mm-hmm. Like uh, everybody else here is like an uh, like honestly God, gr- grown up. <laughs> like uh, Every, everyone else is responsible for other human beings. Yeah, uh, Lisa's forty eight. Uh, Scoopin's fifty. Denise is forty one. Like you know, it, 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 he has like the utmost respect for Denise. Mm-hmm. Like. You know, there are other players who certainly would lie to Denise's face and not bat an eye. And I think it speaks to like that, uh, you know, uh, Malcolm being a a pretty solid guy, couldn't do that to Denise, wanted to be straight up and definitely like overconfident that like, look, I'm going to win this thing. She's going on the jury. I don't want to necessarily like uh, like rub her uh, face in it. Let me let her down easy. I'm going to be taking her out at this tribal council and let me just, you know, uh, sort of like uh, give her a soft landing. I'll tell you what, if Malcolm was a little more sociopathic, a little more Dr. Will and, and booted out uh, Denise or or Russell instead of Angie, and then Angie is the one that goes to Calabar and then they meet up at the, like, uh, we're, we're talking about a different Malcolm, right? Like if he, if he had that in him, Malcolm, if you just had that in you, if you decided to keep Angie, Wow, what, what is this season even? Is this a showman's then? Is this, are they like the new Robin Amber? Manji? What an alternate universe that, that just played out. Oh my yeah. God. Wow. Um, all right. So we get to the immunity challenge. And uh, ultimately, um, you know, well, actually, a little bit just a good touch on, uh, you know, Lisa and Denise really talk it through about mm. uh, try, time to turn on uh, on Malcolm. Yeah, but Scoopin uh, is not as on board. And Lisa takes a page out of Abby's book saying, you need to keep Scoopin on short leash. Sometimes his, his brain can wander. He can, you know, do things that aren't so smart. So sometimes you do have to kind of keep him on a short leash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um you know, Denise is ready to go ahead and uh, vote on Malcolm. She locks that up with uh, L- Lisa and Scoopin. Uh, and this is all pre the challenge happening. Mm-hmm. Scoopin's uh, also pumping himself. He's gassing himself <laughs> up. He's like, uh, yeah, I could beat Malcolm in a physical challenge. Yeah, it's like, I beat him to the puzzle last time. I, I, could, I could beat him again here. I, I, I can do it. I believe in myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So... On the way to the challenge, we had our fallen comrades is here. Love it. Love to see it. And it was a very cool one because you, sometimes you, you you do these things and someone, you know, there's a few people early boots that no one played with anyone. But here, everyone played with each of the people that have gone before them. So that was kind of cool that everyone kind of gave a little, you know, at least there's some personal res- uh, retrospective to each player. Yeah. Anything jump out from fallen comrades? Not really. I just say I enjoy the 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 mystique of it all, the going through the the montage, everyone's final words. I always enjoy. It. There's nothing really ever that's that notable, but I always enjoy uh, the the mm-hmm. the passage along the way. Yeah, I, I think uh, on rites of passage, I think the only thing I want to bring up is like no one knew who Jeff Kent was, and yet the words out of Denise's mouth is, "What a great athlete!" What? Mm-hmm. And then and then uh, another thing, I feel like Jeff Kent's entire arc because he because he's talking about how. Uh, his reputation off the field, uh, and, and it's a bad one, and he wants to get through the game without pissing people off. Uh, like, Jeff Kent's entire arc is the is a Reddit post of, am I the a-hole? Like, that's all it is. That's all That's all Jeff Kent wants to know. Am I a jerk? No, Jeff, you're Yeah. Not. Well, you know, the New York media uh, said he was, so. <laughs> right. In his head. You know, you shouldn't ever read your own uh, cl- press clippings. Okay. Don't read, don't read the comments, Jeff Don't Kent. read the comments, Jeff Kent. Okay. <laughs> So let's see. Um, we get to our final four challenge. Uh, that it is, uh, we're gonna hold these things, and then there's a marble on there. The Don't Suri Field drop. Memorial Challenge. Poor, yeah. poor Suri. Poor Suri. And uh, Malcolm is the first one out. He gets an advantage, he gets to come back in, and he's still the first one out. Yeah. Malcolm, shaky hands. Yes. Uh, Ari, do you think that this is one that Jeff Kent would win? <laughs> he would have still been up there. The Iron Man. Yeah, he would have won this one. Mm-hmm. Or uh, or uh, who, who else was uh, up on this? Uh, Abby would have beaten RC. That we know for a fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Malcolm is out again. And then it comes down to Scoopin versus Lisa. Mike Scoopin is going to win the 
final immunity. Uh, and so now it's up to uh, really comes out to scooping. Uh, what's he going to do? Does he want to take Malcolm to the end? Because his, his reasoning is Malcolm has three wins and Scoopin mm -hmm. has three wins. It's literally his his uh, his explanation. Like, OK. Mm -hmm. and he's going with the box score. That's how yes. he's uh, sizing this up. <laughs> and as Abby Maria has told us, uh, this man is an idiot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been unbelievable if there we thought Malcolm and Denise would have forced fire with Lisa and Scoopin if they both flopped and there still would have been fire. But, but but between Malcolm and Denise to make the the finals, that would have been what a what look, a twist what a twist of fate that could have been to look even more triumphant and heroic. Right. Way to go! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. And so, uh, Scoopin is talking about how he has a part of him that wants to go against the best. Uh, this is uh, insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and I mean, Scoopin's an idiot. He's a moron. And, you know, this is needing to keep him on a short leash. And luckily, Lisa, uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter for them. They're, you know, deciding who they want to give a million dollars to is I think whoever they vote out uh, is going to win the game. So they decide they're going to give the million dollars to Denise instead of Malcolm. Yeah. So uh, what, who does Malcolm vote for here? Uh, Malcolm votes for. Uh, oh, he votes for Denise. OK, mm -hmm. so. Uh, interesting that they're voting uh, they're voting against each other here in this spot and nobody's trying to uh, vote out Lisa yeah is there any like I got, is this the prisoner's dilemma type situation where at a certain point don't Malcolm and Denise have to come together and realize look we're turning on each other they're gonna vote for us like we have to stick together and just force a tie here otherwise you know we're letting them decide our fate uh, I feel like you know I know they should have done that originally and then they went back around but I feel like if you keep catch wind of what's going on don't you try to like do that isn't that the play here well Still, i think that they're both it. making the same argument to see that lisa and scoopin are never going to turn on each other so that i think that uh malcolm's probably saying to scoopin like hey come on like the, the jury's not going to respect mm -hmm. it if you don't take me to the end he's like yeah you're right mm -hmm. uh and then like okay talk to lisa uh i'm voting for denise tonight tell tell lisa that uh lisa's got this denise has the same story as lisa they're both the moms and she's gonna you know i i think that's the case malcolm's probably trying to make um and so if it's like hey let's vote out lisa like you can vote for lisa but i'm voting for you still so. right right so uh all right malcolm gets voted a anything else on uh malcolm's run here yeah, just his final words congratulations denise <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you know malcolm plays a, a really great game uh that he comes into survivor 24 years old uh that all the potential in the world, you know, it, it's hard because then I think the rest of his survivor career, like he's really chasing it where mm -hmm. he never gets as close as he does this time out. And I think that there was like a, a feeling of destiny around Malcolm in game changers, like game changers was the season Malcolm was supposed to win. I think a lot of us thought that going into game changers and it didn't happen and i can't imagine the scenario where malcolm gets close again yeah i yeah i mean the target on his back would just be would be too big it'd have to be some type of like all legends type run where there's so many other big big uh targets would, and stuff would like it that. be all be... legends or would it be have to be like some sort of like boston rob redemption island right. type scenario where it's like all right it's all new players and malcolm yeah, or is like yeah, like who's another archetype that like it was a Malcolm versus Ozzy type season or something like that, where it's someone similar to him and he could try to run his, his game. But yeah, other yeah. than that, like it doesn't doesn't seem like it's in in the cards for for Malk. Yeah, but they've already brought back Ozzy for that type of right, a season. Right, right, I, right. I mean, I, I do like the idea of like maybe like maybe Survivor Fifty could be Survivor Philippines too, and Malcolm is one of the three captains they bring back. People who get idled out of the game. That's like the draw to get. Yeah. To get Maybe back. it's like Malcolm and Andrea and like figure somebody else. Uh, and I just love the idea of Malcolm is now the Russell Swan. Well, if it goes better than, uh, than Matt saying here. Well, it becomes full circle. <laughs> Wouldn't that be uh -huh. interesting? Where yeah. like Malcolm's on a tribe of six and is the leader. And then there's like some, new, the new Malcolm is like, Oh, we're just going to let this idiot uh, think he's running the show. And then, uh, and uh, Malcolm is like uh, dealing with like these young people. Yeah. You got a what Buster Posey now on this season say, we got to get out the vets, get out the vets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be exciting.
All right. Survivor Philippines 2. Save it for uh, what? Survivor 45 or Survivor 50? What do you think, Ari? Let's do it. Let's do it for the 50. 50. Let's do it for 50. Yeah. Let's do it for yeah. 50. yeah. Not? I mean, it's uh, the 50th season, but it's just our 50th season. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then, uh, all right. Uh, final three breakfast. Let's final travel council. Uh, what about some notable questions from the uh, final travel council? Let's see. Carter looked like, I mean, a he was on, like another planet when he was asking team. his question. Um, yes. That was something. And RC, I don't know what was up with her. Every time she, after every sentence, she had like a weird laugh, a weird giggle. Um, she's nervous. I, yeah, she's very nervous. nervous giggle. Very she, nervous. She'd be a great, like, uh, like uh, uh -huh. alliance mate. Like, you would know immediately where she is, right? Like, she could never backstab no. you because nobody wanted to be in an alliance with RC. <laughs> <laughs> like, you would know exactly where she is at all times with her with her uh, uncomfortable laugh. Mm -hmm. The yeah. problem is it this, it didn't feel very live. Like this this final travel felt like it was Denise's coronation foregone and, conclusion. Yeah, it looked uh, it seemed pretty. Seemed pretty clear. Obviously, Penner Penner's speech is probably obviously the most memorable. Him him going on and ending with uh, one of you, one of you two have ridden in uh, these two like oxen, like uh, ox, like oxen, and obviously that was talking about Denise. So there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot there just because it was so it was pretty clear that Denise was, was taking the stone for everyone other than Michael Scoopin. Mm hmm. Yeah. So Scoopin also with a very bad uh, bad line. He said. Uh, uh, we had a family motto of a, "Are you going to be? Are you going to be on the news? You're going to make the news." And uh, didn't really. That's not the best uh, for scooping the later on in life. So yeah, he's he's going to make uh, a lot of news. Yeah, no, not the best. Yeah, so does does live up to the the family motto. Yeah, uh, I, I did think that uh, Malcolm's question for Denise uh, is interesting. Uh, Malcolm seemed like he was getting uh, frustrated. Do you think that is that uh, kayfabe, Ari? I, I think he was trying to put her in a hot seat, but also if you're spending 39 days with someone that's always nodding, like uh, I'm sure, I'm sure he's been holding that in longer than than Roxy was holding in the booby trap bit. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of head nodding for 39 days. So uh, I think he just wanted to uh, uh, put 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 her on the the edge of her seat. You know, uh, or pay attention. This is not going to be easy. I'm not going to give anything to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, we go to the live for the uh, final tribal council, and we uh, c we come in, and um, so this is December 2012 uh, when when this happens, and uh, Jeff opens up the finale with a, a moment of silence for uh, that. Uh, Jeff calls it the uh, Newtown, Connecticut shooting. I think most people would uh, refer to it as the uh, Sandy Hook. Uh, school shooting, and uh, we have a moment of silence there. And I just thought that, that was, uh, you know, a really interesting, like, uh, like, uh, time capsule of mm -hmm. that, 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 that was there. Where, uh, I thought that, like, uh, especially like in hindsight, like, it's amazing that Jeff, uh, did that on the live show for that weekend. I think that happened on a Friday, and this is a Sunday night that mm -hmm. they're, uh, filming this. And, you know, I, I think it uh, was, you know, a, a, a cool thing that he did. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, nice it was in there and it wasn't considered like uh, anything that would be uh, political uh, that anybody like I don't remember anybody complaining that right. it happened. And so uh, that was great to have on in, in the live show. When I saw it, it again, it really threw me back. Like you said, it was a time capsule. It was more of a, oh, that's right. Because yeah. I actually connect this season with the uh, with those is it the the typhoons that were happening in the Philippines weren't or hurricanes there there was there were natural disasters in in the Philippines during that time as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I connected more with that. So it was definitely mm -hmm. a uh, you know I got smacked in the chops when I heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we get to the votes and uh, Denise is going to win six to one. To one uh and we have our live reunion show uh it's a pretty lively reunion show yeah i mean we touched upon a couple of the hosts right dawson running down the kick uh kiss the kick to kiss uh jeff ropes around the lips that was uh obviously probably one of the bigger highlights i think of the reunion no audience moments which was uh, a fun twist for a survivor you didn't know talking to anyone out there so that was kind of refreshing talk there talk to every contestant 
um, at least once. Everyone got something to say. Um, so Pro- Probst made his rounds in, in this reunion. Yeah. Um, are any highlights from the reunion show? Look, uh, last time I saw the reunion was 2012. Today it was a 90 degree day. I went to the beach, so I did not. I did not rewatch the reunion. So uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I how, got nothing. How was the beach? Oh, it was a beautiful sunny day. Got got to go on a nice run. Which, by the way, oh. uh, yeah. Listen, listen to some. Uh, what was the, I was listening to the uh, the Hannah Shapiro My Archetype podcast oh. about about Denise. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say the, the one about Rob. No, no, yes. no, the one, yes. uh, the one about the moms. Yes, I, mom I haven't listened to that one yet. Uh, what did Denise, what did Denise say about the mom archetype uh, it, it, and, and how it pertains to Survivor Philippines? The 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 podcast was more about showing the differences where, and it's a perfect segue for this, right? This is a season for moms. This season's dedicated to Sherry from Caramel. This season's for Monica Culpepper. You know, you know this. They did this it for, for Monica. Yeah. So, so it was just an interesting way to look at. Here's Lisa, right? Here's a uh, uh, a woman of God of faith, and then you've got Denise, who I think she uh, identifies as agnostic. So it was just uh, the theme was more about these are people that are labeled the same, but they're actually very different people. Like uh, you know, even Denise's whole aesthetic she she looks like a main character in a James Cameron movie, right? Like James Cameron looks at Denise and says, "Yes, you, you're you're going to be the star of my movie." Like she looks like such a little badass out there and it's just a very different kind of uh, perspective from from lisa so it was more about the differences uh it was yeah. denise and uh my other friend julie from julie Education. rosenberg yeah um yeah i think that denise is uh like the the more of the the tough mom and then lisa is more of the like uh emotional mom and you know that the moms do have it tough on survivor but you have to play more to the tough mom for seemingly for the juries to recognize your achievements. And I do wonder if for Denise having another mom of it, like in the, fi- in, in the final two to be there as sort of like uh like the historically the, the mom that doesn't perform well in the final travel council up against her only helped highlight her game. Yeah, absolutely. And I wonder, like, I think Denise is a great winner, uh, totally. But I do wonder if Mal, let's say Malcolm wins this season. Like, I think this season is probably thought of even higher, right? I think by the casual fan, if Malcolm, the golden boy, pulls off this win, I think this is probably thought of as one of the best, uh, even higher than this, I, I would think, right? Do you think the public perception of this season would be raised with, with Malcolm's win? Yeah, It'd I even think- higher. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think anybody uh, at the time was saying Denise was a uh, a bad winner. I, I do think though that there was like a lot of like Malcolm should have won, and I think the producers like recognized that instantly and put him right on the next season. <laughs> yeah. Isn't the story that he was asked to play like at his like final goodbye words? Like after that, they weren't they like, oh, do you want to go back out like next season? Like say yes yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they knew uh, what was going on. Um, so uh, I, I noticed also in this reunion show uh, that uh, Jeff uh, starts to like publicly thank the fans for uh, all the support of the show, mm-hmm. 350 tribal councils. I don't know if this is in any of the reunion shows uh, before this. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I do know this is at the point where uh, the uh, Jeff Probst talk show has come. Mm hmm. And is gone is about to be gone. Uh, and I think that Jeff is going to be like uh, making Survivor his full time thing. Uh, I did think that was uh, notable, but I could be wrong on that. It could also be a tease for the fact that they were about to announce fans versus favorites. I that, at first I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. They were you know acknowledging the fans uh, at the start of the reunion, and then they announced the next season's fans versus favorites. So I feel like maybe that probably played a, uh, kind of a role in it too. That they want to acknowledge the fans. That oh, fans are about to go compete on this next season. Yeah. Um, let me see anything else from uh, the reunion show. It was funny. Pro, I think Probst had a funny line talking to Scoop, and he was like, oh, people are people are calling you Mr. Magoo. And Scoop was like, you call me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people will call him other things. So people are saying, but you're the one calling me it. Okay. All right. Uh, ready for some feedback questions of uh, Survivor Philippines? Let's, Let's do, it. do it. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about um, we haven't talked uh, enough about Denise? Uh, ben Taub wants to know: Does Denise have the most repeatable 
winning a game a successful skill set in survivor history um, yes yes okay i you haven't gotten to it yet but when you check out winners at war you're, you're gonna see someone I, I think you might even have forgotten how far she went into the game this is uh you know winners at war yeah uh, it's not exactly mm -hmm. repeating it but it's very impressive how well she does Hmm. Yeah, I mean, she's never going to come in with like some enormous target, but she's always going to be a very physical person pre-merge. So she almost never will go out pre-merge outside. Of, like this was the closest she ever would with her tribe being decimated. I think in most cases she makes the merge. She's very likable. She knows how to deal with people. Um, she can win some immunities post-merge. So I think uh, most times than not, she's making at least final seven-ish and then can go from there. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, well, as far as like most repeatable, like winning game, uh, like um, I, I feel like that there's other people I probably would have uh, ahead of Denise. I think that Denise uh, like does an, uh, a very good job here in Survivor Philippines, but I, I do feel like that uh, she does like she loses her patience uh, with some contestants along the way. Abby Maria here, uh, others in, win in winners at war. So, like, yeah, she sort of like reaches the end of her rope uh, in Survivor at times, and so like I feel like that I'm not sure if she like loves uh, like be being out there uh, during the game. Uh, she, you know, um, I I don't know. I don't know if it's like repeatable. Uh, she does a great job here, but I'm not sure necessarily like if she was in any random season. I'm putting my chip on Denise to come back and win. It, it might what might impact is that it has changed because that winner is at war it, it really is her losing her patience i feel like the theme of this season philippines yeah. it's about stamina right can can you handle the rain we've got some medevacs do you have it in you do you have the stamina and so with with denise i feel like towards the end of winners at war she was losing her stamina in the sense of uh the, the game might have been moving too quickly i mean there there were so many changes that yeah that we saw and it, it might have impacted how she handles it and it might turn someone off if you try to continue doing that again yeah i think she has a really good social game really good at like talking to people but i think that like the modern game i i think the game has like shifted away from like where her like ideal skill sets are where it's like fire tokens vote splits move 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 talking about it like i i think that that kind of is uh not her forte whereas you know, Survivor here in the mid 20s, where there's like a couple of idols in the game, and there's uh, not that many advantages. She and does pull off that Sandra move, though. That was that's a pretty modern day yeah. move. To, you know, no, that, it's very very fair counterpoint. Um, so, I yeah. think it's more about how quickly plans change. I think that really impacts uh, someone like that, and and it may not even just be Denise. It might just be the uh, yeah. uh, like you've had enough. Like uh, I re I can relate to that. Yeah, I, I just. Uh, can't shake how much by the end of winners at war she just seemed like she was over it mm -hmm. so yeah, uh we'll take a look when we get back to uh winners at war at uh what what the issues were there in that season uh keith wants to know besides uh malcolm and denise who's the third best player on this season jonathan penner yeah i think so or lisa um, I, I mean lisa I, really comes around yeah i uh, that I love Jonathan Penner. Uh, I, I think that Lisa might play a better game. Yeah, I mean, if Scoop, again, if Scooping agrees to vote with her at five, Lisa wins the game, I think. So she's right I there. I mean, Penner is the, a amazing TV character. I mean, what what move? Uh, I mean, he saved himself uh, with the idol. Uh, that uh, He got Jeff Kent voted out of the game. Uh, I mean, Lisa like almost had Malcolm vote out a couple of times in the season. Uh, she knew that, uh, you know, take Abby to the end to win. You know, people didn't listen to her. Right. I think she most uh, more often than not had the right read. Totally. I, I would I would rank Abby as probably the, the fourth or the fifth. She's she's pretty good. I think Abby has strengths, uh, but I think that her weaknesses uh, hold her back <laughs> yeah. in the overall ranking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about um, 
Zach Nelson says, is being on a bad starting tribe the best thing that could happen to a Malcolm type? Do people that come off threatening need to disadvantage themselves? Uh, is it the best thing that could happen to a Malcolm type or the best thing that could happen to a Denise type? Uh, easy for anyone to say, right? Like, uh, imagine going out there and, and saying, I will intentionally lose. I think it's very easy for people to say that, but I think it goes back to the personalities, right? Mm -hmm. Just because someone's uh, with, uh, big and muscular doesn't mean they're going to be long for the game. They might have a trash personality. So uh, uh, mm -hmm. that's my thought. Yeah, I think if you're a good player, regardless of, of archetype if you come out of this situation you're going to be in pretty good shape because you're going to be entering situations where people want to turn on each other as long as you're not uh the a-hole in the situation you should be able to blend in and and if you're a good player eventually form new bonds and new relationships so i think pretty much regardless of your archetype if you if you're the malcolm or denise and if you're a good player you should be able to go pretty far okay um how about from Cassie Randolph? Uh, if Malcolm won the final immunity and went on to win the season, how would he have done on Winners at War? Whoa. I think probably, I mean, he would have definitely been one of the, obviously, like the big targets that Tony would have been kind of latching onto. And, you know, he would have been part, more part of the newer school people. So I think he probably could have done pretty well yes. um, in, that, in that group of uh, the Lions. Uh, he probably could have gone pretty far. Okay. So. I forgot all about the lions. Uh, so don't forget the hyenas. Yeah, you have to take somebody out to put Malcolm in. So uh, that uh, the thing that helps me try to sort of imagine this is like, okay, what tribe is he on? So let's see. So who would be Whose like? What does he get? Nick Wilson. Yeah, that was my first thought. But they're not really very similar. But in terms of like a winner, I mean, like they're that both sort of like age, uh, age yeah. wise. Adam, does he take Adam's spot? I think those are the only two options. You're not removing anyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's give him the next spot. I think okay. that's probably the most accurate. Yeah, you know, I think that Malcolm is, you know, uh, he like uh, got along well with Tony in Game Changers. I don't think he even wanted to vote Tony out in Game Changers. Uh, I don't think he'd be on Game Changers if he won Philippines. Like he wouldn't have been brought back right away for Caramo and. So I don't know necessarily like where, uh, what what spot he would come back. Well, I uh, think he probably would have been on Game Changer. I don't think he would. He would changers. not. Yeah, because he wouldn't have been on fans' favorites if he wins. Yeah. And then he would obviously. I don't think he would have been on second chances. Obviously. So, yeah. like, so what that, would be the next spot? So he'd be, be a, right? a, a, a two-time player on Game Changers. I think that would be his first time back. I feel like on Game Changers. Yes, right? yes, that would be his second time. No, his coming second time into, out. Yeah, Winners Award would be his third time out. Okay. Um, does he still get voted out the same way in Game Changers? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> okay. All right. So then he comes back, and so he knows Tony. Uh, like I kind of feel like uh, he would if he if he was in the Nick Wilson spot. Like I could see him like doing pretty well. I could see yeah. him getting along with Tyson and mm -hmm. Kim and Wendell. So he probably he's gonna win. Yeah. The there tall you go. Mal Malcolm was uh, almost a two-time winner. What could have been? Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, good good on Malcolm. Uh, winner of Winners at War. All right. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, Meyer wants to know, does Penner win if he commits to Lisa and Scoopin? What do you think, Ari? Ah, there, there's too much up in the air. There's like, uh, how many challenges are, are after that proposal? Uh, I would say no, because he would get the boot beforehand. I don't. I, I think the moment Lisa got got her justice being served, like I, I felt like John, like Penner and Malcolm had no chance of uh, uh, making it past her if she could help it. Hmm. Although, if Penner agrees, does she? If he agrees, I, you know what? Then... I think then justice would have given her the permission to cut Penner. <laughs> Give, uh, so. I think Lisa really wanted to go to the end. I think Lisa's ideal scenario was going to the end with Scoop and, and Penner. I think she loved the idea of that. Um, so I think that could have realistically happened if Penner commits to them at that point. Um, and then who wins in that spot? I, I, it's probably between Penner and Lisa, I would think. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it might be a toss up. It would obviously depend on, you know, so, with the dynamics the rest of the way. So basically, if Penner agrees to the deal with Scoop and Lisa, at the final seven, I guess Denise gets voted out uh, because then Malcolm still has his idol. Mm -hmm. And then at the final, but then uh, Malcolm's going to start winning immunities, right? So then uh, you're going to have Malcolm win immunity at, at six and five. And Lisa would have been tempted to keep Abby. 
over Penner. I, I think that's really how it would have gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Maybe you be flop interesting. Uh, be interesting. harder with Penner. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Then um, let's see. Uh, John John asked if Survivor decides to bring this format back, uh, which three Survivor players who were medevac uh, should come back? Do we have any sort of like leading uh, medevac candidates? Ah, oh, perfect. In, in fact, I want to talk about like the beginning, like in episode one, he talks about uh, like the what ifs, and they give you like a like a and one mixtape montage of all the people getting hurt. And so like before, you know, I guess we're gonna include people that have gotten hurt since then, but at, like in this moment in time, we could have had Bruce Bruce. Kind of guy on the Tandang yeah. tribe. Okay. We could have had the reboot to Colby Donaldson. Joe Dowdle could have br- okay. could have had him back. Could have had the mean scooter, Mike Barassi. Are we <laughs> happy to see him back? Other options were Colton, Courtney Moon, and are we going to count James's as a medevac, like his leg thing or, or the finger thing in Micronesia? I, I felt like if they wanted to sneak it in, they could get away with it. I guess they could. Uh, what about since Philippines? Uh, if we we're going to do Survivor Philippines 2, a new medevac season, who we got? Neil Gottlieb. Someone else who couldn't, uh, in, in the spirit of Bruce. Uh, I, no, we're not bringing back Joe. <laughs> uh, sorry, Joe. Joe, no, Joe Del Campo. Uh, no. Beast Mode Cowboys already played again, but they could use this as an excuse mm-hmm. to bring back Beast Mode Cowboy. I think that ship has sailed. Beast Mode Cowboys doing uh, celebrity boxing. Oh, oh good for him. For, for, yeah. for the kids. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other notable uh, Terry Dietz. Uh, not quite a medical evacuation, but if they really wanted to bring yeah. Terry back, uh, they That'd could be a good uh, one. squeeze him in on one of these, I think. Yep. And um, oh, Pat Cusack. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't uh, know if we have the roster for not, not a lot of people. Out there. All the all the medical evacuations. You, you don't want Pat leading a tribe versus <laughs> Pat versus uh, Bruce. That's what I mm-hmm. want to see. Bring Bruce yeah. back. Okay, uh, Jesse Camacho, uh, not the person from uh, Survivor Africa, says, "Is this the season that saves Survivor after a run of bad seasons from twenty one to twenty four? I really felt like uh, this one came along and saved the franchise. It started a trend of good seasons that followed uh, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. So." Uh, I said it in the opening. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I don't know if if it saved it, but I think that this was sort of a, a, the rebirth of Survivor. Yeah, I think whatever whatever they did in the casting beforehand, they really whatever they shifted gears to is really kind of set the ball in motion for the the rest of the season. Yes. Yeah, they, this one really got a got this got the ship uh, steered in the right direction. And I'll also add that I wore my uh, Survivor uh, Know It Alls shirt tonight, and uh, also this is the season that started Survivor Know It Alls. So. Very important season. Did in know the it all save Survivor? People are uh, I don't think so. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> not what I said. <laughs> but uh, I do think that uh, it was important and uh, important to me. All right. But and you know then, what? No, let's talk about it. Like as a fan, right? Like uh, I think one reason this season does so well is if, if you were a fan, you were always like clamoring for content. And there really wasn't much. Uh, so this was a season where I, I felt like Things like YouTube and social media were taking off a little bit more where people were more comfortable creating content. And so uh, being able to I feel like this was the start of like an online community. And I feel like it really does change the way you 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 enjoy it because you think about all that stuff and uh, it brings it back. Yeah. All right. And then one last question. Michael M. wants to know who had the messier first three days, Zane or Frenchie? Uh, at least Frenchy, at least Frenchy got some power along the way, so he got to do some things. Zane, mm-hmm. uh, Zane yeah. was uh, didn't even have a flame to. to Frenchy made it off that. the first show, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay, I think it was Zane. But, the but they both have uh, they both had the pitch of uh, vote me out. I am sick of like, please get rid of me. <laughs> they, they both, they, you know, they're tight on that one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our weekly uh, feedback for the season. Who is the season's MVP? It's gotta be Malcolm, right? He's gotta be either him or, or Abby. I, I would say Malcolm, but I'm sure Abby's right there too. Um, Ari, am I giving my answer or what the audience says? What What do you think the audience said? And then you can the tell the audience your is going to say Jonathan Penner, and I think Jonathan Penner is the MVP of the season as well. I, I feel like, okay. uh, in fact, once he's gone, we even say it's a, uh, hmm. it's a little slower. Uh, the audience says Malcolm, forty eight percent. Denise, twenty nine percent. Jonathan Penner, ten percent. Uh, which one-time player would you most like to see come back and play again in a future season? 
a lot of good options actually. Um, yeah, I would I would say I would love to see Lisa and Jeff Kent play again. So one of them, I would probably most like to see Lisa play again, but both of them. And it's a bummer because I don't think we're ever going to get Lisa. I think they asked her back for fans versus favorites or uh, mm-hmm. yeah, fans versus favorites. She's uh, she declined it. I I don't think we'll be seeing her come back. I I would like as a very biased Dawson fan, bring bring me back some more Dawson. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's RC twenty three point eight percent. Lisa Welch at twenty percent. Uh, Pete had eighteen percent. Who wants to see Pete? Uh, Pete, Pete comes back every season, just in different forms. We don't need yeah. to see Pete back. <laughs> what made Russell hands. List, uh, made you pause and say to yourself, uh, "Wait, who is that?" I would say Katie. Who? <laughs> Katie. It is Katie. 33.33. Boy, I'd hate to lose Katie. By the way, uh, she calls Penner Cuddle Bear. Very weird. Cuddle Bear. Katie uh, holding them back incredibly in the challenge. All right. Dana, 29%. And uh, Roxy, uh, 16%. Who's the most underrated player of the season? I'd say Lisa. I don't know if people view her that. Well, Lisa's, you know, you know, second or third best player of the season. So Lisa. The, the audience is going to say Lisa, but I, I'm going to vote for Abby Maria. I was very impressed. She's right. uh, she's playing. The audience did say Lisa, 41%. Then Denise, 18%. Pete, 9%. So uh, who, who are these Pete stands out there? Pete what is that? <laughs> Maybe he's campaigning. He's a puppet so. master. He's uh, controlling the votes. Yes. Finally. Okay. Kelly Wentworth Award for best pre-merge boot. Who you got? Zane. It's got to be Russell Swan. No. It's Zane. Zane. <laughs> yes. 40%. Russell Swan had 30%. And then uh, Dawson for Ari, uh, yes. 13%. All right. Out of the 40 seasons, how would you rank the winner, Denise Stapley? One being the best winner, 40 being the worst winner. Such a rant. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 15. I don't know. That's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to that was, I was, I was gonna say the same thing. So yeah. I'll, go, I'll go 16. I'll go one up. Wow, uh, Brian Cohen uh, has it closer, sixteen point nine uh, overall. Uh, that puts Denise as the tenth best winner of Survivor. Uh, I'm surprised by that. That sounds high to me. Okay, uh, so she rounds out the top ten. Uh, ahead of Denise are Kim Yule, Boston Rob, Tom Westman, Natalie Anderson, Tyson, Richard Hatch, Earl Cole. Sarah Lucina, Denise Stapley. Okay, so then she's ahead of Cochran, Brian Heideck, Wendell, Chris Darty, Sophie, Ethan, Adam Klein, Tina, Michelle Fitzgerald, Vesepia, Aris, Tommy Sheehan, Mike Holloway, Danny Boatwright, Amber Burkich, Bendry Bergen, Natalie White, Fabio, Bob Crowley, and Chris Underwood. I think that's about right, because I'm sure she's about to get bumped by a number of people in the top 10 season. So I think that that's about right. Okay. Um, I think I might have her a couple of spots lower. Uh, and, and then there's a couple of people uh, ahead that I think I might uh, drop down. But okay, maybe I'll look at my winner rankings again at the end of this. Okay. Um, how about this? After tonight, we are 75% of the way done with the all-time top 40 countdown. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, do you feel like this season was too low, too high, or just right? Too low. Too low. Top five. Too low, but not not by much. I would say about two more spots. Uh, but I, I I do love the season. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's how I feel too. I love the season too. I think it should probably be like uh, eight or nine, and uh, not eleven. But okay, uh, the audience said just right, forty five percent. Thirty one percent said too low, and twenty two percent said too high. All right, um. I should give my rewatchability rankings. Uh, wow, I really uh, did enjoy watching the season this week. Uh, this was so fun to go back to. Was it the best season I've watched this year? I would say that I think I still would have Palau as number one. Wow. Very uh, interesting because those are probably fairly similar, right? The, the, the destruction of one tribe. Uh, the rising one, other those two would be. Your two but favorites. I feel like that there was still a lot down the stretch of uh, Palau of that. I, I think that like every vote down the stretch was like, uh, like there. I don't think there was like a Carter vote down the stretch mm-hmm. of uh, of Palau. 
Yeah, and the finale of Plow obviously much, much, much better than uh Yeah. Than so I'll have this as the uh as the second in my rewatchability rankings. Uh so I'll have this uh one ahead of blood versus water. Okay. How about that? All right. And uh, God bless all the people that are uh, that interested in my rewatchability <laughs> rankings. All right. Uh then what's coming up? next survivor token sheets but what's coming up after that, that all right question. boy it's a quick turnaround for me going into this saturday i have to start watching a new season uh immediately also right. podcast about the first week of australian survivor with shannon gus but that's another story okay so uh i will get into my token sheets uh rewatch tomorrow but then one week from tonight I'll be talking about the ninth best season of all time. What will it be? Any guesses? The finally winners at war. I think that's the one that's uh, been calling the most. So I'll go with that. Yeah, I- I'm going to I'm going to stamp it on winners at war. I think that sounds about right. Sounds about right. OK, so uh, you want me to tell you you want me to tell you uh, Sam wants me to read out uh, what's what's still out there. OK, here are your top nine seasons remaining okay the nine seasons left are season six the amazon season seven pearl islands season 15 survivor china season 16 survivor micronesia so a couple of a uh, couple seasons back to back uh survivor survivor 20 heroes versus villains survivor 28 kagiyan survivor 31 cambodia Survivor 37, David versus Goliath, and Survivor 40, winners at war. Any uh, changing of the picks? I'm going to change it to be cool and different. I am going to go with Second Chances. We're uh, Cambodia. That'll be uh, that'll be after Token Chains. Okay. All right. Brian? I'm going to stick with winners at war. Stick with Drum winners roll. at war. All right. The ninth best season of Survivor that will be uh, one week from tonight will be... Here we go. Ari got it. It is Survivor Cambodia. Wow. Winners at war, man. It's going. Winners when someone asks war. you to switch, you make the switch. Yes. Okay. So uh, it's going to be uh, the start of Stephen Fishback week here on Survivor as uh, we've got Token Jeans and Survivor Cambodia back to back. Number 10. And number nine, and we're very excited for uh, next Tuesday night when Puya Zanvakili and checks notes. Okay, Christian Hubicki will join us to talk about Survivor Cambodia. Uh, that one could set the record. R- wow. Ring the bell. Yeah. Again. So go from Ari Ferrari to Christian Hubicki. Well, the Red Bulls ready. Yes, don't for, well. I don't forget this weekend we have uh, Ali Lasher and Jordan Kalish talking oh. about Survivor Token Chain. So Seems don't forget, baby. there's a season uh, season still in the middle. So that's coming up on. So Saturday is Token Teens, and then the really quick turnaround for me and anybody else who's crazy enough to watch these seasons is going to be for Survivor Second Chances coming up one week from tonight. Exciting stuff. So if you want to break up your rewatch accordingly, uh, that, you know, I don't want to make you wait until Saturday to know what's next. All right. Can we, uh, boy, we had a lot of fun talking about Star Philippines. Great time. A lot of fun. What a season. Yes. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, Should we talk about what else is coming up here on the podcast? All right. Uh, We had a great talking with T-Bird. Michaela Bradshaw joined us uh, to talk about her time in Survivor millennials uh versus gen x check that out at rob has a website.com of course then afterwards oh the slop oh, we had a lot of fun on our patron only the slop talking about all of the nonsense from the world's big brother had a very special interview uh that we uh posted myself and kirsten mckinnis on this week's edition of the slop very funny clip everyone has to go check it out Yes, uh, uh, it was a very special visitor on the uh, podcast last week, uh, or on the slop this week. Uh, Wednesday night, we'll be back to talk about more Big Brother. Uh, we'll see what happens on the Veto episode live 
after Wednesday night, uh, Big Brother. Be uh, back uh, shifting gears, talking some Big Brother in between all my Survivor rewatching. That's coming up on Wednesday night. And then on the RJP Rewind that we just dropped, uh, Joe Millionaire. Check out myself and Chappelle and Jason Reed talking about the classic Joe Millionaire. Brian, were you a Joe Millionaire guy? I feel like I watched it. I don't remember anything that happens, but I do remember watching it. Yes, so. Ari. Uh, the hashtag slurp. <laughs> <laughs> of course I remember. An, yeah. an iconic moment of television. Yes, certainly. Uh, on the latest, it's Joe Lie on the RHAP Rewind. Okay. Talk about average Joe, I believe, uh, coming up this week. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, be sure to catch the patron feedback show coming up on Wednesday as we answer more of your questions about Savar Philippines with Beth Dixon and Josh Mendelson. Of course, uh, patron five for five, uh, the big BBQ and A with Taryn Armstrong and more. Uh, that's just in the patron podcast feed, plus our patron only Facebook group and Discord all at Rob's website.com slash patron. Check out any offers you hear on the podcast from our sponsors at Rob's website.com slash offers and if you're watching us here on youtube click that subscribe button anytime to uh, get all of our video offerings and of course follow us on social media at rob is a podcast and at rjp grams on social media all right brian what's coming up for you so new season of the challenge coming up uh season 37 spies lies and allies is coming up uh august 11th do, do we like the name spies lies and it's allies I, I have to like really think to myself how to say it every time before otherwise i'm gonna fumble over it so i might just call it season 37 uh well what forward. happened to spies spies and lies how about yeah, that i don't know it's it's a mess it's a mess they, they, they have, really like went for like added in the uh brains versus brawn versus yeah, beauty yeah, like it's, uh, it's, they went one past what they needed too, too, too many uh, similar sounding words here. But uh, I got together with uh, Al Azure and uh, Brian Scally and Matt Lagori over the weekend. We can put together a must lose draft to put together a cast preview for that. We drafted people who cannot win the season. We were rooting for them not to win the season. So check that out. You're and rooting we'll, for, or you think they won't win? We are rooting for them, not, or think they won't win. So we pick people we think will not win uh, the season. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, coming out in a couple of weeks for uh, season thirty-seven. I still can't get over spies, lies, and allies. Yeah, it's a lot. They're really going with the spy theme. Last season was a lot like that, too. So this is like the new thing. Yeah, double agents. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spies and lies was fine. Allies yeah. just hurts the jaw. It does. It's too many. Too many words. Mm-hmm. Okay. Allies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't do it. Uh, I mean, that's the heroes versus healers versus hustlers of <laughs> yeah, challenge it's a, seasons. It's 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 a lot. It's a it's a mouth jumble to say it also. But it'll be yeah. a fun season. It'll be okay. good. A few uh, Survivor people going to be appearing on it. So uh, you got yes. Tommy, Tommy will be on it. Uh, you got Michelle Fitzpatrick. Is he, is he one of the spies? Uh, maybe one of the allies. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We got Michelle Fitzgerald. Michelle Fitz. Yep. And we got uh, Michaela going to be on it. Yes. Okay. So check it out. Of talking with T Bird fame. Yeah, that's uh that's where so she's, she's most known what from. she's best known from. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and Brian, how's uh, the One Tree Hill? Oh, it's great. I've been l doing my rewatch along with the official One Tree Hill podcast. I, th I think uh, uh, Peyton is emerging as the alpha of that podcast. She seems more like the host for it. So that's uh, exciting. <laughs> I want to report back and let you know. So I think okay. she's, the, she's the alpha. Good. Good. Good to hear it. All right. Uh, Brian, very fun to have you here on the countdown. And Ari Ferrari, what's next for you? What's next for me? Catch me on Twitter. It's very easy. Uh, it's at Ari Ferrari. If, if you like some impressions, I, I've got plenty of more. If you like the Penner and the and the, the Jeff Kent with the, the veteran move. Yes. What see, other impressions do you have? Uh, let's see. Uh, Are they all from you know Survivor what? Philippines? No, they're not all Survivor Philippines. In fact, one of them, actually, I'm very angry at you because you do a really good Kermit the Frog. And, and I'm like, that's all I got. And then here you pull it like... Hey, Rob, it's me, Kermit the Frog here, just trying to say hello, and I really enjoyed Survivor Philippines. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's good what one. do you, uh, what do you so, so this do these impressions? Right? So, uh, I go, uh, so I go on Twitch, let's go to, follow me on Twitter, at Ari Ferrari, and then that way you'll know when I go, I go live on Twitch, and when I'm playing video games, I'm just being a silly, just being a silly goose. So mm -hmm. uh, just catch me out on there, and if it makes you laugh, just join on in on the chat. I let the chat decide uh, a lot of things while I'm gaming. Okay. Uh, and, and what games are you playing? Playing a Mass Effect pretty soon. I'm gonna be playing Pokemon. So for all you Pokemon fan, Pokemon yeah. fans out there, we're, uh, we're we're gonna be doing a, a Nuts Lock 
edition of Pokemon. N- Nutslock. That is. Check this out, Rob. If your Pokemon faints in the game, they're te- they're by canon, they're dead. So you gotta you gotta you gotta move on. You gotta pick up another Pokemon. It's very uh, it's very they're intense. Meta- wow, they're Metavac. That's oh, they're, they're all Metavac. We gotta replace them. So it's great. It's great. That's what well, that's what I'll be Joe. doing in a few weeks. So you follow me on Twitter, and that way you'll know when I go live for it. Okay. All right. Well, Ari, uh, so nice to have you back here on the countdown. Uh, love getting to talk Survivor with you anytime. So uh, happy that you made it back here, and happy that everybody made it here to the end of the podcast because uh, the top ten is coming up. We've made it this far, baby. We've got the top ten seasons of all time coming up on this countdown as we pick things back up on Saturday, talking about Survivor Token Chains on the 10th best season of Survivor of all time. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Adios.